Good afternoon, good afternoon. Breaking news. I don't know if you want to take it out of Houston or do we want to take it out of Alcorn? Which one you want to take it out of? Where are we where are we breaking the news at? Are we in Texas or are we in Mississippi? Are we in Texas or are we in Mississippi? Where are we at? Where are we at? You know one place that we are at in the wild, wild swack west? Everywhere. You don't know whether you're going up or going down in, in, in the swack west. And that's just, I'm not even trying to be funny. That's just how it is. You don't know whether you up, down, around, under, over. You just don't know what's going to happen day to day in the swack west. Who... You know what song we need to be playing? You dropped a bomb on me, baby. You dropped a bomb on me. I, 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 da, na, na, na. I, 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 da, na, na, na. You dropped a bomb on me, baby. You dropped a bomb on me. I, 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 I'm pretty sure, I think one of the bands has done that before. If you know any band that has done that, because I can't play the actual song. If I play the actual song, they're going to flag my stuff, right? So I can't actually, you know, but I really think that that is fitting for today's breaking news. You know, I wanted to act like I was um, Dan Rather breaking news out of Houston, Texas. Fred McNair has been named the new football coach for Texas Southern University. Like I wanted to do that, but I'm so unserious right now. I'm, I, I apologize y'all. I am so unserious when it comes to some of this stuff. Um, I, I'm, I'm bringing you the news. We're getting ready to go over to HBCU Sports. They are the one that broke the article. But let's just keep it a buck. I dropped this tweet a couple of weeks ago. I'm trying to find the original. I really am trying to find the original. Which I posted on Twitter. And I said, when you're laughing at another school and then your head coach enters the portal. I don't know if you guys remember me posting this. I'm actually trying to find it. Did I delete it? I, I can't find it. When you're laughing at it, I, I have the screenshot because I posted the screenshot in Swack and a Fool Facebook. I posted it there, but I can't find it in here. I can't find it. But I do have the screenshot for the proof that I posted this probably about three or four weeks ago, three weeks ago. I posted when you're laughing at another school and then your head coach enters the transfer portal. So we are less than seven days away. Seven days away from. Uh. early signing day. Jackson State is dropping commits. I I can't even keep up. I cannot keep up. That's how many recruits we've gotten in the last, even just the last 48 hours. Two, three stars, or is it three? It might be two or three, three stars in the last 48 hours. I'm going to just go ahead and drop the, uh, drop the link. 
Go ahead and get come on up here. Let's talk about it. Let me pull up this article, but it is unbelievable the amount of drama that's been happening in the SWAC West. Unbelievable. I don't even I don't even have no words right now. I'm speechless. Hey Doc, what's up? Hey sis, what's going on? I mean, you tell me. Hey, I, well, it was already I I I kind of had it. Doc. Doc. What's, what's up, Braxton? What's up? <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? Oh, what? Hey, no, but it was already told to me by a source that Fred, when Fred was in Houston a couple weeks ago, uh, he was at, just finalizing the contract. I don't think he was. I don't know if he was finalizing the contract, but I think he was trying to leverage all corn to try to resign him for some extra years, uh, because he really wants. To, you know, he really wanted to stay in Mississippi. You know, at all corn. You know, he's from Mount Olive. Of course, we are. We all know. Uh, older brother of the late great steve mcnair uh but this is synonymous for for uh texas southern if you really think about it as far as a football program because they haven't had a big time head coach since mm, maybe what mm, in the last couple 20 years like johnny cole uh uh one of the cole brothers who was the head coach at the time and that's when uh i think when um Right before TC got over there to become the offensive coordinator, but um, it's it's synonymous. I'm I'm just letting you know, Fred McNair is going down I ten right now, swinging a banger, headed to the third ward. He about to go get himself some Frenchie's chicken right next door to the school. Blue, come on <laughs> up here, Blue, come on up here. Uh, that's what I said. He, that, that, you know, they drag, they were dragging their feet. And and when you dragging your feet, like, like, they, is, I mean, give the man a ten year contract if that's what it took. You, I mean, you give him a lifetime contract. Just made, listen, because because, because you, I know about contract law, you could have made some incentives in there, and you could have made some penalties. If you if you don't win more than five games this a year, you lose a year in your contract. You could do all type of stuff. Let me read this real quick and then I'm going to let you continue. But I want to go ahead and read the source. Go the ahead. source is coming from Ken Rashad and Kendrick Marshall. Fred McNair to be named Texas Southern head coach. It says Fred McNair, who is a two time SWAT coach of the year and led Alcorn State to the Celebration Bowl, is expected to be named the head coach at Texas Southern. Sources told HBCU Sports Wednesday the hiring of McNair ends a lengthy search process after the school announced last month that the contract for Clarence McKinney, which paid him $306,000, would not be renewed beyond the 2023 season after it expired on December 15th. Since he was named head coach in 2018, the program under McKinney's leadership struggled to find wins, resulting in him amassing a cumulative record of 12, dang, he only won 12 games, to 35 losses. His yep. last game was a 35-34 to 34 loss to Arkansas Pine Bluff on November 18th after Texas Southern had built a 21-point lead in the game. The Tigers finished 2023 season 3-8. and eight. McNair has expressed interest in Texas Southern once the job became open. The two-time SWAT coach of the year who spent his last seven seasons in Lorman just completed the final year of his current contract. McNair has a 48-33 to 33 overall record. He's won four SWAC East titles and made two Celebration Bowl appearances in 2018 and 2019. And this is uh, breaking news. The sources, let me go ahead and name this, is Kim Rashad and Kendrick Marshall. Uh. Jay, can you? I, I see it. Thank you. Can you drop that in my Twitter so I can pull it up? All right. Uh, so continue, Doc. I mean, we were hearing rumors that uh he was in Houston and folks was cackling and joking and 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 acting a fool. 
Right. And, and then, then and so when, so when you, know, you know he was there and basically what he was trying to do is basically like you said, he was trying to leverage the school because he wanted more years. I don't think he really I know of course he's gonna care about your money, but he wanted more years to the contract. He wanted to be he wants to be at all corn. He wanted to be at all corn for life. He, oh, you know, man. he he's uh he is you know that man is all corn through and through because if it wasn't for him being at all corn, you would not have had Steve McNair at all corn. When I had yeah. his his brother at all, uh, his other brother Tim at all corn. When I had their his nephew at all corn. So all corn is synonymous with with that the McNairs, but going to houston which is the what fourth third or fourth biggest metropolitan area in the united states you have a whole background you can actually go into so is this not are you sure has he actually signed or is he is he is he calling their bluff right now meaning this just came now i'm not trying uh, to i'm not trying to um talk bad about HBCU sources. I would never do that. I don't doubt that Ken Rashad and Kendrick Marshall got this type of information, but we've seen sometimes that information comes out and it's not shaking up what it's supposed to be, or it'll come out and it'll push them. So has Fred McNair signed that dotted line or is this the last push to get Alcorn to give him that deal that he's looking for? I don't think this is the last push. I think he's gonna be in Houston sometime this weekend, or maybe Boy. next week. Mm, I, mm, mm, mm. I, I, did you I think hear? He's... Did you also hear that they are not? This is big, big, big news, big breaking news. Mm -hmm. They are not for multi transfers. People who transfer without graduating, they are not holding it against you. They just broke that. The NCAA will not penalize you, meaning you do not have to get a transfer waiver waiver. Oh, okay. Can Blue get on the on the on the chat? I mean, he's chatting. I don't know if maybe he can only chat or not, but Blue, the NCAA just released a let me pull that up as well so I can share that with you all. The NCAA just released that they will not be appealing uh the multi-residency or so basically the transfer ravers are no longer in effect which means that so now this is why it's very important i was to re-recruit you basketball uh because we have hang on just a second i i got you <laughs> um so, adriana man. adriana Evan from texas southern she'll be able to play in tomorrow's game that's mm. that's what I was focused on. But now that we have a coach McNair transferring to Texas Southern and we have students who they might have said, I don't want to transfer anywhere because, you know, I can't I won't be able to play immediately. So what I'm saying now is, does this mean that he's taken? Is he going to do a Dion and take some of his players with him? He might. He might take some is, of the players is with Jarvion him. Jarvion Howard, is it Jarvion Howard's last year or does he have another year? He's done for the he's done. He came out in 2018, so he is pretty much done uh at Alcorn. So he is going into the draft. Okay. Uh, so this is this is going to be synonymous because not only is he's not going to be named the head coach of Texas Southern, here's another caveat you can put up there. Can he talk Andrew Body out of the portal? Ooh. 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 Can can Ooh. he can he Ooh. talk Andrew Body out of the portal? Mm, you saying something him, right there. Can, and if he can't talk him out of the portal, can he can he work with Jace Wilson, who is the swag newcomer of the year? Ooh. All right. Can he work with him to where he can be a better quarterback? I mean, for the next season. So you really think about that. Mm. So and then too, Amber put it out there too. It's going to be easy for Coach for Fred to go into Houston to recruit these kids because 
my home, you know, my homeboy, you already know, Craig Hall, third world tiger to the fullest. I give him a shout out all the time. Um, he's always telling me like he wants to see Houston kids stay in Houston instead of branching out. Now, his biggest competition to recruit in Houston is University of Houston, which is across the street. <laughs> Right. Uh, if you never been, if y'all had never been to Texas Southern, been to been the Third Ward, Texas Southern's on one side, go down probably like a block or two. University of Houston's on the uh, right across the street from. Mm. But, but, other than that, I think Fred, because of his name, he can get into like schools, uh, like a Manville where Ladarius Owen is from, or you could go to, uh, uh on the northeast side. Uh, northeast side in Humble, Kingwood. Uh, you go to Conroe. You go to go inside of Katy, or you can go to the east side to to North Shore. So, which, what do you think that he? Um, what do you think was the reason that McKinney wasn't able to do that? And does he get? Well, um, does he get somebody on his staff like that young man from the Houston Texans? Like, does he get some some folks that? are in the houston area as well like how he does can he get is he, he gonna take get. his staff with him or is he gonna just say you're not taking this I, ride with me like how is this gonna go i, I mean i would me, i would I, I would take if it was me my offensive coordinator i would take jason phyllis with me because look what jason phyllis did when he took over the offense uh prior to what they had when they had elliot rotten Mm, 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 mm. They took off. They they took off. Aaron Allen became a better. He became a better quarterback when Jason Phillips took over as the offensive play caller. So I would take office. I would take the offensive coordinator. Uh, I would probably take the wide receivers coach. I would probably take you know some other. McKinnell, uh, I mean, Blue prop- said Blue said the rumor is Jason Phillips might be the interim, but that's not. Somebody get G on the line. Somebody. Lord Jesus. Can y'all hear me?
Hello. I am so sorry, y'all. I am so sorry. My son was messing with the breakers and he I apologize, y'all. I don't even know if this thing is still live or not. If it's still live, let me know in the comments. All right, y'all can hear me. Yeah, Brax. Brax was messing. I heard like this noise. I heard this noise. It was like, <laughs> I was like, what is that boy doing? He's in there messing with the breakers. Like, bruh. Oh my gosh. All right, we live. Let me drop the stream yard again. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, Doc will come back. But somebody get. Get G on the line right now. Yeah, because I was breaking the breaking news. And he said, I'm going to mess with the breakers. You dropping breaking news, and I'm going to mess with the breakers. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what's up with Mr. Ford. I don't know if he's been praying to some some type of uh swack mini gods or something he's praying to the swack mini gods but mr ford has done messed the whole west up now i'm scared about the east like what's about to happen next what's about to happen next i, I mean look it's a great day to be a tiger a texas southern tiger well, I need to know how do y'all tigers feel about it? If you a Texas Southern Tiger, you need to come over here and voice your opinion. What do you think about this hire? Are you excited? Yes, Mr. Green, he is definitely something else. I'm over here trying to break the news like Dan Rather, and he over here got the lights going on and off like it's a um, Southern game. Doc just went live. Oh, okay, okay. Doc decided to go live. I, that's cool. Um, we good in the East. Listen, are we good in the East? Is Coach is is Alabama A and M safe? Is Alabama A and M safe? I'm just saying the way these folks are are acting over here. Yeah, he must he must like the purple and gold. He wasn't feeling that. He was not feeling that. And once again, let me go ahead and pull up the article that was released. And I'm going to drop it in the comments so that you can go ahead and go there too. Because Mommy. Braxton, no, not right now. All right. Kim Rashad and Kendrick Marshall. And I'm told that this is not April Fools. This is not April Fools. You know who I need on the line right now? I need G to get here. And he needs to be here right now. Let me see if I can get G on the line. I want to hear him say, duh, 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 duh. you got a homegrown ass whooping. You got your coach took. You got some homegrown talent. And got a homegrown ass whooping. <laughs> Listen. I have to get on. I have to get on um, G because it's fun. It's not funny, but it's funny. If you know, if you know G, you know that he loves to troll. He is a troller. Like he loves trolling. He deserves it. Like if you, I need to find him. Hey, get on my live right now. How do I even send him a message? Where are you at? Cause this is this is unbelievable. You know, and and everybody saw him. He was going off yesterday about something. So now this makes me think maybe he got the announcement yesterday. That's why he was going off about something about don't question me. Now it's all making sense. It's all making sense now. 
as to what could have possibly happened. I'm calling him out. Where are you at? Where are you at? We need you to come to the front line. I wonder, is G entering the transfer portal too? Or is he staying all corn forever? I need him to step to the plate. Where you at? I want to hear from the horse's mouth. Come to the front, please. Because this is, he was just 100% sure. Yeah, he knew since yesterday. That's why he was going off. Everybody was like, why is he acting like that? He was acting kind of, uh, kind of like, you know. He was going off about something. Nobody knew what it was, but now that we got this and we know, oh, okay, now we get it. This is why I wanted to uh, share this. Thank you so much, Jay, for pulling this up because I couldn't find it. Hey, Jay. Homicide. Yeah, double homicide. Hey, Jay. Yeah, double homicide. Right? Yeah, double homicide. Yeah, double homicide. Yeah, double uh, homicide. We can do a joint live. You would have to. Yeah, double homicide. You would have had to. Yeah, double homicide. When he logged, when he came over here, he did. Yeah, double homicide. That's how that would work. Yeah, double homicide. Lincoln University. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but that, that, that's what I basically said. I was like, um, then this was December fourth that I got word is when you're laughing at another school and then your head coach enters the transfer portal. He enters the portal. <laughs> So, what well, actually what he wanted, he didn't want it. it wasn't even really about the money. He wanted the, the years on his contract. He wanted the years on his contract. That's what he wanted. And y'all would not give him the years, which I understand because the last couple of years, he's been unable to win out the West. This is what I wanted to share, though. Will this affect uh, football? It says, NCAA statement in wake of TRO on transfer restrictions as a result of today's decision impacting Division I student athletes. The association will not enforce the year in residency requirement for multi-time transfers and will begin notifying member schools. So does this mean... For the 2023-2024 school year? Or does this just mean for the year 2023? No, we not, we not uh respecting his privacy. He didn't respect our privacy when he beat us in uh at Jackson State. He trolled us for a full month. I need him to come to the table. He needs to come over here and get this work. That's not how that works. Oh no, he trolled us so bad. Good lord, he trolled us bad. I I couldn't and now it makes sense why we saw some folks entering the transfer portal from uh Alcorn. It was like, oh, "Okay, okay, okay, okay." It makes sense now. I I'm going to um for me, I feel like I feel like I should be trolling, right? It's only right. It's only right. If you if you dish it out, you should be able uh, to take it. A homegrown whooping. That's exactly what happened. Listen. I'm going to play it. This is in 
in memory of the time that uh, Alcorn had. I, I think it's only fair that I do that. Make sure y'all can see this right here. Oh, yeah, y'all can see it. Y'all can see it. Yo, yo, has my homegrown talent. I'm proud of Jackson. Everybody give me a round of applause. Everybody give me a round of applause. It has my homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. They got a homegrown ass whooping. <laughs> Hold up, the homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping from scratch. Okay. Then the ass whooping went out the box. That ass whooping. Came from scratch. Them folks told you last year. I hope you put me on homecoming. Them folks told you what they go. See, it's one thing to sneak up on me. If you're gonna sneak up, I lost to Texas Southern last year homecoming, right? I didn't see that coming. They snuck up on me and they beat me. Them folks told you if you put me on your homecoming next year, I hope you put me on your home. You you dummies did it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You did it and got your ass whooped. Yo. Y'all have homegrown talent. I'm proud of Jackson. Everybody give me a round of applause. Everybody just give me a round of applause. They have some homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. They got a homegrown ass whooping. <laughs> oh, that's a homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping from scratch. Okay. That, that ass whooping went out the box. That ass whooping came from scratch. Them folks told you last year, I hope you put me on homecoming. Them folks told you what they're going to See, it's one thing to sneak up on me. If you're going to sneak up, I lost Texas Southern last year at homecoming, right? I didn't see that coming. They snuck up on me and they beat me. Them folks told you. So Texas Southern beat Alcorn at homecoming last year, beat y'all ass this year, and then they took your coach. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Let me act like him for a minute. They beat you last year at homecoming. They whooped your ass this year at home in Houston. And they took your coach. Oh, Lord. Texas Southern going to have to pay for that. They going to have to pay for that. Beat them two years in a row. And they took your coach. Let me play it one more time. Let me play it one more time. And then I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yo, yo, I have some homegrown talent. I'm proud of Jackson State. Everybody give me a round of applause. Everybody give me a round of applause. They have some homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. They got a homegrown ass whooping. <laughs> oh, that's a homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping from scratch, okay? That, that ass whooping went out the box. That ass whooping came from scratch. Them folks told you last year, I hope you put me on homecoming. Them folks told you what they go. See, it's one thing to sneak up on me. If you're gonna sneak up, I lost Texas Southern last year. Homecoming, right? I didn't see that coming. They snuck up on me and they beat me. Them folks told you if you put me on your homecoming next year, I hope you put me on your home. You, you dummies did it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You did it and got your ass whooped. Ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. Mm, 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 mm. Doc, we can't hear you. Let me keep trolling. I'm getting ready to keep trolling because it's funny. It's funny, but it's not funny. He's the king of trolling. I'm outside. Listen, I'm outside. I told you it's over. We gave you a tweet. I just told you all night. Just come. Everybody can get that right. They got a homegrown talent. And the moon. They got a homegrown ass whooping. Like we'll see. Hold up the homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping was fresh. Oh, okay. That, that ass whooping went off the box. That oh, ass whooping. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So, darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, 
Where's Alvin at? Stand by me. Where Alvin at? Where Alvin? Where's Mr. Chris at? I'm outside. I told you it's over. We gave you a tweet. I just told you it's Let's come. Lord, Lord, he outside. All right. All the coaches stuff too. Outside. 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 That's 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 mean, y'all. That's mean. That's mean, y'all. That's mean, y'all. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, this is a good one. This, 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 now this, this one right here, this deserves an Oscar. We're going to look at this one too. Yeah, he outside, all right. Outside in the cold. Look, look, look at this. Look at this, y'all. Look at this. Oh, my God. You got receipts. <laughs> oh, I'm on the way. Let's hold on. I'm coming. I'm coming to help y'all. CC. I'm coming. CC. CC, I'm on the way to help my brothers out. Leave you got, on, you got receipts. Leave receipts. I'm a Christian bus. I'm headed. I'm headed. I'm headed. I'm headed. I'm on my way. I'm on my way, TC. I'm on my way, TC. I'm headed to Miami. I'm coming, TC. Help y'all. I'm coming, TC. Leave them people alone, Willis. He was oh, running. Receipts, I'm on the way. He should have been running for his couch, huh? I'm coming, TC. TC, I'm on the way to help my brothers out. Leave him alone, fam. You leave him alone. Leave him alone. We're going to catch the bus. I'm going to catch the bus. I'm headed. I'm going to catch the bus. I'm on my way. I'm on my way, TC. I'm on my way, TC. I'm headed to Miami. I'm coming, TC. I'm coming, TC. Leave the people alone. Oh, man. I'm hungry. Oh, my God. Lord Jesus. That was funny. That was funny. Oh no. Uh, 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 uh. He was running for TC and he should have been running for Coach McNeil. Oh well, a hit dog holler, so <laughs> he about to holler right now. Where is he at? I don't know. I ain't heard from him. Where is he at? Where's Alvin at? Oh, you know which you know which video I need. Somebody pull it up for me. The video with Alvin, Alvin and at the uh, Jackson State game where they was going back and forth. So Miss Brianna, the let me go ahead and I'm 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 playing and I'm and I'm and I'm heckling right now, but let me pull up the uh verified article i'm trying to put up merchandise <laughs> at work and, and Brad to be same, named texas southern time. head coach i think they said you was trying to stream if you want to double stream we can go ahead and do that you just hit up at the top i don't know if you're trying to stream no, as well no, okay no it's okay. good Brad mcnair to be named nah, texas southern i'm, I'm head gonna do coach. mine later on oh okay so, you know, they had Fred. It's right here. It says Fred McNair and Chennis Berry among top candidates for Texas Southern job. And that was put out on December 2nd, right? And then Chennis Berry got named to uh, South Carolina State. And then Jerry Mack was in the running. Jerry Mack was. That's what it says in that article. I know he's sick. I don't care if he's sick or not. Somebody get G on the line. We need a statement. Uh-oh. Let's pull up WLBT. They said that they confirmed it. Oh, gosh. Where? See? And he was, he was over here. He knew since last night. He knew since last night. He knew since last night. I'm, I'm breaking the news. Let me be professional. Breaking news from She Loves the Podcast. 
with my guest host, Doc Holiday of HBCU Overdrive. We are here live where there are confirmed reports that Fred McNair is to leave Alcorn State for Texas Southern football job. Uh, before we go any further, uh, we're going to take a quick uh, commercial break. And let me see where that commercial break is going to go to. Lord, let me see. Oh, okay. Holiday hair brought to you. This stream is brought to you by I Weave Hair. Your holiday hair will scream fabulous with I Weave's Alpha Collection. Buy two, get one half off. I Weave, do you? This Alpha Weave Collection, you can use checkout code I Weave Holiday, December 12th through December 20th. So this particular sale started yesterday. And you have the ability to buy two bundles of hair and get one half off. If a kiss begins with K, holiday hair begins with I Weave. I Weave, do you? And now back to our regular scheduled stream. I'm here with Doc Holiday of HBCU Overdrive, and we're breaking the news. Uh, Fred McNair to leave Alcorn State for Texas Southern football job. This has been previously put out by HBCU Sports, and WLBT, as of 45 minutes ago, has also uh, published an article. So, um, Doc Holiday. What are your thoughts on uh, the Alcorn program and what are they going to be able to do with recruiting with early signing day less than seven days away? Doc, can you hear me? WLBT used the HBCU sports tweet. <laughs> Who do you think are all corn top candidates for the head coaching position? Mr. Rucker, at this point, with it being so late in the game, they're going to have to name one of the staff members. They don't have enough time to search for a coach. And we're back with Doc Holiday of HBCU Overdrive. Doc Holiday, who do you think are Alcorn's top candidates for the head coaching position? Doc, can you hear me? <laughs> Willie is going back to Alcorn. Willie who? <laughs> Willie who? You talking about Willie Simmons? Uh, Mr. Campbell, which Willie are you talking Man. about? Yeah, I'm thinking it'd be Jason Phillips, unless he does not go to uh, Texas Southern with Fred. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Thank Hold you on. so much. So you think Jason Phillips, according to Blue, Jason Phillips is supposed to be named Interim. Okay. So this is what I will say. This is what I have to say. This is the This is terrible timing. Terrible, absolutely terrible. I don't like it. I don't like Gramlin. I don't like Gramlin. So now we have Gramlin and we have Alcorn. And we still have, I mean, technically Texas Southern as well and Southern. Those are four schools who decide to fire their coach and not necessarily hire them in enough time to get a head start on um, recruiting. Now, I haven't necessarily finished um, with updating you know it, it's been a roller coaster the last 24 to 48 hours um so i haven't even been able to put it up yet but i don't know if people have noticed but jackson state is not playing games with with recruiting like it's not even uh, i'm not trying to brag i don't want to be the type to boast and brag but Coach T.C. Taylor and his coaches, they got their heads down and they are working, okay? And the fruits of their labor are being placed out into the open and you can see it just based off of 
the amount of offers that are going out, the number of official visits that are being done, and then the commitments. They're coming through like, like you can't even keep up. I can't even post stuff because there's so many recruits committing. Let's just quickly go over them. I think we got two to three, three stars in the last 48 hours. And even if they're not two or three, the, even if they don't have any stars, they're dogs. So let's go over them. We have a defensive end, Joshua Nobles. Now, at this point, um, it's the battle of the trenches right now. Like, it's not even funny. It, The offensive line and the defensive line are going tit for tat. Joshua Nobles, 6'3", 255 pounds, defensive end. Let's see who else. What else do we got on here? Uh, let me see. We flipped a three star. And I want, this is what I want you guys to do. What you have to do is either as soon as these young men commit, you go to their profile at 247 Sports or on three and you make sure to take a screenshot. Travis Terrell Jr. He plays. This is this is amazing. He plays um two ways. So he plays as a wide receiver and he plays as a DB. I ain't gonna say nothing, but he's a straight dog. And on three has him rated as a three star. Straight dog. Interceptions, catches out of this world. And he had over 30 offers. On three has him ranked as a three star. And here's the, 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 the kicker. A lot of these players that are committing, Jackson, when you look at their uh, profiles, Jackson State's not even on the radar for 247 sports. Not even on the radar. So this is, uh, he committed today, about a couple hours ago. We also let's see who else we got. That's Terrell Jen, uh, Terrell Travis Terrell Jr. Travis Terrell Jr. Then we have Devin Love out of Louisville High School. Devin D. Love. He is a three-star offensive line. He was crystal ball to go elsewhere, and we flipped him. Well, I'm not even gonna say we. His quarterback, Ethan Terrell is committed to Jackson State. Quavion Davis, who uh, was a FCS freshman All-American, he um, stepped up in a big way for that offensive line for Jackson State. He played at Louisville. Quay Davis's brother, Ziggy Davis, plays um, at Louisville. And this was one of them flipped. Ethan Terrell committed to Jackson State, and he's been bringing his whole old offensive line with him. Juco defensive tackle, Kazarius Bowie. I don't know if it's Bowie or Bowie. He's committed to Jackson State. This is a defensive tackle. Bowie is a Brandon, Mississippi native. He'll be returning close to home as Jackson is only 13 minutes away from his hometown. He was a wrecker at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, recording 45 tackles, nine tackles for loss, and six sacks through 10 games. Um, so we have Devin Love, Ethan Terrell, and Quavion Davis in at Jackson State from Louisville, Texas. But we also are waiting on Ziggy Davis to commit. And, you know, his older brother is there. So you already know what that means, right? I would tell everybody to stand by, but they coming in too fast. Like, I, I would say, y'all stand by. They're coming in too fast. Now, let's also look at Co Kobe Boykin because he's going to be in Jackson this weekend. He is a four-star ATH. Kobe Boykin will be taking his official official visit 
Uh, so that's today and tomorrow that he will be at Jackson State University. He decommitted from the University of Utah back in March. He is a first-team All-State, two-time first-team All-League, Orange Coast League MVP, and his name is Kobe Tyler Bo Boykin. When I tell you Jackson State is not playing games, not. And as of right now, like we said, we always want to go look at what it says. Kobe Boykin is is uh, rated right now as a three star. Ethan is bringing the Louis luggage. Ethan's bringing the luggage and it's Louis. And Whitley said they're not done flipping. I posted the video of Coach Prime and that flip song. I wish I, I, I can't find it right now, but that's what, what I would be playing right now. Game over. Flip, flip, flip. Now, why is this so important? Why is this so important? So the reason why I stress that there needs to be stability in these coaching uh, changes and the reason why it's not fair to the incoming coaches is because you are already behind. And I, I'm not saying that I want you guys, I, I'm not saying that I, I don't want for a coach, I don't think it's fair for a coach to be um, already have the cards stacked against them before they even get into their office. So if you're going to Gremlin, if you're going to Alcorn, or if you're already there, or even Graves and even uh, uh, Coach Fred McNair, you guys are going in at a disadvantage because you're less than seven days away from early signing day and you don't have your recruits. A lot of these recruits have already went on their official visits. A lot of these recruits... Um, have to make their choices, especially if they're coming out of high school. They have to hurry up and make their choices and they have to hurry up and commit, especially for high schoolers because of the transfer portal. Now, the NCAA cannot... G just sent a message stating, please respect our privacy and time of bereavement. No, we not respecting nothing, Mr. Outside. You need to come, uh-uh, where he at? We ain't respecting no privacy. Because y'all wasn't respecting our privacy when we lost. Where he at? Uh -uh. Mr. Outside. You, you need to come make an official statement. <sighs> oh, Lord. He needs to come on. Come on here. Just say, listen, I'm not going to heckle you too bad. I wouldn't do you like that. I'm not like you. I'm not going to heckle you. I just want to ask a question. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. But um that that's so regardless of if I'm 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 pro Jackson State, I'm always pro giving coaches a fair um a fair shake. Because be, if you miss this important window at your um your time is already cut it cut in by six months. Your time is already cut in by six months. That's why I said that um, when Hugh Jackson was named coach, or a perfect example of that is uh, Coach Vincent Brown at North Carolina a and I mean, he got named as head coach so late that that first wave of good, talented recruits had already committed to wherever they committed to. That wasn't fair to Coach Vincent Brown. And North Carolina a and a lot of people were calling for his head and you didn't even give him a fair shake. That's the same reason why I felt like, uh, I felt like Coach Hugh Jackson deserved that a full three years. He was seeing improvement in everything. I know his I know his phone blowing up. 
I know his phone is probably he probably will turn his phone off. It's blowing up so bad. Mm, 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 mm. And then you guys see that they're not putting restrictions right now on anybody. There's no restrictions on anybody for transferring. So if you're a multi a uh, year multi-time transfer you are able to transfer without any restrictions it's getting ready to so right now that's the only thing that some of these coaches have going the only thing that the coaches have going right now for themselves is the fact that they took off restrictions for multi-time transfers We see a lot of rattlers in the chat in the chat over there key key keying. We see a lot of rattlers in the chat doing a lot of key key keying. Okay. We see them in there now. You better hope who don't leave. I'm gonna have to do a report on G A B B and wellness shit. No, he needs to see. No, no, we're not doing that. He deserves everything that he got coming. He deserves all the janking. But I do want to get him on and just get an official statement. That's all. I just want an official statement from G, you know, come on up here and say and say what you got to say. Come up here and just make a statement. I ain't going to do you too bad. I'm not going to do you like how you do me. I'm just going to play all the little videos that you did. I'm going to play them and use them against you. That's all. I'm not going to do you too bad. Listen, one thing that I can say that Jackson State had going for them is continuity. And it's so important. Now people see why Jackson State is able to go seven and four, have a couple of games within one touchdown. Everybody, y'all put an APB out for uh for G. Go ahead and put it out there. I need him to come to the plate. So let's do um, in memory of Alcorn having their head coach as the coach Fred McNair. You know what? I should also play that interview that I did with Coach um, Fred McNair at SWAC Media Day because I asked him. I said, "Who your who is your quarterback gonna be?" And he said, "Me, me." And so it'll be interesting to see Coach Fred McNair in a red. What is it? In a red suit. Would, or what what color red suit jacket or he's gonna mop he's gonna wear a black suit jacket with a red tie which for uh for swag media day what you think it's gonna be i can't wait to go to swag media day uh-uh somebody say i need to quit teasing him ain't no ain't no quit teasing him he was going in on jackson state yo Y'all hired some homegrown talent. I'm proud of Jackson State. Everybody give me all the applause. Everybody give me all the applause. They hired some homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. They got a homegrown ass whooping. <laughs> Home, that's a homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping from scratch. Okay? Then that, that ass whooping went out the box. That ass whooping came from scratch. Them folks told you last year, I hope you put me on homecoming. Them folks told you what they gonna see. It's one thing to sneak up on me. If you're gonna sneak up, I lost Texas Southern last year homecoming, right? I didn't see that coming. They snuck up on me and they beat me. Them folks told you if you put me on your homecoming next year, I hope you put me on your home. You, you dummies did it. Uh huh. Uh huh. You did it and got your ass whooped. <laughs> y'all, y'all hired some homegrown talent. I'm proud of Jackson State. Everybody give me a round of applause. Everybody give me a round of applause. They had some homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. 
and got a homegrown ass whooping. <laughs> Hold up a homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping from scratch, okay? That, that ass whooping went out the box. That ass whooping came from scratch. Them folks told you last year, I hope you put me on homecoming. Them folks told you what they're going to See, it's one thing to sneak up on me. If you're going to sneak up, I lost Texas Southern last year on homecoming, right? I didn't see that coming. They snuck up on me and they beat me. Them folks told you, if you put me on your homecoming next year, I hope you put me on your homecoming. You, you dummies did it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You did it and got your ass whooped. I'm outside. I told you it's over. We gave you a tweet. I didn't told you it's over. Let's come. Everybody, let's give y'all a vote. They got a homegrown talent. And the move. They got a homegrown ass. Oh, that's a homemade ass whooping. That ass whooping from scratch. Okay. That ass whooping from scratch. 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 Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand. Stand by me. Stand by me. Dang. That is terrible. How you lose to Texas Southern last year at homecoming. Got demolished by Texas Southern this year. They took you from the ability to go to the SWAC West Championship. Because you lost at Texas Southern, you weren't able to go to the SWAC West Championship. Or you weren't able to represent the SWAC West and the SWAC Championship. Then they take your coach. Woo, woo, woo. That is some bad business right there. That is some bad business. I would be embarrassed. Good Lord. You you did this. I don't know where Mr. Ford is. Get Mr. Ford on the line. This is Mr. Ford's fault, y'all. This is Mr. Ford's fault. He over here calling for the SWAC West to be reset. And the SWAC West ain't been the same since. Now, he done got all these coaches over here playing musical chairs in the swack west now he's calling on all the ad's to be fired good lord so what type of implications is does this have for for jackson state schedule next year boy 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 the SWAC West is in shambles. Shambles. Do you hear me? Everybody that's in the in the chat, type in shambles, because that's what the SWAC West is. We're just gonna call it SWAC West Shambles. That's it. W S W no S W S. SWAC West Shambles. Because right now. Everything in the SWAC West is all over the place. Shambles. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Shambles. Mr. Carey, shambles. My goodness. Yes. SWAC West shambles. And, and you know what? As Listen, it's a great day to be a tiger, ain't it? It's a great day to be a tiger. 
It's a great day to be a Jackson State Tiger and a Texas Southern Tiger. The Gremlin Tigers, they're going to have to catch up. The Gremlin Tigers is going to have to catch up. And people are saying, will this hire mean that Mr. Fred McNair, can he get Andrew Body back? I mean, it just all depends. Is he going to be able to get an offensive line? And this, I'm glad that you said this. I think Gramlin, Southern, and Alcorn need to temper expectations, especially being behind in recruiting. At this point, this late in the game, they are six months behind. Be because they started so late, they are six months behind in recruiting. When you recruit a player, you have them come to your games, you have them come to homecoming, these players have already went on official visits. That's why when they hire coaches late and you only give them, like, for instance, um, I'll give you an example. Vincent Brown. Vincent Brown literally put together a team and only had less than, I want to say, three to four months to get it together, three months. Didn't have a full off season for strength and conditioning. Like, and they were already calling for his head. Uh-oh. Is Brother Bakari here? Brother Bakari, come on up here. And breaking news from the NCAA. They said they will not enforce any type of restrictions on multi-transfers. So that means if you transferred more than once, they will not restrict you from playing for the current 2023-2024 um, year. Amari Smulliet is available. Miss Mary says, who will the next coach be at Alcorn? Right now, for continuity purposes, they got to keep Jason Phillips. Mr. Walker says, I believe Alcorn will be giving the reins to Cedric Thomas, their defensive coordinator. Bad decision. The crazy thing is, y'all really think Texas Southern will be good? Bad decision. Oof. Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh-oh. Hugh Jackson to Alcorn? If I'm Hugh Jackson... The only way I'm going to any school whatsoever, no, not even if I'm Hugh Jackson, if I'm any coach, I would have to put a clause in my contract that you can't fire me until after year three. I have to have a minimum of three years. You have to give me a minimum of three years. You have to. It's, it's not fair, especially when you are, uh, see, Miss Veronica said it so perfectly, and Miss Donna as well. What she said is that Coach T.C. Taylor came in as a first-year head coach, lost 60-plus players, and went 7-4. and four. Seven and four is the bar for a lot of these coaches at that point in time. So people were looking at Coach T.C. Taylor with the side eye like, how the hell did this man go seven and four? How did Jackson State go seven and four, lost 60 plus players, could have went eight and three. As a first year head coach. Brother Bakari, what is going on in the wild west? Whack West is in shambles. Yeah, they need to have some coaches. I don't know why. 
Well, I ain't gonna say Alcon and get rid of him. Texas Southern offered him something that uh that Alcon couldn't offer, I guess. But I think that's a good hire for Texas Southern because I think Fred is a good coach. Alcon need to hurry up and get somebody. Like I don't understand why all these late hires go on in 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 in, in, in the swag. They got they got a lot of catching up to do, but I do believe that's a good hire for Texas. I do believe that's a good hire for Texas Southern. I think okay, Fred is so good. When they hired this late in the recruiting season with early uh signing day less than seven days away. How many months behind are coaches that get hired this week? How many months behind do you, would you say they are in actual recruiting? Uh I would say they are a couple of months behind unless they've been talking to some recruits, letting them know this one, unless they pull the slime like this one I'm going, y'all come go with me. Uh, and I, is that really slime? I don't know about the, on that one, but think, yeah. So this is the thing. I don't think any of these coaches were expecting this. And um, there's somebody that's on um, Twitter. He's really big on speaking on Gramlin. He's an alum there. And he was pushing for... Uh, he was pushing for... I guess Q to be let go. And now he said, oh, a head coach will be named next week. Mind you, they don't even have a president over their whole university. Uh, they haven't had their coach yet, right? Nope. I got that, I got that funny feeling it's going to be Thank Ed you, Reed, Marcus, for becoming a member. So listen, they said they said, well, he said next week somebody will be hired. Then he went to, yep. it'll be seven to ten days. Now he's over there on Twitter talking about Grambling, what you over there doing? And this is my thing. With PWIs, they already know they're going to fire that coach. So they've already pretty much already did interviews, already tapped who they think they're going to hire. They've already done interviews. They've already drafted up contracts. So when they put out those names like, oh, we're going to be interviewing or we're interested in three or four people, they're doing that for PR purposes. They've already uh, pretty much done all the back work that's required to get a head coach. Have you ever noticed that once they fire him within a week, no less than seven days. And we're talking about seven days, including the weekend. They already have their head coach. Yeah, they already been. Uh, Tulane, they, they, they Tulane, already been. Tulane was what? Two weeks. Yeah, I think they Tulane already been. About uh, two weeks. Middle Tennessee was about two weeks. The um, Mississippi State was like three business days. When these PWIs yeah. decide that they're going to fire their coach, they already know who's going to take over. They've already done all the legwork. At this point, when they start firing them or, or whatever it is that they're doing, they are just basically doing that to as a PR method. They already know who they're going to get. And yeah, they, for, yeah for, the most, for the most part, they know who they're going to hire. They've already been down that road. They know that coach is not doing what he's supposed to do. I have no idea why uh, we procrastinate. <laughs> like there's no, for me, if you're going to go that route where you're firing your head coach, don't do it like this. Fire your head coach by week eight, week nine, have an interim come over, know who you're going to call. It's not fair to the new incoming head coach. You already put him at a disadvantage and yet you want him to go seven and four. Like with Jackson State, people can say what they want about how they were going to hire Ed Reed who didn't know who his defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, he didn't know anything. When Coach T.C. Taylor went in to have his interview, he knew all of his coaching staff, for the most part, like 99% of his coaching staff positions, he already knew who he was bringing in. Him and Coach O, they were already uh, recruiting players. And so for the most part, the co the players that wanted to come to Jackson State, they were able to hold on to them because they were recruiting them in the first place. Yeah. And there was continuity for the program. And they already knew what they had coming in. And I'm pretty sure that 
Coach O and Coach TC behind the scenes already knew. You know, there's whispers. They already knew Dion was leaving. They knew who was leaving? They knew Coach Prime was leaving. In of course they, they knew. They knew. So they already had everything tapped and fixed. And they know, look, this, 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 and this. Of course they knew. Of course. Brother Bakari, I just don't like the the late starts. I don't like it. No. Uh, I, I I don't either, but it, yeah. But I think I'm gonna tell you something. What you say they announced December second? Was that two weeks ago that they were interested in Fred McNair? They didn't just get interested on December second. I think they already knew, and they waited this long talking about they going through a hiring process. They going through a hiring process, uh, interview process. I mean. They already knew. They knew the school. Well, that's knew, kind of knew. like Terrence Graves, then, right? Why are you doing all this extra S H I T? Just hire the man so he can have his two. Southern was longer than that. Southern was what, a month? Yep. Yeah. That's a month that Coach Graves could have been recruiting or trying to retain some of those players that he wanted. It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You just wasted 30 days off of Coach Graves' recruiting cycle where he could have been retaining players and he could have been in the office already. And he's mulling around trying to figure out, are they going to give me the job or not? That's, not? that's not good business. And then you put out an article that says that they wanted power five salaries, so then you went with Graves kind of like as a backup. How can they ask for power five salaries? We don't have that type of, we don't have that type of funding, and that ain't state funding. Those power fives get those salaries from places like Nike and Adidas and whoever the hell else. We they get it from wealthy donors, but this is my thing. Yeah, yeah, the but going yeah, rate. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's see what the going of course rate is. The donors, I'm tired of them. They're not. But see, the, but see, the thing is, they're not who. They're he not. The low end. He's at the low end of the totem pole at a so-called power five. I don't even uh that money he makes is uh nothing. And I, I I'm not saying it's nothing, but he's like at the low end for real. He's at the low end. What he what 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 he what, what he got, especially what he was willing to accept to take the job when they said they didn't have all the money to pay him. So he was willing to accept half of his uh salary until they could get the rest of the salary up. So uh, like what I'm saying Lane, is Lane, that Lane, Lane Kiffin make ten million dollars a year, right? I mean, I feel like for his experience that he has, that's a pretty good number. But it's not if you actually look at it, he actually doesn't make five million dollars a year. I could pull it up, but he has like it's similar to Jackson State in the sense that he has incentives put in there. So he's not he didn't actually make the full five million this year. No, they already said they didn't have it to pay him in the beginning. But what I'm saying is they have donors, right? And black people with money donate to white schools. Morgan Freeman, B.B. King. I'm just going to name a couple of people from Mississippi who they gave their money to. B.B. King, Ole Miss, Morgan Freeman, Ole Miss. I can just name a couple of black people from Mississippi who we support when they made money. And it was this one lady. Oh, my goodness. I have to look up. She was from Hattiesburg. She was a black lady. She was born in there. 20s but she i forget what she did but she ended up becoming rich and before she died in like the 70s she left over five hundred thousand dollars to southern miss because she wanted our kids to go to college black people couldn't even go to southern miss when she left when she left here but and this is, that's, this is that's interesting and it's also interesting because it says that FCS head coaches, why don't they get any power five jobs inspecting a seldom used pipeline? And it basically said that out of all of FCS, we're, we're talking about white coaches and black, that only two coaches, Dion included, have ever been hired. It said FCS coaches hired to the FBS, and then we're talking about power five. So, but you know, everybody don't want to go though. See, everybody's not infatuated with their money, like the coach from North Dakota State. The coach that's at North Dakota State right now, he turned down two 
what people call power five jobs to get a raise up to 300, $350,000. Everybody is not, everybody is not running behind money saying, because more money don't mean more gooder. And, 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 and the older you get, and yes, I say good. The older you get, the more you understand that more money in black people. I want folks to understand this so we, and, and pardon my French on your channel, but I got to go here. So we can stop mentioning so called power five shit for black people. Look at the schools that they get. I'm going to start over again. They get the bottom of the bear. The guy who went to Kansas uh, from the I could, Turner Gill, the dude left Jackson State and went to Colorado. So that's the crew at Mississippi State. The dude at Colorado State, the dude at uh, uh, Maryland, look where Maryland was. Virginia, stop running behind these damn people. If they give you something, they're giving you their trash so you can clean it up. And if you clean it up, once it's clean, then they fire you and bring somebody else in. If you don't believe me, ask Sylvester Croom. Dan Mullen got credit for taking a team number one with Sylvester Croom, with Sylvester Croom talent. I, I, I really... I think the dream for black people, for me, is we want white acceptance so bad, we don't think we haven't done anything unless white people approve it, that we can't even look, we refuse to take the white shades off and say, damn, they screw us over. If they give us one of those jobs, we gonna get the worst job. We only gonna get two or three years because it's gonna be the worst job. The only one that got lucky was the biracial guy, uh, James Franklin, who ended up at Vanderbilt, did good at Vanderbilt and went to Penn State. But after him came Derrick Mason. Derrick Mason had two years at Vanderbilt, three years at Vanderbilt. They sucked. Those are the jobs black people get. Those are the jobs. I'm Y'all ain't tired of cleaning up white people trash. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Let's go clean their bottom. They messed their stuff up. Let's go fix it for them. Once didn't we fix say, it, then you go. Did you say Colorado was in debt and, and in one year they out of debt? Yeah, they was in debt. But what? But they—that's what I'm saying. We love to pull them out of debt and look down on ourselves. Mm. We will look down on ourselves while we are fixing them to prove to the world, look how great I am. They love me over here at this power, at this HWCU, because I don't call it PWI. I'm gonna call it what it is: HWCU, historically white. Because historically it was white, well, couldn't nobody else go there? The HWCUs gonna look at the black folks, African Americans, and they gonna just put you. Even Mississippi State just had a. He was a white guy, but I think he was Mexican. But if you've seen him, he was white. But since he claimed his Latino heritage, he coached ten games, nine games before they fired him. Nine, nine. Not that I'm, that ain't none of my fight, but I'm just saying how they do you. But we keep screaming, yeah, we should want to go. We we should want to go to those schools. How about build up what? How about figuring out a way coming together and building our stuff up so our coaches can get seven hundred and fifty to a million and a half dollars, so our coordinators can get two three hundred thousand dollars a year instead of always running to somebody else and then waiting on them to fix your stuff. They're not supposed to fix it. I'm sorry. They are not supposed to fix it. We are in this position for a reason. And if we keep running to them, if we keep leaving us to go to them, we ain't going to ever fix our stuff. Because you're going to come back and be like Ari, be like Dion, and all the rest of them. Look down on your stuff because they gave me trinkets. I'm just saying, I know people want to talk about Power Five and all the hell with that. I'm just saying for me, I ain't telling nobody else that shouldn't be their dream. I apologize if that's y'all dream. But look how they use look how they use our children. It's amazing we have to go to a power five, go to a HWCU, want to go coach there, then maybe we can get the best, we can get some of the best black players to come play for us. You can get one to sit on there. I want to go play at a school with a coach and people that look like me with a student population, 2% black, city population, 1% black. I'm just saying, that's me. I ain't telling nobody to think like me. I apologize for going off like that on your panel. I, I'm sorry.
Mm. Huh? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. What's going on, brother? What's going on, brother Picard? What's Doc? going on, Doc? Hey, nothing. Well, I know uh, your voice. You ain't got to tell me who you are. I know your voice <laughs> is distinct. <laughs> uh, no, but I was going to say, with Fred going to Texas, uh, we have a three, you know, when it comes to hiring folks, we have a, we actually have a three week waiting period. And that's with any university system that you uh, are a part of. So that's the reason why it did, it, it did take long for Fred to get the job at Texas Southern. Also, you gotta realize too, some of the recruits that they're trying to get, I know some probably it was still in their ear, trying to get people, you know, the recruits to come in. It's state championship week here in Texas. So pretty much almost everybody's gonna be uh in Arlington uh start shoot, started today. Today, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. So so what can you repeat that about the three week period? Can you repeat that? So we have a three so when it comes to hiring somebody here in Texas, we have a three week period. And that's and that's pretty much like our straight law. What do you so, mean by three week period? Meaning you have to wait three weeks to hire them or what does so that now, mean? So now we so we what we do is when we get ready if you got a candidate that's interested in a job it doesn't matter if it's culture whatever job it is it usually takes you at least three weeks for you to bring somebody on because you got to hire you you know you interview them and you just kind of go through just just go through a process and then if you like them then you interview them for a second time so that would probably be your second week that you do a second interview and then if you really like them then you send everything as far as doing the background check and stuff like that and then the third week you're hired Brother Bakari, what do you think about the um, statement that Alabama and what that coach? What what that coach said? He's still coaching. Yep, he, he's still the <laughs> offensive coordinator, and they ain't fired him. See, that's the weakness. I'm, I'm gonna be. That's the weakness of some of our people. We accept disrespect. I don't accept disrespect. That's absolutely disrespect. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I ain't know who it was. My homie sent it. My homie from Norfolk State sent it to me. Uh, I think every SWAC school need to be reaching out to a and &M. Oh, that's BS. You don't put that out. We want our students to stay. Tell him to keep that message to himself when he go recruit. Tell him to keep that message to himself. We want our we want our students to stay here with us. But once people once you willing to bow down to their power. This is what I say, right? This, if we want things to get better, this is what I ask people. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are we willing to sacrifice? Are we willing to sacrifice some of those trinkets to make our situation better, right? Because that's real messed up what he said, right? But I'm gonna say this, for like Jackson State is like in a prime position for what I say, right? With the money Jackson State brings to the city, I don't understand why no business person or athletic director or whoever they are handle certain affairs. They should be down there on those hotel necks, not the local black businesses who barely making it. Those hotels where people stand in when they come down there, y'all making this money off us. Y'all have to start giving back. You have to go pressure them. We can't just allow people to constantly I ain't gonna use the word pimp. We can't let people constantly use us like him. That's him using somebody giving him a check. He getting paid from somebody else. Just look and see. If you start to see A and M players going to a certain they, FBS school, I, I, I tell you this because it has it's been happening at A and M. They had their whole receiving card from twenty twenty one. 2022 going to the transfer portal. All of them went to different Power 5, G5 schools. So, 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 once you start, you have what, to start looking at 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But what he said, did should he have said it like this? Should he have even mentioned it in, in a tweet? No. But is it true that that's what kids are doing now? It's today? really not true. It's really not. It, like let's look let's look at the amount of folks that go t- into the transfer portal out of a, a let's do out of out of a hundred students that would go from all the hbcus that we have out of them going into the transfer portal how many go to a power five out of a hundred less than less than what 10 percent 10 to 15 go to power, less than 15%, right? So if we do 100 students and less than 15 go, out of those 15, how many actually are getting a a breakout season at that power five that would translate to them going to the NFL? Well, I'm going to be honest with you on this one right here. He is. He does work for the same coach. Says he only wins sweat. He only wins sweat games. <laughs> I mean that, that. For me, the the problem that I have with it is he said come to an HBCU when he should have said come to Alabama A and M. Because I'm gonna just be like this: Florida A and M does not have that particular um, feeling. Jackson State does not have that type of feeling. South Carolina State does not have that type of feeling. Southern does not have that type of feeling. There has been players that have went from Southern, from South Carolina State, from Jackson State, from Florida A&M. There are, um, and they've went to the NFL. And even if they haven't went to the NFL, they've went to the XFL. They went to the CFL. They've went to an overseas league. They've became coaches, but most of all, they went and got their degree. So for Coach Taylor to say this out loud, to me, it screams like when you were talking about how all of them went to Power Five, to me, it screams, Coach Taylor, you're making a pipeline for your students to go to Power Fives. You're making that because we there's nobody... Right, they, but yeah, my, but, and my, and, but but my whole thing is this is this is what I'm saying. It's it's been you know the last couple of years it's been happening, like not we, really. We, Who no, can you name? Who can you name besides far, Tank Dell? But but what I'm saying is what I'm saying is besides Tank Dell to go power five. Right, that didn't that didn't that just transfer because they said then maybe you can transfer up. Niles Gaddy got his degree. He doesn't count. Uh, I mean, Jalen still, Baldwin, he got his degree. Doesn't count. But what um, I'm saying, but what I'm the saying dude, is, the dude that went to T, that went to TCU, graduated. But what I'm saying he doesn't is, count. But what, but what I'm saying is, not the ones that didn't graduate. I'm talking about the ones that left. I want what you saying, to name them. I can't really name them right now. That's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. It's 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 as long as. As long as we have Division Two, Division Three, FCS schools, they're always going to be that they're going to be uh, uh, the pipeline for them to go to either a Power Five or a G Five. Most of them not even going to go to a uh, uh, most of them not even going to go to a Power Five. They'll go to a G Five, and then if that's the case, then they'll sit their ass in the portal. Excuse my language, but they'll be sitting in the portal for a long time. I, I'm just saying this: what he's saying. What he said is true, I guess, for him at Alabama A and M. Oh, but okay. So you that's saying what I'm, at Alabama A and M, right? That's what I'm saying. But but in a sense, it still is the it still is the the norm right now that most of these kids would like like Bakari said. They can they somebody gonna, drop me they, the um video of Alabama A and M's facilities, please. I I don't know where it is right now. If somebody can find that. <laughs> Because so, here's my thing, Alabama A and M's facilities light years ahead of um uh, several co- um several SWAC facilities, light years ahead. The location, and you know why they got you know, that, for, you know they got a, they're, they're, they're light, yeah, they're, they're, the, the facilities are light years because they have a AD that's progressive, that's that's forward thinking. 
Dr. Paul Bryant is not the person to be, you know what I'm saying, to be playing with. That man wants to, he wants to see Alabama and m succeed. This screams. Hey, can I, hey, can I say something right quick? Facilities only work when you're talking about wife. Trinkets. Yep. That's another trinket. trinket. That that's another trinket. See, I'm going to tell you something, right? I don't see. That's one thing we have to. I ain't going to say we. I did. I don't do. But I stopped, and I will suggest stop telling our people to, oh, they have all this shiny stuff, because you ain't going to out money the other schools. So they're going to always have more than you. So once we start talking about facilities, because we don't have the money that they have, but what we should have is to have pride in who we are. And well, take I think, care of I what think we the are. facilities argument is null and void when. There's kids that go to Texas A&M or to Georgia and that's, or these big, 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 big. They've seen it all. They've done it all. They've had it all. And they come to the SWAC. So that, for me, negates the, the statement that it's about facilities because of the fact and, that, they, that they come from these big power fives where the grass is greener. That's what negates it for me. You know why the grass is green over there? Why? Because it's more ish over there. They got more manure. <laughs> they got more fertilizer. But anyway, uh, but that's what I'm saying. We shouldn't even mention. I'm being honest. This is me. Don't mention facilities. Because if we, if our youth continue to focus on facilities, if we ain't got the donors that they have, our right. people with the little money they have, don't don't. So if we have our people just focus, if we have our youth just focusing on facilities, we gonna be at the bottom. I'm no, just being I'm honest. Saying, I'm saying compared to the rest of the FCS, because compared to the FCS, Alabama A and M, Prairie View, even Benedict College, and uh, what is it, Bowie State? Um, a couple. There's a couple others where, when we're talking about the complaint is, oh, HBCUs don't have facilities. What I'm saying is, those are some of the best in all of FCS, and then for D two, they have some really good facilities. So for me, Coach Prime, regardless of how he was snaking or wherever he was trying to go, he let everybody know what the play is and what we should be promoting. As an HBCU, what we should be promoting, which is the culture, play for your people, the love that you get. Don't play where you're taught, go where you're appreciated, not where you're tolerated. He gave us the blueprint for that. And so for me, the facilities are just a bonus because now. See what? I, okay, look, I ain't going to say nobody forward thinking because I think that was disrespectful. But why did it take him to say that? <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. Or maybe, okay, I'm going to say, I know people raise different and talk different it's things. It's that celebrity. I, it's the celebrity. You know, yeah, but what but, I'm well, saying, I, I've always said, but, 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 but what I'm saying is, why? Okay, did y'all ever hear Jerry Rice interview when he talked about why he went to Mississippi Valley State over now they are called Power Five schools? No, he was proud that he was proud to be black, so he wanted to go to a black school I so he could make Walter black Payton. people. No, Jerry Rice Jerry said Rice the same that. thing. He said the same thing. Jerry yeah. Rice, because he see, and that's the thing. We got so focused on facilities, and we don't got so focused on then a celebrity come and say something. People like myself, and I know people don't know me, but it's a hundreds of me, millions of me out here, been saying all of the time. Stand on okay. the street, say okay, and we understand that, brother Bakari. But what I'm saying is, he woke everybody up, put them on notice. And so now that HBCUs have that, that type of statement that that you know, that that coach made, he he don't he he's trying to really backtrack us back to where we were, which was poaching the power, poaching our talent. We're we're back to square one with that type of mentality. I'm gonna let Doctor speak, yeah, and then I, I'm gonna let Campbell interject, and then I'm gonna let Brother okay. Bakari and Coach, I mean, and Doc respond. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to say, when I read the, see, this is the problem sometimes with tweeting, you don't see the context of what somebody's 
saying because you're right. not watching their facial expression and the, from what I see is don't fall for the trap like we you come to a black school we do all this investing in you growing teaching you getting a degree or before you get a degree we do all this investment in you then a power of five school come in and scoop you up he's saying don't fall for that trap stay here that's what i believe he is his context of his tweet so is you're taking possible? it from if you're you're not taking it at face value where it says come to an hbcu get excellent coaching developed and then maybe you can transfer up i mean for me no. the me no, then maybe not. you can transfer up it doesn't really loop leave room for um no i think th i think then you can transfer see that's the context of it it's like you thinking it from a player point of view like i come to an hbcu and then I get all of his skills. I get notoriety. I'm doing well. I'm the number one wide receiver on the team. Now I got power five looking at me. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to move up. But the coach is basically saying to that player, don't get caught in that trap. That's what I think. That's it. And this is where when you're tweeting something and not speaking to maybe the context of what the coach is trying to say. That's what I think that we got to look at that side. I just want to say that. Okay. I think, yeah. Okay. Wait, I thought you had stopped. I apologize. Just, just I didn't mean to cut you off, bro. I thought you had stopped. I'm sorry. Okay. So no, 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 I just want, I just want to come in and say, until we talk to that coach and say, hey, oh, what wait, is wait, the wait. context of the switch? Yeah. Okay. So right now we're going to stop. We have a special guest on. Um, so we are going to give him the floor. Um, this is breaking news. Please, if you would, um, if you're tuned in right now, I would definitely appreciate any and all donations to the channel. We have breaking news here. I'm bringing from Swacking a Fool, we have G. And um, we're going to give him the stage to speak. What's up, guys? Hold on. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm just calling it, uh, coming in to let y'all know that Fred McNair has denied the report of talking to Texas Southern about the offer. He's in a meeting right now with uh, our athletic department and our president, like as we speak. I'm on the ground getting all the information. Uh, long, make a long story short, they had a meeting this morning. Fred put out a huge number that, that we couldn't, that we wasn't gonna match. They set up another meeting for this evening and right before the meeting, that news dropped. So I don't know what's going on. I mean, like I'm getting like 80,000 calls and all kind of groups and stuff, but we got a national alumni meeting right after this. So uh, as of right now, when we talked to Fred, he said, uh, um, he said that he had not spoken with Texas Southern. So this could be a lie, could be true. I don't know, but uh, that's what he said, and he's meeting with our athletic, athletic department right now as we speak. Whoa, 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 whoa! You can't get off yet. Where are you going? I ain't going. I ain't getting off. I ain't getting off. Because we, we got up. questions. If you got a question in the go chat, ahead, ask G, ask in the huh? super chat. Send a super chat and ask your questions. We have <laughs> G, G on the line. Mr. Homegrown Ass Whooping. Live and direct. See, if, listen, listen. If y'all remember in the off season, I, I spoke to this. I knew this was coming. What, what I say, I knew the contract negotiation. I knew you what we offered. And I knew what he was gonna, what he was going and it wasn't gonna match. And that's what I spoke on all summer, and that's been the hold up. Um, you we, said we you, you did uh, say it. I've been saying it. I've been saying it because I knew Not, it. the only thing I remember you saying was he better have him yeah. a winning season. If he wants the money, he won't. That's what I was saying. He better you win didn't the say that. You said he need to have a winning, he need to win the SWAC West this year. That was part of it. Yeah, yeah he, he need to win the SWAC West. Trying to get a contract and they left it at that. They didn't renew, they didn't do nothing. They sat down, they had a discussion, no contract was renewed. And it was, we, we they told him we not we not negotiate during the season. Okay. Not gonna happen. So do you think that this news that was dropped by HBCU Sports was purposely leaked to put some pressure on Alcorn? I think I think it was, but I do think it's some 
But I do think he's, I think, honestly, in my heart of hearts, I think he's going to accept it. If I was him, we would, he better because we're not going to pay him like this. Zero percent chance. We finna, we, 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 the demands he made this morning, when I heard the demand. Uh-oh. But I, but, but I, I, I don't, all corn don't want you to get it out. Fred McGarry's cutting your, cutting your, cutting your feed, G. That's people calling. That's people calling. But I, oh, okay. I, I believe, but I believe what you said because, like you said, if you're gonna, like, if you're gonna put pressure on a university because, like you said, he wanted the, he wanted the years and he wanted yeah. a little bit more money because he's been there and he's <laughs> been established. You you got because he has the leverage. He has the leverage. Now, granted, he what last season he didn't have a winning season. Uh the year before it, it was kind of it was kind of shaky the year before. But you go back. Let, 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 me let, let, let me tell y'all something. Let me let me tell y'all something. So Zach mm -hmm. just said they offer 310. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but today he asked all for 350. Damn. He asked leverage. all for 350. That's leverage. That's leverage and con that's leverage and uh, contract he, he, negotiation. Yeah, he, he had all for three fifty today. And, and if like, they not go, and they, they well, not can they make? So can they field. meet three twenty five? Can they meet three twenty five? Three fifteen? Y'all want my opinion? Yeah. Whatever offer you had on the table, pull it right now. You ain't gonna hold us hostage. You ain't won it since twenty nineteen. Pull it right now and give that same contract. To what I've been saying to Teddy Thomas, I knew this was gonna happen in negotiations. I knew this was gonna happen. Do now you want? To... Do you want Fred McNair to be your head coach? Not for three hundred twenty-five thousand. Hell no. Damn. And that, what he's saying is not for three hundred twenty-five thousand, and you still put a seven-four season or or, yes. or sixty-five okay, so season. Okay, so why why y'all don't negotiate? Why y'all don't denote, negotiate the three fifty in? a incentive form that status. we did we did why y'all not doing we'll give you 300 now with, the, with incentives he'll make over 350 with the contract we offer oh well if he don't accept the contract them, if he's not going to accept the incentives like if you win seven games you get ten thousand. If you clinch the the swap yeah. test you get an extra ten thousand yeah if you win the championship uh the swag championship you get an extra ten thousand if you go to this celebration bowl and you win, you get an extra twenty five thousand. So why don't they just put that in there? They yeah, did. That's, that's what they offered him. But he man, want his base. He want his base salary to be three hundred fifty thousand. And see, the, the thing, people, McNair got three years to retirement, right? So he he wanted at least three years. Everything he asked for before today, this morning, we gave him. Because the first contract, it was I uh, maybe two years, something like that. He said no, gave him three years. Wanted more money, gave more money. Wanted more money for assistance, gave it to him. At, at this point, you're not going to keep doing this. You're going to take this offer, or you're going to go to Texas Southern and get beat. It's, it's, it's up to you. It, it, you know, that's, that's what it's going to be, you know. Man, my phone is blowing up. Y'all can't do that, man. The, the, the McNabb family made y'all, man. Y'all can't do that. <laughs> No, no, oh no, no. We, we, we I'm just clowning. I'm just clowning, bro. I'm just clowning. I can I go back when we know it, Captain Marvel. It, it is a weird I'm just clowning. I'm just clowning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because what I'm saying is since 1990, ain't nobody been, it, it, a McNair has been at Alcorn since 19, what, 1980 something? Yeah. Like, literally, Fred was the first one to go, then Steve, Tim, his nephew, his, his, his son, everybody. It's just, it's a McNair. Is always going to be a McNair at all corn. Now, if he go to Texas Southern, he has it's it that first year is going to be a struggle for him to win. Listen, I feel I feel in, like he his entire time he gonna be there two years. Yeah, he want to retire. And Max, no, he gonna get fired. Two years, Max. I'm telling you what I know, guys. Telling y'all, I listen. This ain't nobody. I'm not a fan. I'm inside the locker room. I'm at practice. Let me tell you something. Tell you what I know. Okay? <laughs> He's going to be there two years. Screen record me and hold me to that. If he go to Texas, he's going to be there two years. How he going to be there two years and they gave McKinney five years and he won 13 games? You know what? You're right. That's a good point. You, you, no. You're right. He That's won good. 13 yeah. games. That, you, you know years. what? That's a real good point. That's a valid point. 
Thursday. I ain't think about it like this. Games. And if, that's, and if that's Granger, a valid point. And if Granger, if Granger is that aggressive to get Fred McNair there, what makes you think that they ain't going to, you know what I'm saying, to give him like four years? Four, you know what I'm saying? Like give him four years. See what they can do because, like yeah. you said, it takes it takes what? How long does it take for you to get your team? What? At least three years. Because now you got. Go, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. G, you lost to Texas Southern at homecoming last year. Yep. You got your ass whooped this year, and they trying to take your coach. How do you feel right now? Let them go. If 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 you're gonna play with us like that, if you love something, you let it go. And if it comes back, listen, I love the I love the chill, not the person sitting in the chill. I'm loyal to the chill, not the person that's sitting inside the chill. If you're gonna hold us hostage, let it let us go. I mean, you just go. Cause we ain't gonna pay you what you're gonna make in Texas. If you wanna leave, baby. Oh, and the best thing, oh, oh, hold hold on now. And the best thing about here being in Texas, no state taxes. Cause he gonna get yeah. all that. Dope. He gonna get all most majority of that Dope. money back. Pro- prove that you can build a program, Fred. Because because you got you you was handed a Ferrari when you got the off on. We was humming. You prove you can go build a program. Man, I can't keep letting you unrespect McNair like that, man. Listen, I I, I I'm more <laughs> I'm more in this than anybody you know. You know. Listen to take my word for it. Don't, don't listen to me about nothing else. But this I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I got to tell you now. Let, let me, okay, let me give you one more point. Let me give you one more point. I'm gonna share because I'm not trying to like dog, man. I love, man. I think he's a great guy. We've had players hit the portal, right? If Seven Thomas gets this job, half of them players coming back. If who gets the job? Seven Thomas, our defense coordinator. Mm. And Cedric Thomas, no, Cedric Thomas can coach, man, because he did turn around UAPB and, and turned them into a monster for a minute. Listen, and if he don't get it, I'm gonna be mad. Okay, I'm gonna be fussing. I'm gonna be. I don't. I don't even want to open up no interview. Y'all gonna have every. Y'all gonna have every, man. I'm turning in my keys. <laughs> if if we hire every, I'm turning in my keys. <laughs> y'all gonna have every. I'm done. I'm done. Hey. Y'all gonna be all on Instagram getting cussed out. I'm done. Y'all gonna be y'all gonna be cussed. Y'all gonna be getting cussed out on Instagram. (laughs) I am done. Okay. I am done. And we interview him. I'm done. If you interview, if you interview him, damn. If we interview, uh, corn. It's over with. I don't think he won't. Listen. Fred said he not going for less than three fifty. Well, so that's his base. Well, that's what he wants with the base salary, and then he wants the incentive. Congratulations, take something on your new head coach. Congratulations, take something on your new head. And we bet. Listen, mm-hmm. honestly, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. We might cave in because he's in the meet right now. So we might cave in and give him what he wants. This might be all a tactic to get exactly what he wants. But I'm gonna be mad as hell. I'm gonna be mad as hell if we, if we cave in and give him what he want. Tell him. I'm gonna be mad as hell. G on mute. You ain't gonna be mad if y'all have a winning season next year. Yes, I am, because we, we shouldn't pay nobody 250000 at all for with our enrollment, with our budget. We shouldn't do it. I, I, just, I just got, I just got, uh, there might be confirmation. I'm gonna have to make a phone call. I might have just got confirmation. Make sure you come back on here and break the news. You finna make a phone call. You finna break the news. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't know what that means. Maybe he'll take three thirty with him incentives. Three fifteen. Man, at this point, at this point, honestly, I'm ready for the. You know, I think he did too much. We offered him a contract. He saw. Let's just go ahead and move on. Agree to part ways. Because now, if you come back, kind of make it look like, you know, you you ain't really locked in. Let me. If she don't want to be there, let her go. Let's let's go to the next coach that want to be there. That's how I feel about it. That's just me personally. I'm just one person. I'm not, you know, this is me. And I've been saying this all year long, screaming it all year long. Jeez. You know, man, what you say, what you say he doing, you know, that happened on every level. Like, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, me and my homeboy be talking about this and we be laughing. I think he's one of the dumbest coaches in the world. 
<laughs> and I don't really, but I know this. I'm talking about like Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin held Ole Miss Austin talking about Auburn. So he, so he could get a raise. He ended up going from six million. He went from seven million to ten million dollars a year because he was talking about Auburn. That's a uh, that, that's a tactic they use to get what they want, man. Yeah, I, I, that's a tactic I, they use. I can see that. I just hope we don't cave in. Gee, I feel like he has the right to do that. I don't think so. And he was so close, he got his ass. I don't think so. I, I, I think I think. He, all right, so I, th I think he's a great coach, but three hundred fifty thousand at all for You gotta understand what we are. You gotta understand our location. You gotta look at our enrollment. You gotta look at our budget. You see what I'm saying? All that factors in. You 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 heard the university doing it at this point. You ain't winning like that. Now, if he was consistently still winning like that, okay, yeah. But you've been five and six, six and five, five and six and seven and four. No. All right, so G, I want you to look at this, and then I need I need your response live. Go ahead. I'm about to be outside again. I'm about to be outside again. If they give me two hundred fifty thousand, I'm outside. I'm going to campus. Gave you a tweet. I just told you. That man say he's from Glen Oaks. <laughs> They got a whole grown talent. They got a whole grown ass. Man from Glen Oaks. He said he's from Glen Oaks. Okay. Then that ass will be off the box. That ass will be off the box. Nah, hey, listen. He not. I don't know what we gonna do. I just got. He not budget on his. What happened to you standing by? I just told you I'm standing by. I'll. I'll. I'm faithful to the chair, not the person in it. I'm faithful to the chair, not the person in it. You ain't gonna get three fifty out of me after um the season you just had. No, no. Now if you if you'd have asked after winning them two championships, you, you might have had your case. But you had four consecutive. That's a whole recruiting class of mediocrity. Oh, you're not Ooh. getting three fifty. You're not getting. Ooh. You're not getting it. So whatever going, and I just got a message that he he's not budging on his three fifty. Oh, if that's the case, set him coming head coach. Man about to be in. That man about to be in <laughs> the, the, the third world. All right, y'all, you done you done switched it up, and I got the proof. Okay, I go got, ahead. I got the proof. You done switched up on him. What is going on? Yeah, that was that was big all the big man. Believe in big man. I don't know what he told me. I don't know what he told him. Yeah. You always believe in Big Mac. Yeah, you believe in Big Mac. Big Mac went in the half. That man said, Ain't nobody bigger than the university. Nobody. Nobody is bigger than the university. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody. And you standing on it. You, you won't so, so I got a question for you, G. All right. So, if 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 Fred decide, like I said, if he goes to Texas Southern, if he go to Houston, and you you got Cedric Thomas in the fold, would you have Cedric Thomas run the show, or would you give Jason Phillips to run the show? Cedric Thomas, Set e. because because he got because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop a little nugget. I'm gonna drop a little nugget. I ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I don't wanna put I don't wanna I, I love Fred. I ain't gonna personally yeah, don't don't do that because he might be coming back. Don't do that. Uh, it's, it's looking slim to be honest with y'all. But I, I think Fred, I don't want to throw him under the bus that he leave. You know what I'm saying? He's a good guy. I got a good relationship with Fred. He's a real good guy. I just think business wise, it's not a good move for us to pay him there. All right, so can you speak to this? Where are you running to now, G? To find me a coach, and I found him already. I didn't say I'm on the way. Let's hold on. I, I found him already. Cedric Thomas. You at the bus stop getting Cedric, or is he already there at the reservation? He already there. Cedric in the driveway. Cedric is in the driveway. Wait, come on, TC. I'm headed to Miami. I'm coming to the You know what's crazy? I to I told Cedric Thomas this off this offseason, like, man, I love to have you as my head coach. That's crazy. I just be manifesting stuff, you know. But uh, yeah, I. I kind of saw this coming with this contract situation, but it is what it is. Appreciate Fred for everything he did, but you ain't gonna hold us hostage. 
Lord, I'm getting my phone is like so. So listen, I feel like okay. So what you saying that you offered him three ten, right? Oh uh, no, I, I it was something like that three. I don't know if it was exactly 310 to be honest. With you. I, I know what he asked three, for 350. Let's say three. Okay, so that's let's say 300,000. Mm -hmm. Do you you guys don't have uh donors, I mean alumni that can come up with the 50,000 per year? We don't want to. So that's 150,000 for 3 years? We don't want to. That's the thing. You know we could pay him that. We don't mm -hmm. want to do it. We 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 don't see the it's not necessary to do that when you got a seven tummies on your staff. When when Fred has been failing the last four years. You now if he was coming out championships and, and and our and our profile was still going up, but our profile is going down. It's not going up. You don't pay. You don't give somebody three fifty when you got somebody who really been doing all the work right up under him. You know what I'm saying? Mm, 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 mm. So we could one hundred percent could. 100% could if we was winning and doing, you know what I'm saying? But it's not, it's not financially beneficial. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Well, G, I mean, I don't know what to say. I, I, I commend you for coming right on here and dispelling that narrative that, you know, they're, they're having a meeting right now trying to come to a, to an agreement it could be him take i know they're in a meeting it could be him telling them look i'm going to take this up you know what i'm saying it could be that somebody so, asked he's not worth three fifty three hundred and fifteen thousand. i give him 315. i i now I, i'll push it if, if, if he'll take 315 i'll give him 315 but he's not budging on 350. he's not budging and that's the message i just got he's not budging so it is what it is at this point. 315, that means that the alumni will only have to come up with 35,000 per year. And um, yeah, the, mo the money ain't the issue. It's, it's the willing to pay the money is the issue. The money ain't the issue. He gone, y'all. He gone. I'm sorry. Who said he gone. How you say he gone? Because I'm about if I had to put a percentage on it, I'd say he's ninety percent gone. Yeah, it, it's the art of negotiation. If he ain't budging on the number that he want, and the yeah. school ain't gonna do it, he gone. I'm, he I'm just, gonna say right now, you know, we ain't gonna do it. Because and then let me tell you another we gonna do. It. We got an in, in, interim president, interim president, right? Well, he ain't gonna do it because if, a lot of the alumni base don't want him to do it, so he do it anyway. He feel like he might not get that job with the pressure that's gonna come behind him from the alumni if he do give him that job, give him that money. So I know. Oh, so you saying the AD? Both, neither one. Him and the president, the AD and the president, they both interim. Hmm. Where did Sports Illustrated get their information from? Because they're saying that he's gone. He's over there pulling a prime, talking about he ain't talked to Texas Southern. Stop playing. Yeah, he might be lying. I mean, he might not be lying. He might be uh telling a half truth. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. The message I got was Sports, Sports Illustrated coming out with the story. Are they quoting HBCU Sports as where they got it from? Oh no, this is blue. I mean, it was there. The HBCU Sports is the one that talked about it it says that that alcorn was trying to negotiate i listen i'm not mad like i listen i want everybody gonna be saying i i've been calling for this if you follow me the last year on every platform i, I had a show friday what it was what today is i had a show last friday why i've been calling for this said something Said it to me. So I'm not upset. I saw somebody say, well, he, it's funny how he was speaking on, I've been calling for Cedric Thomas to be lead our program. If it was up to me, I wouldn't give him 280. But that's, I know inside stuff. This is off the field thing. The things that I know, that I've watched, that I've witnessed. It has nothing to do. Everybody won't say, oh, he's worth it. Oh, he's so worth it. You don't know what's going on. All you see is the result on the field. 
you know nothing about I'm in that locker room. I'm in the building. Hey, when he come back, he ain't gonna let you back in that locker room, G. Boy, G. I mean, boy, boy, I don't know. Right boy, now, G. boy, crap. Boy, crap. Fred gonna say, G, you can't come back in the locker room, hey, G. I, 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 ain't, I ain't get his approval in the first place. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the twenty fourth Arkansas to graduate from Arkansas State. You can't play with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said he's AD Junior up in that thing. Yeah, there you go. There you go, AD Junior. And if and if and if, uh, if it was up to me, I'd be announcing my head coach tonight. No, I like I, I I like the guy Freddie. He's a real good good guy, but I just think it's time. You know, in my opinion, it was time to part ways with the transfer portal. He's an old school guy. Don't want the names on back of the jerseys. Don't want no music at practice. Don't want to taking pictures on beat. It's just old school mentality that don't work. In this new era that I always, I always thought, you know what I'm saying? That just was my opinion. Now, I, I never, I'm never gonna bash him, and I'm always support him. But I always thought Seth Thomas would do a better job at the Hillmeyer program. You need some forward thinking. Yeah, some exactly. Ooh. Ooh, there you go. That stuff that worked in 18 is the different college football right now. Them, them trying for portal guy guys, he don't like guys out the portal. Well, you lose them to the portal. You have to do something, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it ain't working no more, you know what I'm saying? So you just you just need some innovative thinking, and I just think I just think it's time. I'm not I'm not shedding a tear. Love what he did for us. He was, he's a legendary Magnell. Love what he did, but I'm not shedding a tear behind it. I'm not I'm not opening up no pocketbook for it. So you outside searching for a coach. Oh, I ain't searching. The search is open. Okay, so what coaches? What coaches are gonna are they gonna remain? Are you gonna get some new blood? You talking about you want Cedric uh, to be the the new head coach? Who else you bringing in? Who else you want? You bringing uh, well, in? Okay, I got. I, I already, you see, I already got. A, I had a stay. I already got a staff already made up in my mind. Okay, see, I already just started. Name, just do a little name dropping just for fun. Special okay. teams. A special teams. I ain't got a special team coordinator yet. That wasn't important. Oh, um, my o, my OC gonna stay. Uh, Jason Phillips gonna be the OC. Uh, my 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 DC gonna be Coach Roberson. Um, he's our the whole defense staff gonna. Oh damn! Tell them folks stop calling. Oh man, he was just getting ready to drop the good juice, y'all. He was just getting ready to drop the good juice. Consistency is key. In any program. Now, another former head coach used that word and got crushed for using that phrase. So Deputy Mario, he got crushed for using the term forward thinking because he was talking about the administration. And the reason why he got crushed is because he was mad because we wouldn't let Tracy, who he's actually no longer with at this time, film uh, College Hill on our campus. That's why he was crushed because his type of forward thinking was let's get rich off of YouTube and gain 10 to 15 to 20,000 subscribers off of Jackson State, not give them any of the money. That's his type of forward thinking he was talking about. He wanted to do any and everything with no restrictions. That's what type of forward thinking he was talking about. The same forward thinking that when he got to Colorado, they said, no, you won't be doing all that over here. So when we're talking about forward thinking in football, having music at practice, letting kids have their name on the jersey, doing some uh, see exposure, which is when the kids are, are coming back from practice, asking them, what is your favorite R&B album? And having the kids answer the question and putting that on Instagram, regardless of whether or not you're not used to that type of things. Those type of things draw interest to uh, the players. Getting somebody to uh, get their mic pinned to them while they're at practice and then posting that to a social media page. Social media is big in this era. 90% of the offers that you see on Twitter, these coaches need you retweeting underneath them leaving a, a, a picture a video a comment saying come to our university 
come and see all that Jackson State has to offer. These recruits are looking at the impressions on Twitter. They're looking at these types of things. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, like I said, he gone. He about to he about to get in the slab, swinging and banging on. I don't on know. Team. I feel like if 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 Texas Southern offered him three ten, it must be three ten with its with incentives. But how how is he holding Alcorn to three fifty? Why wouldn't you just match Texas Southern? Because in Mississippi, you still got to pay state tax. Oh, okay. When he go to if he go to Texas, you ain't paying no state tax. Uh you pay as federal. Mm. That's why a lot of people move to Texas because of that. Dash, don't worry about TC Taylor's uh salary. Just know that he's locked in. He locked in. I was getting ready to say, so if Texas Southern offered 310, I'm is he why is he not budging on the 350? Cost of living is higher in Texas. So that was just breaking right there. And then G got off the live, so something's shaking, something's shaking and baking. And I don't know if he's coming back or not, but that was quite the surprise. Um, I know Dr. D was on here and Mr. Campbell, and I'm sorry for uh, acting like uh, Dan Rather or um, Wolf and just, you know, putting it in. But it was it was a breaking live interview that we had to bring straight to our viewers. We have about 317 people in the chat. Please go ahead and hit the like button. Um as always, if you would like to make a donation or join the membership, please do so to support the channel. All of the donations will go back into expenses directly related to the channel. Uh-oh. Hey, Irv. Mr. Mulligan in the chat. Everybody, make sure you say hi to Mr. Mulligan. Jackson State, great over here. It says it's all taxes. 350 in Mississippi is about 55K in Texas. Oh, okay. Um, he can't move on the reservation and get a um and get a, a discount because it's a it's a um what is it? A land uh land. Grant. It's a land. It's a land grant institution. You can't get some type of go ahead and build a tent out there and get land grant exemption for taxes. McNair pulled the plug on G. G probably fainted. He tried to hold it together, y'all. I think he did good. I think he did good. Better than me. Better than me. I just went and I heckled him and he didn't even budge. G is what you call a true troller. I'm trolling him with his own videos and he didn't budge. That's that's a true troller for you. Don't nothing phase him. I was tight mad. Couldn't I couldn't even phase him. Oh, they said Fred is tired of eating ham hocks every day. He wants some uh what they got in what they got to eat uh in Texas, you got, got they got tacos. You, you got yeah, you got tacos. <laughs> soul food tacos. Ooh, you got tacos. you got you got that Frenchies. You got Timmy Chan's. You got the turkey leg hood. You got a whole slew of stuff that you could eat down there in Houston. Turkey leg hood. Ooh, steaks. Sonic Boom asks, "Is Fred gonna come get Bradley?" I think nah. Bradley's happy where he's at. I'm not going to lie to you. Bradley is not a problem with, with the defense. Would I'm not, talking about the issue. recruiting is off the charts for defensive. I don't think Bradley would leave Jackson State. Why? Bradley because about to, Bradley about to have a field over. day. 
He's having the time of his life at Jackson State. Jackson State and the recruiting, they are having their way. Listen, I haven't seen so much back and forth in all my life. They going against each other. Forget going against the SWAT. Bradley and Coach J.O. are competing against each other. I would wish I, I know Dr. D and 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 Mr. Campbell they had gotten off when G got on. If you guys want to come back up, and Brother Bakari, what? Houston has Nobu as well. I feel like McNair should retire from. We got uh, Geraldtal, don't we? Geritol. I feel like he should retire from Geraldtal. Dr. D. Hey, look. Hey, look. <clears throat> Al, to, to deal with McNair, I'm not mad at what he's doing, but Texas Southern shouldn't even be looking at him as a coach because what G was saying, that old school mentality, times have changed. That's not going to change just because you go to t Texas Southern. The students are still the same. They want their they want the name on their backs. They want these NIL deal, Instagram, and you gotta you got to adapt with the times. And it, McNair is not going to adapt, so it's not gonna really work at Texas Southern. So he might as well just stay where he is, or just have the school just not renew his contract and say that's it and just retire. But I, I think it's a bad move by TSU. Mm -hmm. and, and also, so I want to tell you, you, think, you think cameras and everything yeah, should go ahead, to practice bro. and all that? What's that? So you think everything should just be ev everywhere like what Dion do? That's the time. That's the way. You you know, it's called the evolution. Like, okay, of I got you. We say that we gonna have, we gonna just gonna I understand. So that's what you agree with, right? So now, no, I, show me. Show me the top teams in the uh, nation, whether y'all want to call them a Power Five or FCS or whatever. Show me the top teams that's doing that. It's already, it's in the beginning stages. FAMU is doing it. FAMU is. Okay. About, I think he's talking about like a North Dakota State, a South Dakota State. I said, I said, I said Power Five. I said Power Five, Miss, Ole Miss. Find the teams, find teams. That's going to major bowls. That's doing that. Georgia, Georgia is doing that. And like I like I'm saying to you, this is the early stages of this new renaissance. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Things are changing and it's evolving. Five years from now, you're going to see a big a big change in how football is done. And so you see a look. You're, you're you're basically saying you're appealing to the younger generation, which is uh, a multitude of younger kids. And I, once again, I don't I don't necessarily. Um, to Dion, what I feel like he did was, of course, he used his celebrity, but the thing that I like about Jackson State is. <laughs> that Dion was standing in front of our greatness, right? And everything that's great about Jackson State. And and they felt like when he steps away and he and he leaves that it was going to disappear, but in reality, he just it's kind of like when you're standing in front of something and you want to look and see what's behind it. So once he stepped away, Jackson State was able to retain everything that's all Jackson State because it wasn't Dion. It was the HBCU culture. It's what Jackson State is. So I, I agree. I agree that I'm I'm talking about what G's statement that he said about McNair and how he's dealing with the players. That way of coaching is on his way out. That's what I'm saying. And then you also have to look at this. Maybe all his approach towards all corn had to be different because of the location, because of mm -hmm. the resource because of how he developed the program at Alcorn. So who's to say that when he comes to Texas Southern, being in Houston, 
getting some new coaching staff. And who's to say that he won't be more open to those types of things? He, he, has, more, he has more resources. So I, I don't want to put all of it on him. So the same thing applies to let, like a coach, Buddy, Hugh, Buddy Pugh. Buddy Pugh had the same type of mentality as far as um, he would get players from high school, sometimes community college, but he would really develop them. Yes. He was a coach that was a developing coach. Yes. And the thing with South Carolina State is, even if you do bring in Chennis Berry, you got to stop scheduling these power fives. You're going to have to come up with something different. Yes, Every that's year, correct. Losing five games per year, but that's not on Buddy Pugh. The AD keeps scheduling these power fives. Yeah, you're right about that. So I, I'm just saying not that necessarily it, always the coach. It's 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 other things. It's the culture. Play. It's it's the culture. It's the it's the culture that you have around the team. So you know, time is going to tell. You know, you know. We talk about Fred Miner is not talking to Texas Southern. It could be his agent talking to Texas Southern. It right. doesn't necessarily have to be him directly. It right. could be his agent. Right. And you know, then, that's you know, how he like, like Valley just got a three star today. I don't know if you guys saw that, but Valley was able to get a three star who had several different offers other places. And when we look at Valley, number one, they, they haven't, they're getting ready to be able to get their funding next year for um, the Ayers case because they've met their 10%, but they're just now being able to meet that 10% um, quota that they have to met, meet. But what I'm saying is that the notion that they can't do it, I'm not accepting that. And now at Valley, they have what? A younger coach, Coach Wade, and a younger AD. They were able to recruit Mylon Sockwell. He's from California. He's from California. Mylon Sockwell to Itabina, Mississippi. Mommy. Well, you don't know. He may have some family or somebody there, or you don't you don't know what the connection was. And it says there's that's the second three star commit this season for Valley. So put some yep, respect Valley, to that guy, Coach, Valley, Coach Anderson's name. So what I'm saying to you is this. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying. This is Valley that we're talking about here. They have a younger, they have a younger coaching staff. They have a younger AD. If you uh -huh. look at the graphics, if you look now, at now, what's the key word you said? Younger. That's right, what I'm saying. Some but, some of these some of these coaches are stuck in their ways and not wanting to change. Because see, see the key word that G said, you saw, he said, half the kids that went to the portal, and if you get the DC back, they'll come back. What does that tell you? It see, you know, I, I don't, I don't like that either. Let, let me see. I, I don't like that either. I, I promise you, I really don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Younger generation black people only got a problem with older generation black folks. They run their ass down there. Nick Saban, don't nobody say, don't nobody say nothing about that. Well, Nick Saban, Alabama don't need a younger coach. We run our ass to old white folks. Mm. I'm just saying, to me, that's a problem. And it's a damn weak mentality. The young people, the younger generation in the black community going to run black people. I'm not saying don't respect the youth. But when we say stuff like that, but then you look and see those same young people will run and go deal with older generation white folks. What the hell are we teaching our kids at home? Mm. What are we teaching them at home? Just because they got a DJ they can get in, out here. In, in the um, locker room, they you don't have to. Be, you don't a have DJ. to respect the older generation black, but respect the older generation white, mm. dude. That's literally yo. You didn't say those words. That's literally how I took it, though. But Just no, that's what I, I said. Bakari, that's what I said because G said that. G, you got to... I know. I'm when, not talking... I'm saying... I'm, no, I'm not talking about... Yeah. No, but I'm just saying I hear people say that all the time where the old folks and the young people wait. But an old white person can just tell you said that. I'm, I'm just saying it's just so much disrespect for me. I'm just saying I, like the older generation is Nick, is, is Nick Saban young. Is Nick Saban young. 
Is he stuck in his own white ways, getting young black kids face, cussing them out? Ain't nobody going to get on their platform and say nothing about it. None. But we always going to look at each other. The pro one of the problems for me, because I know people talk facilities. And when that guy turned down Arkansas State to go to Valley, that let me know that coach sold something more than facilities. Because I'm willing to bet you Arkansas State facilities is much better than Valley. I'm willing to bet you he sold something about some respect, right? But what get me is, how is it when it comes to us, we got to look and say, that old stuff got to go. Why y'all don't say that about this? Because I want, I want the black kids to go to, I'm going to call them PBIs, predominantly black. I don't want them to go to the HWCUs. But when they go to the HWCUs, why don't they have the same rules put on them for our youth that we put on ourselves? That's but all I'm saying. But Carl, I'm going to push back and say, I wouldn't necessarily use that as an analysis because of Alabama, because uh, Nick Saban is an old white man. I will use a different situation and more of a similar black school because they're going, if someone goes to Alabama, they, they're going because of the winning program and the facilities. And it's not because Nick Saban is an old white man. So, but Nick, he's stuck in his, what I said is he's stuck in his old white ways. You can see him he, every game getting young is, black but, kids' but, face cussing. Wait a minute. Don't know why don't nobody say nothing about that is the point that I'm making. Why that ain't never said. He stuck in his did. old they white did. ways. They did. At the beginning, when Alabama was losing this year, they was talking about maybe Nick Saban has lost the team and things like that. Remember, they were saying that when Alabama was going through that rough patch, they was talking about maybe he needs to retire. It was that talk. That talk only comes out when you losing. When a, when a coach that's old and losing, they talk about the game has passed him by. He's too old. That's what's happening to my Steelers. Same thing with Mike Tomlin. The team is not doing well. They talk about, oh, it's time to fire the coach. He's been over almost 20 years. You see, nobody says that comes to your age when you're winning. When you're losing, that's the first thing people point to. How long you've been there, and then you're out of touch with the players. Look, and I'm not saying because everything, the only thing in this world that consistent is change. And I'm not saying ain't nothing going to change. But the point that I'm making is I hear this all the time. I hear it. I, oh, they stuck in them old ways. So what's the new ways? Who said the new ways? Are so, right? so, so, so let me give you a prime example. Maybe you Andy use Robinson. some of the new. Maybe you no, use let me some give of you the new ways and some of the old ways. How about putting, but to just say, I'm going to absolutely dismiss this because this, what that coach don't want. And I, we shouldn't have to respect that. I don't know. I'm just saying. So, so, so Bacard, let me give you a prime example. I was there during a the time when, uh, when uh, Eddie Robinson was retiring from Grambling. You know what the word was with him? He's out of touch, too old. Right? It happens all the time. You, it's the change. Coaches get old. The message gets old. And that's the first thing that people call upon. The players The players will say, he's out of touch. He won't let us do this. It, it and happened you know with... What? Yeah. And you know what? Eddie Robinson was old. Marino Kasim got old. Everybody gone. But that ain't what caused uh, uh, stuff to change at, the, at, 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 at black colleges. What caused stuff to change was black people don't teach black pride no more in the black children because we, oh, they got nicer facilities. We want trinkets. That's what changed. That's what made the school start going down. That's what made all the programs start going down. In all honesty, people just stopped going. Go back and look at W.C. Gordon in the 80s at Jackson State. Black people stopped going. So whether you're old or young, if you ain't getting no talent, you just can't, you ain't going to do nothing. That's right. And that's that, the first thing people hit you on. You, Bakari, I agree with you. I'm just saying you expose yourself and that's what people going to pull at the low hanging fruit, which is, oh, you old, you out of touch. You got to go. Well, I will say this. I, I, I um, the mentality of, um, 
especially for Jackson State, which I don't think it's hurt our recruiting, which is the level of um, coverage and openness that Prime did where he was running it like a um, reality TV show. Um, Coach T.C. Taylor definitely switched it up. He wasn't about all that follow me around and I'm going to show you everything that I do besides using the bathroom. You might even see the door when I'm using the bathroom for Dion. And he switched it up. Uh, He's still getting recruits. The reality TV show thing is not, it's not something that, you know, when I look at Texas Southern and I look at their, um, program and how they were they would do this thing where they'll ask students different things just ask them a question like what's your favorite r&b song Mm, or do you know these lyrics those are things that it's not necessarily about evolving that's about just creativity but it's not disrupting the day-to-day operations of a football team which is you need to be focused doing a tiktok and everything that's cool but when we're in practice you need to be focused so maybe he, maybe uh, Coach McNair didn't have the resources for that, for a student to follow the team around and do those types of things. So I'm going to kind of like say that it's not necessarily about Coach McNair having an old way mentality. I know that... Um, he did, G highlighted that he didn't like getting players from the transfer portal, but I also remember G saying that it's hard to get kids from the transfer portal to come to Alcorn. I remember he was talking about recruiting strategies and he said that getting them to commit from Alcorn after going to these other schools, it was hard for them to do. So I think... um. With all that in mind, I feel like if Fred McNair, I feel like he really wants to stay at Alcorn, but he wants his last couple of years to be, we appreciate your services, so give him the 300 Give, it get to a man his money. All right. Hey, give great me, show. He, I, I, get a man his money. I got to get back to work. Um, keep it up. Thank you. Right. I'm about to bounce and then it says they, need, they, need, a new, they need a new practice field. Like, like you can't give somebody half a deck of cards and tell them to make a full deck and they working with way less. That's not fair. Don't expect for, so, I mean, or if you want to, y'all can put that, put that money towards uh, the field. So it looks, they need a new field too. Like, don't give somebody half a deck and, and and tell them, don't give them a whole bunch of lemons and tell them what type of lemonade to make. Well, <clears throat> all I, I mean, got to say, all I got to say is, did, can you Didn't Texas Southern just get some new lockers? They got new, they got a revamp locker room. They got a, a revamp uh, practice field. Uh, so they're getting the stuff in because the field was donated by the Houston Texans. Uh, so in the practice rooms were also getting renovated. Uh, so pretty much they're getting what they're supposed to get. Um, so basically what I'm saying is he's working with more resources in Texas. So, yeah, you, you, you got more, like you said, yes, you have more resources in Texas. You, you, I know brother Bakari highlighted that facilities, you know, you can't compete with a power five. I don't think it's necessarily about competing with the power five, but showing that your facilities are up to par at bare minimum, yours are up to par. Right. And and if you really think about it, they're across the street from a power five school. across. Street from University of Houston. University of Houston. So it's kind of really like uh, it's of kind of like what you're saying. It's kind of like Florida A and M, Florida State. Mm-hmm. Like where Florida, like Florida A and M, Florida State. So Florida A and M is on one side. And Florida State is kind of like a couple of blocks on another side. But with U of H and T Texas Southern, no, they literally are across the street from each other. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. 
and, and it's in and it's in the good old third ward. So um if he gets to, I mean I, I mean I'm I'm just being honest. He gone. He gone. So his his recruitment has already been started. I think he was already on the phone with some of the recruits in Texas. And I just feel like that he basically are uh, going to try to get some kids to come in there. Uh, and I feel like, you know, in a sense. So then what's the reason for the for the meeting then? Stall him out, Debo. Like, I mean, the the meeting, meeting? you know, to leverage. Yeah, leverage you still what? If leverage. he gone, he's still... gone. What you, what you leveraging? But see, that's the thing. He, If he really wants to stay there, he wants to stay there. But I'm just saying, my 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 opinion is he is he is out the door. <laughs> he already got one foot out the door. That's that's my that's that's my opinion. Um, they made a big good point. Sitting out the COVID season had something to do with the breaking of Alcorn. Yeah, uh, that and also. Uh, the instability with having having an interim president there um an interim ad because remember he he didn't remember a couple years ago he didn't you know him and the ad kind of got into it mm -hmm. with the with with uh having uh trainers on the field and stuff <laughs> um so i just wanted to quickly share this um, before we get off of here, because I, I remember we were talking about the FCS to FBS pipeline. pipeline. And, and, and so I thought this Brandy shared a tweet, but um, 1,941 1, players transferred from FBS to FCS. Only 774 players transferred from FCS to FBS. So in other words, more players are moving down because they think they have more opportunities to play. So it looks like to me, based off of that, that there is an FBS to FCS pipeline before there's an FCS to FBS. Yeah, it's been like that though. Because most because it used to be the story like if you're not getting no playing time. And if you don't want to sit out a year going from another from a power, another a power five conference to another P five conference, you go down. You go down to FCS and you you, you retain you, you retain a year of your eligibility. So basically you 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 get to be able to play right away. So um to me, when it comes to that. It's still the wave of what you got, and I'm not saying it's kids going to P five coming from FCS to P five. It's just the fact that they're going from FCS to FBS. People looking at you know since the transfer portal came into play, they look at it as it being that that you know what I'm saying a pipeline. I feel like it's fool's like, gold though to tell somebody. For that coach to say that, I feel like it's fool's gold. To tell somebody, I mean, we, we, can it, get it, you, it, we can get you there. Don't be selling maybe, pipe dreams because it's not realistic. Maybe maybe he's doing it. Maybe he said it because of what you see with players like Tank Dell, which is one in, you know what I'm saying, one in a million. And Tank Dell went from a Alabama A and M to the University of Houston and, and pretty much balled out. And look where it got him. And got him to the NFL. Okay, so I'm just gonna break this down real quick. FCS Portal Talk. This is from A Michelle. In 2022, there was 2,085 FCF players who entered the transfer portal, according to the website. Of those 2,085 FCS football players who entered in 2022, a total of 920 successfully transferred to another NCAA school, 573 undergraduate and 347 graduate players. Of the 920 student athletes, 
that successfully transferred, 62% went to a D1 school, 36% went to a D2 school, and 3% went D3. 569 went to D1, 327 went to D2, and 24 went to D3. So how many FCF student athletes in 2022 didn't make it out of the portal? 56%. 56% of the FCF student athletes who went in the portal did not make it out. 1,165. So that narrative that you can come to the FCS, you can get coached real well, you can get developed, and then transfer to the FBS is fool's gold. It's not realistic. And I don't know if they were just doing that to sell pipe dreams or I don't know what that narrative was about. But it's not, it's not, it's not good math. So the math ain't math. <laughs> yeah, when we look at the math, and we're talking about numbers. This isn't something that I made up. This isn't something that a Michelle made up. This is from the NCAA website. Mm. It doesn't look like the odds are very good. You can take a chance. And then if you look at um, the amount of players that were able to go into the portal and successfully transfer elsewhere, most of the time, you'll find that those particular players had relation, some type of coaching coach that was there or a relationship that they were, that was a connection. There was a connection as to why they were be able to transfer out. The, the real play is FBS to FCS. That's the real play. Don't, let's not. Forget about that. The real play is that students that are at the FBS level are actually transferring to the FCS. It's just so much stuff going on. Anyways, um, Doc, go ahead and shout out when you have in your next show. Uh -huh. So tomorrow is my next show. Can um, you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So my bad. Uh, yeah, I've been at work all day. So tomorrow is my next show. So hopefully I've been in talks with having DJ Stevens coming on the show uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll get in if he has to hit me back up. So we'll get back into it. He'll let me know uh, by tonight if he'll be able to come on tomorrow. Um, also... Uh, we trying to get into talks to with uh Miss Veronica with her nephew uh, that uh he just uh committed to Jackson State. We're trying to do that on Friday. Um. Uh, also tomorrow we're gonna talk about celebration bowls because <laughs> we still got a, you know what I'm saying we still got a bowl game coming up right now. We're gonna talk about celebration bowls. Try to see you know what's up with that. And uh Saturday, I'm gonna try to. See if I, I go stream the celebration bowl. So, uh oh, uh, Mr. Ford is in the building, so that's another hour. Anybody who's going to watch the game on Saturday, you're more than welcome to come on to the stream. <laughs> you, oh, okay, you're, you're going to be you're, streaming, uh, but just let you know that it's uh, it's not going to be you know monetized. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't monetize. Right. I can't put it on monetization. So everything just donate. Cause we we're trying to work and do some things and I got some things that are coming down the pipeline too. But I I'm listen to Mr. Ford, see what he got to say about this. <laughs> uh oh. So uh Mr. Ford just said drop the link. Drop the drop yeah, I know how Mr. Ford. So is. you know that's drop. a good another hour. I was supposed to <laughs> Let me go put my son's pot pie in the oven real quick. Mr. Ford. Hey, can you hear me? 
So, I mean, what, what what's going on, Mr. Ford? What did you do to the West? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm just going to say it like this. You, now. <laughs> you know, I'm a Fred, I'm a Fred McNair fan. I think this is a great move for Texas Southern. I, I really do. I think this is a great move. I'm uh, I'm trying yeah. to be on this. Uh, the Junior College National Championship game is on tonight. And wait a minute, it's supposed to be at 8 o'clock Eastern. Let me see. I got a few minutes. Let me find that. It's on ESPNU. So that's what I was looking. And then I just checked my front, uh, and I saw where you were talking about Fred McNair. I think this is a major move. You think this it's is... a major move for, for, for Fred McNair? Yeah. Yes, I do. And for Texas Southern? And for Texas Southern. Uh, G seems to think that he came on the show earlier. He seems to think that it's a it's a power move to get Alcorn to pay him three fifty a year. I don't know about that, but I know one thing. I'm ha I'm feeling good about this move. I hope he goes. To I hope he signs a contract because to me they didn't appreciate him, and for him to go to Texas South, listen, I think they can. He can do some major things out there. I think he can do some ma now the, the main thing is he's got to you know take a outstanding staff. Okay, of course I would love for I don't know if Cedric is going to go with him. I but, think uh, um I think that G tap Cedric to take over the program at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm thinking Cedric probably stay and take over the program. I think I hope he can take the um what's his name? Is it Jason Phillips? What's that guy's Jason. name? Yeah, Jason yeah, the Phillips, offensive from, coordinator. Yeah, take the offensive coordinator, and I was hoping he could take Cedric with him. But uh, it's going to be very important to coordinators, you know, and the staff. But I just think this is a good move for Fred, and I think it's a good move for Texas Southern. Don't you think it's kind of late in the recruiting season for all of these SWAC schools to make all of these upsets and switches? No. No. Um, well, the, I mean, you got a signing day, what, next Wednesday? But usually the HBCs, their major signing day is in February. Should, yeah. um, have you been seeing Jackson State recruitment? Yeah, yeah. I've been seeing the, the kids there. Valley has two three-star signed to their roster this year already. Two you said Valley? Stars. Yes, they got one today. Uh huh. Jackson State got one today. Uh, what about Jay Hobson? Should they bring him back to Alcorn? Oh, you know I love Jay. Man, listen, I done told y'all. And I, you talking about? I, I told y'all about Jay Hobson. I watched them thoroughly. Jay Hobson is the man. Jay Hobson is the man. That guy's good, man. Jay Hobson is the man. I will say this: um, Fred McNair did an awesome job with Aaron Allen. He turned oh, yeah. water. He yeah. turned water into wine with that quarterback. Yeah, he did. He did. He was working with what he was working with. Right. The biggest problem I thought for Alcorn the last few years is that they weren't able to put together a totally dominant front line. Okay. Now they had one kid that last year that should do it was at. Uh, Jackson State, that kid was really good. I, I can't remember that kid's name. Malachi but he was Yeah. Was he a defensive end? Because mm -hmm. he yeah. had two sacks. Yeah. Now, he was the two. Now, is he gone or what? Nah, that man's still there. Man, he was tough. But they weren't able to get them, you know, a, a straight, dominant defensive line like I thought they, you know, would be able to get. But uh, with him going out the valley, I mean, going out to uh, Texas Southern, man, I feel like the sky's the limit. So G pointed out that Fred McNair has an old way of um, coaching and that some of that hindered Alcorn from being able to recruit. Um, he has a lot of old school ways, um, including not... Um, not allowing music at the game or at the um, practice and not having the names on the back of the jerseys and that he felt like that kind and not using the utilizing the transfer portal 
And he felt like that kind of um, placed Alcorn at a disadvantage. Um, he, he, he came out earlier and he said that Fred McNair was in a meeting with the athletic department and that he hasn't heard from Texas Southern. So this is not true that he's going to Texas Southern? All the reports are saying he's gone, but um, G called in because I sent him the link earlier because I was heckling him, of course. Uh -huh. And he said that the reports of him talking to Texas Southern aren't true and that they're in a meeting right now because G said that Fred McNair wanted $350,000 a year. Okay. That's what he wanted as his base pay. And Alcorn wasn't willing to pull the trigger on that number because of his past couple of seasons. They haven't been, I guess, to their liking. Uh -huh. So we don't know if it's a power play by Fred McNair. Is it a power play? But if he is able to go to Texas Southern, do you think that he'll try to get Andrew Body to come back? Or will he focus on chase and keep him as his quarterback i don't think andrew body's coming back i i, I you know I, I really don't i think that andrew body is the missing piece for somebody's championship run and i you think gotta have, you have to have that offensive line for him though he can't take him. yeah but uh like to me there are several places i think would look at andrew but like i told you now the word down over here in atlanta is that the people at FAMU willing them is after uh, Andrew Body. Andrew Body would be awesome at Morgan. I don't know if he's willing to go that far from home, but uh, I think he's the missing piece for somebody. Um, I, I really, I don't, I don't think Andrew Body's coming back to Texas. So I don't, I don't think so. Johnny Cole said Fred has been on Texas Southern's campus. So is Fred McNair pulling a prime over here or what? What's no, going I don't think on? He's, that, that's not his character. If he's been on that campus, they don't talk business. But I'm going to say it like this. My gut feeling right now, this is a major move for Texas Southern and for Fred McNair. I think they can do big things together. I really do. I thought Fred McNair wanted to retire at Alcorn. Yeah, but they, they, to me, it's like they didn't support him. The, the, I, I thought that the administration didn't support him. I thought that uh, one time I thought that the people down there, some of them insiders were jealous of him. And I don't, I, I know what, you know what, sometimes it's best to move on. And I was, you know, if, if he moves on, I think it's a great move. Mm, 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 mm. Mr. Ford, you just caused hammock, boy. You said that the SWAC West need to clear out. <laughs> that they not. need some new coaching blood. They need a realignment. And it seemed like one right after the other, they started pulling the trigger. Well, I, you know what? I think this is a good move. If, if he goes to Texas Southern, I think it's a great move for him. I really do. The only thing I just need for him to, you know, take a, a, a top-notch staff down there. Okay? Especially um, for recruiting. Yeah. You maybe get you Do two you or three guys. Hire from, somebody from the Houston, Texas area? Yeah, Texas definitely. Area. Or Texas, period. Definitely. Definitely. You get somebody... Uh, that's there, but uh, the main two the people are those coordinators. Who is he going to take down there as coordinators? You know, who's going to be the uh, special Marcus teams coordinator? That McNair proved he couldn't win the big game at Alcorn. And I guess when he's talking about the big game, I think he's talking about the one versus Texas Southern. That was Wait the minute, big game. I thought, didn't, didn't they win the, the SWAC East six years in a row or something? What is he talking about? Hmm. Remember when they went to Swackies? They went to the Celebration Bowl, I think, three times. I think he took them, too. He was an assistant on the first one. Listen, whatever. Uh, like I said, if he goes to Texas Southern, I think that uh, he can do oh, major Marcus things. Oh, the Celebration Bowl. He didn't win it. No, he took this them two times, I know. 
They won two SWAC championships. That's what I'm saying. What are you talking about? They can't win the big game. Anyway, uh, I think it's a major move. Uh, I'd love to see him at Texas Southern. Mm, 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 mm. I think for, for us, I think that they're already putting some of these coaches at a disadvantage by doing it so late. Well, you know, better late than never. <laughs> as long as you're going to give them the extra, the uh, ex you need to give them three years. If you're going to hire them, because most of these coaches that are have been on staff, they've had this season to recruit folks. They've had official visits and unofficial visits during the season right. to recruit folks. So when you're bringing in folks almost at early signing day, you've already got them at a disadvantage. They have to get their coaches together. And um, I mean, it's just kind of like you've stacked the odds against them and then to only give them two years is not fair. But I feel like Texas Southern, if McKinney could only win 13 games and he was able to coach for five years, is Texas Southern going to have a higher um, or, you know, a shorter leash on uh, Coach McNair? Or are they going to give him time to develop his program? You know, well, if, that's, if, uh, that's, if the coach that, only wins well, 13 games in, in that many years, like, are you going to make your next coach win quicker or are you going to give him time to develop? Well, that would be up to uh... – A.D. Granger and, you know, the president and whoever the president. Now, one thing about Texas Southern, they change presidents like every, what, two and a half, three years now. So, you know, that's something they're going to have to see. But um, I think he can get it done out there. I think he can get it done. I, I, like I said, I mean, I'd like to see who's the coordinator. So you still have Gramlin, who doesn't have their coach. Well, uh, <laughs> they got a committee, right? I don't know what's going on. With yeah, that. supposedly on the committees, Doug. We we just gotta wait on the uh the term. Uh, what is the timeline? Because they should be naming one real soon. Uh, it should be next week. Cause uh, early signing date is next Wednesday, I believe. So mm -hmm. I'm looking for them to, to name somebody by next week. But like I said, I mean, you know, Jackson State on the uh, Deion Sanders, they utilize that December signing. But most of the his HBCUs would wait until February. I think it's February 3rd to do the major signings. Okay. So the, early, the early signing day that's coming out next week, Jackson State will be participating heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But um, most of the HBCs are going to wait until that Mr. February Campbell said you tap dancing. You tap dancing around that uh, Gremlin question better than Gregory Hines. Well, Mr. Cam, I'm not <laughs> tap dancing. I'm just telling you that uh, when Doug Williams them set that timeline, that's when they're going to name it. Don't don't you think for a minute that Doug Williams them went into that thing not knowing who they wanted? Who is that? That's this is my problem with Doug Williams and a lot of the other alumni that's on Twitter. They was doing all this barking and all this yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have our 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 new head coach named within a week. And here it is. They must have meant 10, 10 business days. They said Draymond Green has been suspended indefinitely until further notice. Damn. Is it my Draymond Green? Yep. Well, he's been asking for that. I mean, that's Drake. Drake Mon is always going to push the envelope, you know, because I thought it was ridiculous what he did to that. Uh, what's that guy's name up there with Minnesota? Noivik? What? Noivik? I don't know. No, no the, the black Frenchman. What was his name? Oh, okay. You talking about Poole? His teammate? That they that they ended up trading? He was in Utah, and then they traded him to Minnesota. I think you're talking about Poole. No, not Poole. I mean, Ooh, yeah, that was low down. Now, I ain't talking about Jordan Poole. This guy here is like a seven-footer. Rudy Gobert? 
Go, yeah, go Bear. That's right. I, go I Bear. thought he, yeah, I thought he should have got about two weeks for what he did to Rudy Go Bear. So he been pushing the envelope a long time. He's probably ready to leave because uh, you see that kind of stuff right there. You getting suspe uh, suspended indefinitely. That means you ready to leave town. I know, but why would you do that? He sat up there and got he punched Pool in the mouth. Yeah, that was low Pool down. Was to be the um, future of the franchise, then you got him traded. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, Draymond is. Uh, I know he's Michigan. Is he Saginaw, Michigan? Where is he from? Don't get me to. Add. Don't get me. This to look, add. look. I think he's Saginaw. They called him Dre Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's my thing, Mister Ford. Uh -huh. Okay. So for the SWAC West next year, with all of this realignment, I feel like Prairie View. And possibly UAPB going into their second year, they could make some noise, right? Uh, Prairie View. Because they have, they have continuity. Well, I don't know about you. I don't know about Pine Bluff, but I think Prairie View, yeah. Uh, the main thing with Prairie View is going to be um, the recruiting I still say, and I continue to say this, I, I initially thought that the biggest thing, the biggest need of Prairie View was an offensive coordinator, but the biggest need is a defensive coordinator. And then the second biggest need is an offensive coordinator. They have a running back coach posing as an offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. That's their problem. They need a quarterback coach slash offensive coordinator. That's what they need. What does UAPB need? Well, we got to watch him a little bit more. If he can go out and get, you know, beat the Bushes in uh, Arkansas, you know, beat, go up to St. Louis and get some of them guys, and then go into Dallas. If you can I get mean, some of them has, kids from Dallas. He has some nice facilities over at UAPB. Yeah, yeah, they do. They had one quarterback I was really impressed with. He was the kid that played when they went up to the Liberty Bowl. Remember when they played um, Tennessee State in the um, – what do they call that? The Southern Heritage Classic. Mm -hmm. Remember that guy that was, he was like a freshman or something. That guy looked really good to me now. He just needed some protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Ford, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, it's everything is still in limbo. They said Fred McNair is headed to um, Texas Southern. They said he's in a meeting with Alcorn right now. He's not budging on the three hundred and fifty thousand. That's what he wants. Well, uh, where is Doctor Cavill? We, we come, uh, like you said, summon him. Send him a, a email to tell him we need to hear his expertise. He's he's uh, the dean of Texas, isn't he? When it comes to HBCs, HBCUs, uh, Doctor Cavill, if you out there, could you please come up? Where's Blue at? Is Blue on here? I've been telling Blue to come on all night. Oh, okay, yeah, man. He ain't, he in the chat. Oh, no, he's talking on. about Blue is entering the transfer portal with uh, Coach Fred. So wherever Coach Fred goes. Uh, that's where he's going. Listen, I think this would be a major move for uh, Coach McNair to go to Texas. I really do. I think this would be a major move. Uh, I think it would be some good things. I think it would be a, be a nice marriage between Coach McNair and the Texas Southern uh, family. Yeah. So it's, for it's, our for our first signing day, we have eight linemen, six are freshmen, two defensive ends, two running backs, one wide receiver, two corners, one quarterback, and one linebacker. I ain't I think the lineman that he's talking about is the offensive line. Okay. And a multitude of those offensive line come from Louisville High School. 
Yeah, I've, I've heard of them. And you know, yeah. Quay, Quay, Quay Davis was freshman All-American. He was the one that stepped to the plate um, mid-season, you know, when we had to do some readjusting on that readjustments on that offensive line. Uh-huh. At this point, Jackson State's not even competing with anybody else uh, as far as recruiting goes, they're not even competing against anybody else in the swag. It's Doctor or it's it's uh, Coach Jo and uh, Coach Bradley. They're basically competing against each other. Oh, okay. I they're mean, what you just what you just read that, was very. I mean, that's uh, that impressive. That's man. impressive. Huh? And you know, that's where we say the trenches is where it's won at. Oh, without a doubt. Um, I wanted to see our wide receivers um, being able to convert better. And I guess that's all with development, of course. Now we have um, Ethan Terrell coming in. We already have um, a continuity with our with our quarterback, with Morgan com- coming for his second year. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. for us, for me, it's kind of like, dang, all of these coaches have not had the chance to really settle into recruiting because everything's in such disarray that they can't. As far as Jackson is concerned? As no, far not you- Jackson, because Jackson is getting the, the continuity. We have that piece and we've had it for a while. I'm saying like all these coaches are not getting a fair shake at being able to have that full time where you're bringing in recruits to come look at the facilities. You're you're bringing them to the games to sell them on the atmosphere. You're not able to do that. If you getting, you getting to be the head coach now, what are you promoting to these kids? Well, listen, the key month for most uh, recruiters is January. If you can get them kids in there by January, uh, you in the ball game. Now you got this guy. Uh, uh, what's his name? Terrence Graves down there. Terrence knows Louisiana. He knows Texas. He knows Mississippi. He knows uh, New Orleans. So, okay, I don't so the think he's, that, he's at a disadvantage. He, wasn't he already on Southern's Ross um, Southern's coaching staff? Yeah, he was the special teams coordinator and the linebackers coach. So then why wasn't that translating? I guess it's different when you're able to call the shots, right? So you get to dictate how you want things run. I remember you said last night, though, you want them to get You want him to don't be wearing nobody else's underwear, right? Mr. That's Ford? right. Go get his own staff. Get people who are loyal to him. I mean, you know. The main thing is he's got to get his own coordinators. Now, if he's happy with Willie Todd, I'm happy with him. If he's happy, I I would really like for him to get another defense coordinator, to be honest with you. It says Cedric Thomas might become the Alcorn head coach, though. Yeah, I, I could see that. Cedric is good. Uh, Cedric is a... Uh, He's a disciple of Jay Hobson. He worked with Jay. I don't know why folks be over here saying, okay, so like for instance, Coach T.C. Taylor, we we know that he is a disciple slash player. He came up under Big Daddy. Yeah, I think so. And so what we're looking for is Sparks of that, right? Because it was successful. That's what we want to see. Translated. Yeah, they want to be dominant again. I mean, you know, they want to be dumb. They want to be Jackson State. Well, I like what I see so far. Oh yeah. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. My, my question mark is still that defensive coordinator position at Jackson. Uh, I'm, I'm not calling for. The you're not, you're, of, you're uh, not Bradley, but I, 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 he, he, I'm not impressed with him as a defense coordinator. So was it the three three five? The play calling. Um, I personally thought with all them athletes Jackson State had, you're supposed to put six, seven guys in that paint, stop the run, and then play the pass. 
But that was the number one thing. Um, see, Jackson, the kind of Jackson gets a big, powerful, fast athlete. You, you, you listen. You tell them guys, look, this your home, and ain't nobody else coming through here. You know, uh, that three, three, five, or whatever. That I, I just thought that was ridiculous. I thought it was ridiculous. Mm, 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 mm. Alcorn better find that other thirty-five thousand. Well, my thing is. Uh, Sometimes change is good. I, I, I man, I, I, to be honest with you, listen. I think Fred would do wonders at Texas Sub. I do. Yeah, I think for us the blitzing was a problem. I didn't when you saw and when we were able to see the sparks of the blitz, it was amazing. But then sometimes when they had the blitz, the linebackers didn't always pick it up well and see the thing you got to understand head. for for two years or three years you had uh the guy from the cowboys what's his name dennis uh thurman dennis thurman to me i thought he was the best in the hbcu ranks he was the best defense coordinator okay then he leaves and then like i said on the on doc show to me, Bradley is practicing. He didn't. He didn't display a championship type defense coordinator. That ain't gonna listen. That practicing stuff. You don't do that at Jackson now. No, you don't do that at Jackson. They don't do that. No, that's why I, t I tell people now. Certain places in the HBCU world, you got to come there with a resume, and your resume got to say that you were part of championships. And uh, I, I just, I, I just thought he was very inexperienced. So the the we we did lead in FCS inter, in inter, interceptions. Yeah, I remember Doc talking regular, about that in the regular season. Uh, Jackson State did lead FCS in interceptions. Um, I think that that was something that they were able to utilize. Yeah, to actually help recruit even more. So then, then they were. And that was something we were able to get a, a three star today and he plays defensive back and he plays wide receiver and his name is Travis Terrell Jr. And he's from, from where is it from? Fairburn, 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 Georgia. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's not that's a few miles from my house. Yeah. What's his high school? Let me get it for you. I mean, I think that that, I'm not going to say that it, it's um, Terenzo Quinn, Coach Quinn and Coach Magana, they've been doing a phenomenal job with uh, the recruiting. Uh, Coach Quinn was able to get Nyreek Sharp. He flipped him from, I want to say it was Georgia Tech, I want to say. He was able to flip him within being on campus after a week. Woo. Okay. Yeah, he, he Woo. first came here. He was only here for a week when, you know, they announced it, and then he was able to flip him within a week's time. He came here and committed. But um, – And you don't know his high school? I'm getting ready to tell you right okay. now. Um, Creekside High oh, School. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They play – I think they play for the state championship. Yeah, there's some athletes out there. That's yeah, you're right. That's Fabian, Georgia. That's South uh, South Fulton. Yep, he's a three star. He's a um, dual sport athlete, two time first team all region, one time first team all state. Um, and big time player. Big time player. Right here. Uh, this is him. Uh, let me see. Oh, let me show y'all. Oh, goodness. I'm going to replay it for you guys. But, yeah, a big-time athlete that was that we were able to get, and he committed today. Okay. So, 
So it looks like he's a um, returner as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, but let's just keep it a buck. The ability to recruit these types of players, you also had the these home games that he was able to attend, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so someone says Jackson is tied for third. And the reason why North Dakota State and Furman are number one and number two uh, blue is because, of course, they had postseason. So mm -hmm. Jackson State was first for regular season. Well, and one of the things I saw North Dakota State this weekend, and I'm going to say this again, that's a FBS program pretending to be an FCS program. Because let me tell you something, I've watched North Dakota State this weekend. They could beat some Power 5 schools. They could beat them. Why with don't the they size they got. Well, now some of them uh, Power 5 schools got sense enough to know they don't want to run into North Dakota State. They don't well, want nothing to do with them. Guess who's running into them next year? Huh? Guess who, yeah, it's almost finished. Guess who's running into North Dakota State next year? No, who? Colorado. Oh, okay. 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 Well, I mean, I'll just say this. They better have their stuff together. <laughs> but then, North Dakota State's their head coach just left and went where? Didn't he go to Southern Cal? Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't know. Is is did Blue say anything? I think he, he just went out there yeah, as a I defensive think assistant. Blue did say that. North Well, here's my thing with North Dakota State. They have had such a pipeline for just talent. Yeah. I don't know who they named as their new head coach. Did they just? Well, they haven't named him yet, I don't think. But I know that the, the Maybe last... they'll name, if they name somebody inside the coaching staff. Yeah, they probably will. Because uh, have, North Dakota State has a program. You know, they got several of their uh, – I think the guy that's at Kansas State, he was at North Dakota State at one time. The guy that's at Northwestern in the Big Ten, he was a defensive coordinator or something at, at uh, mm -hmm. North Dakota so, State. They got several of their coaches in big positions. So Blue said that the North Dakota head state coach uh, or the head coach is going to USC, but they're going that's to. That's right. He's going to be a defensive coach. assistant. They're going to promote the offensive coordinator from what I heard. So with that being said, then promoting the offensive coordinator, you Can get you the continuity. Time, yeah. Nothing's going to change. Up. Nothing's going to change. They got a program. It does really because of the uh, support, the athletic program, they just, you know, they lose people. Then they plug somebody else in them positions. They got what, you know, to be honest, they got a dynasty. They got a dynasty. Um, and then I don't know if you were able to hear this earlier, Mr. Ford, but uh -huh. they made a ruling with the NCAA that um, multi multi transfers do not have to sit out. They're eligible. Yeah, I, it, it came on. It was on the TV when I got in today. You're right. Yeah, I, so I did. You hear. know that um, when we were talking about women's basketball. There was a young lady from Texas Southern. She'll be immediately available tomorrow for the Mississippi State game versus right. Jackson State versus Mississippi State. She should be immediately available because NCAA said they're not going to hold. Everybody's basically approved now. Right. Right. So that for that, I feel like if I don't know if Daphne White is going to be available to play, but having, um, let me get her name correct i don't want to mispronounce her name so i'm going to pull it up real quick but having her activated adriana avent from mm -hmm. Texas southern right. that was the shooter the three-point shooter that we needed and you know her, she might spark up and 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 light a fire, and then that might get bowler because sometimes shooting threes gets contagious. Right. Us having her activated for tomorrow's game, that might be the key piece that we need. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, one thing about it, you know, uh, Coach Reed's gonna get it done now. 
You know, that's it was one thing about her. Now, whatever she needs, she's going to go get it. Dang. So the offensive coordinator. So it looks like for for the for North Dakota State, for just for the um, coach, the head coach going t- as a as a position coach, he's going to get big money. Oh, yeah. That's Even something more than being a head coach. Remember, Southern Cal joined the Big Ten. The Big Ten got all kind of money from television, from Fox, and from everybody else. I mean, he'll probably get three times what he was making at uh, North Dakota. Just as a position coach? Yes. You remember I told you, Jerry Mack, his base salary when we went to University of Tennessee was 500000 That's why I told people, stop talking about him. We can't pay him. He's not coming back to the SWAC and MEAC. Uh, that man making a base salary of a half a million dollars? He's we not can't. even looking, thinking about no SWAC and MEAC. Oh, Lord. You the one that said we need to start paying them wages. Yeah, we got, I mean, yeah, we got to, we got to up the wages. If we want to see good football, then if you, you got to pay these people. If you want good coaches, you got to pay them. You got to pay them. It says, uh, somebody says Lincoln Riley will never win a championship. It says the North Dakota State University head coach is going to be making almost a million per year as an assistant coach. I'm trying to tell you, that's Southern Cal. That's Southern Southern Cal. That's the school that gave you O.J. Simpson, Reggie Bush. Uh, What's that guy was named? The one that just died, Charles White. Sam the Bam Cunningham. Uh, Marcus Allen, uh, Clarence Davis, Lynn Swan, Keyshawn Johnson. They, you know, they got a serious legacy. And they right there in South Central. They play in the L.A. Coliseum. There's nothing for them to have eighty and 90000 at their games. Yeah, they give their assistants a million. Mm, mm, mm. Look at all the national championships that uh, John McKay and – that guy John Robinson won, and uh, the one that they ran out and went up to Seattle, Pete Carroll. You know, he had the wild bunch. You know, guys, man, they put together so many national championships. It's not even funny. Mm-mm-mm. So I guess... Um Oh, Lord. All these folks talking miss. What they say now? They're saying that um, I need an official announcement before I say anything. Why are these folks going live off one tweet from neither school? Thirsty for engagement and the Jackson State well is dry. Sweetie, we're recruiting over here. We are recruiting over here. Well, I do want them to, I want to, I want to, you know, like I said, I do want to see if it's going to be official. I said, I'm telling you, I think that Fred is going to, if he goes to Texas Southern, man, that's going to be big time. I, I'm I'm glad that you think it's going to be big time and that you're balancing it out because I had earlier, Dr. D was saying that he didn't think it was a good hire because he feels like, and G was saying that he's going to be stuck in his old ways, but I felt like Texas Southern has more resources and more opportunities and it opens up the recruiting tool for him because regardless of what you say you're in houston houston anybody going to hbcu and you right there in houston that's lit yeah listen i I just wanted to make it official like whoever said it yeah let's let's make it official you know uh let's hear something and i'm gonna tell you right now that man let me tell you something that Rivalry between Texas Southern and Southern. If Fred goes over there, that thing is going to be red hot. So that's so going so to be red gonna hot. Wait for Grambling, right? Huh? So that means we're just waiting on Grambling. It's it, yeah. if, if they do all this waiting just to name Simon, it's kind of like you wasted two weeks, right? Why do they wait so long just to name a coach within the program it it doesn't make sense you're wasting valuable time that they could have spent recruiting 
Yeah, that's true. Don't do all that extra. I don't know. It's I, I don't know if they're trying to find a Ed Reed or, you know. I don't know what they're trying to find out, but then to name John Simon is kind of it's like, dang, what happened? Yeah. You could have just named um, John Simon two weeks ago and he could have been right on having some scheduling official visits. Now, was um, he ever the offense coordinator? Was he with the first year? Was he the offense coordinator at Grambling John before Simon? they signed this guy? Uh, don't get me to lying. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm wondering. I, feel like I know he was at Memphis Hugh State, Hugh. right? Wasn't he at Memphis State? I feel like they should have kept you as head coach if they were going to do no. all this hoopla back and forth. I knew I knew that that was a ground sweat, like I told you. You, you did. You said you, that you can't lose the Bayou. Bayou, Bayou and, the way, and in the fashion that he lost it, you, they not going to go for that. No. Dr. D said that they're putting in contract terms for Ed Reed to make it tight. I don't know what they're doing that for. Boy, as soon as he get on live and cuss, what you going to do? Have an interim coach? Yeah. That's, so uh, uh, this is Blake, Le Blake Levine. Um, and he is, of course, one of the uh, news reporters out of Mississippi. And it says, no deal has been finalized for Fred McNair to go to Texas Southern. It could happen. But at the moment, there is no official deal. Deal okay. or no deal? Deal or no deal? I don't know. They said that the offer for um is three hundred and ten thousand for Texas Southern, and I'm sure that's probably three hundred and ten thousand plus incentives. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, G said that, that they're in a meeting. We'll see. I just think it would be better if he moved on. I would I would cite I would cite the Mike Prince show, but the Mike Prince show was the one that said that uh A.D. Ashley Robinson was already in Texas. <laughs> oh, okay. You're talking about when they would... Uh... They said that he's already picked out his his uh, his ranch in in Texas. Right. But I don't know if I can go off of um, off of that. It says, we've just received confirmation that it is true. Fred McNair will be named the next football coach at Texas Southern University's Detail has yet been released to us, but we'll keep you posted. Well, we should know what I'm, I'm thinking. If they'll have a press conference tomorrow, or will they? Anyway, have this is not me announcing this. Is literally first of all, G came on to my live today, and if anybody knows G, he's basically the source for Alcorn. He came on today. And my reputation can't be ruined because I based my particular sources. Are you going to say that about Sports Illustrated? Because that's that's this this little article right here. This is Sports Illustrated. Texas Southern expected to be named uh, Fred McNair as next head football coach. This is Sports Illustrated that posted it. So are you going to question Sports Illustrated for their uh source are you gonna question hbcu sports for their source because those are that's that's who i'm quoting as the source so right. nothing will happen to my reputation because what i'm literally doing on this live is i'm discussing the sources and i had g on here to bring in some insight and then we're just discussing what that means for the swac west that's all so no my uh, reputation will not be affected by this. If anything, people are enjoying this live and I would suggest that you enjoy it as well too. 
and we'll just wait for that final. I mean, that wouldn't even make any sense. Is this an April Fool's joke or something? Like, who knows? But April Fool's. Yeah, April Fool's. Is Kim Rashad, are you going to question Ken Rashad's um, credibility? Because that's who posted it. Are you going to question Kendrick Marshall's credibility? You can't question my credibility if I'm literally just sharing the sources. Plus, nobody said it was confirmed. Expected doesn't mean official. Um, but anyway, we've been on this live for a while. Mr. Ford, do you uh -huh. have anything else to say? Do you have anything, anything else, anything else you want to highlight about the SWAC West and all the mayhem that you've caused since October? <laughs> well, Tell my main thing is please pay these people well so that we could attract top notch coaches. Because we're going to get to athletes. You just highlighted one from Creekside. We're going to get to athletes. But my thing is, make sure that when we get to athletes, that we got superior educators, superior coaches to deal with them. So whatever we got to pay, we just got to pay. You know what the, the old saying was, you get what you pay for. So we got to pay. So in other words... Corn needs to come up with thirty-five thousand. Whatever you know, uh, I you know what I'm gonna be honest. Which I would like to see Fred at Texas Southern. Is that just because you want to see what he can do with more resources? Yeah, yeah. I think, I, like I said, I I think that uh, <laughs> I I could see him doing wonders out there. There you have it. Thank you all for tuning in to the live. Um, I'm getting ready to cut it right here so I can get my baby his, his pot pie that he's been asking for that I can take it out the oven. You all have a blessed and great evening. Um, I may be streaming the Jackson State versus Mississippi State game. Um Wait, Mr. Campbell, you, Mr. Campbell, come back up here because you never spoke. You came in and then you didn't get to say what you wanted to say. Mr. Campbell, come up here real quick. Mr. Campbell, come up here real quick. Miss, um, Mr. Campbell said that you want him out of Alcorn because Alcorn has been wearing Gremlin's ass out. Uh, yeah, they have since, um, <laughs> uh, I think it's since Ken K, right? Since Ken K left. Dang, that's a long time that you've been getting your ass worn out. Yeah, so, yeah, so, they have. I think they kind of owned us. Okay, well, we're just going to go ahead and end and, and the live. Um, Listen, that's not that's not nice, Mr. Ford, that you want for for him to leave so that um, Alcorn can quit whooping up on Grandma. No, I'd like for him to leave because I think it's a major opportunity for him. I really do. I think it's it's a major opportunity for him uh, to go to Texas Southern. There you have it, y'all. The great Mr. Ford. He's just as long as as he like he said. Don't be wearing nobody's underwear. Fred McNair. He needs to get a fresh pack, a fresh yeah. pack of underwear. So that means some new blood in there. There you go. Uh oh, here go, Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell. Yes, yes, ma'am. You came out here earlier, but when we had the breaking news with G coming on here, you dropped off. Cause what, what happened? Well, I was at the gym and I was I listening know. to you and Brother Bakar was making a point about, you know, Coach DT. And I was going to make a point about that because it was just blowing my What has bothered me looking on social media that people from HBCUs are co-signing that BS. And I see, I don't play that cuteness. So I'm going to say this to all the HBCU people. If Coach TC, okay, so Timona, how many players y'all got signed up, right? About eight, nine, ten quality yep. players, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to say this to all my Jack, even though I know Jack State folks are going to understand what I'm saying. If Coach TC Taylor went to those recruits and said, hey, guys, you guys come to Jackson, and in two years, I'm going to send you up to Ole Miss. You think y'all going to go for that? Hell no. If 
Coach Simmons went and said, you know what, guys? You come on over here to Florida and m for the first two years of your career. And I tell you what, we're going to train you up so well, we're going to send you across the street over there to Florida State. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. How in the hell does that even sound right for anybody to co-sign that? Mm-hmm. If down there at Southern, you come on down here to Southern, man, and you can watch the jukebox. And after you finish watching the jukebox, you can go right across the street over there to LSU. So, see, don't play me to say that that is something that is a good thing. That is ridiculous. And anybody that went to an HBCU to co-sign that BS, you need to turn your card in. You need to turn your card in because that mentality is what holds us back because we are constantly saying that we are not good enough to do what we're supposed to do. And I don't subscribe to that. Right. I I don't subscribe to that. And I tell anybody, because like I tell people this and I'll go back to this. My granddad went to Jackson College in 1938. It wasn't a white man he worked with that was smarter than him. Not one. Not one. So don't tell me that these kids can't come. The recruiting thing should be you played up at Ole Miss and you played in Mississippi State. Come on down here to Jackson State and actually get a great education. And actually play in front of 40,000 people, and we'll see if you go to the NFL. That's what it should be in the reverse. It should not be us saying you come here and then you go there. Because, see, Eric, cause see DT was cute with it, and people are defending it. But if I said it just like that, if your coach said what I just said, you come to Jackson State, and I'm going to send you to Ole Miss. You think Jackson State alumni going to go for that? Uh-uh, he would need an exit out there. Just a, 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 empty a quick out, exit. Empty out your, empty out your office. Uh, uh, thank you. So that's what I'm saying. See, everybody's being cute with it. See, I'm going to call it for what it is. I'm going to say what it really means because that's what he's saying. Because, again, if Willie would dare say, come to FAMU and go to Florida State, are you crazy? Are, are you crazy? Hmm. Willie would not make it home. Because hmm. you know we don't, like I say, so it's the same. That's well, what Col- I was saying. Like, we don't Southern – we not have is not having that. Jackson State is not having that. FAMU is not having that. Not even South close. Car- South Carolina State is not having that. Okay, that's why I told the North guys for A and T. Yeah, you come to A and T. Big bad A and T. And then after you, you know, you get we train you up real good. You going over there to Duke and North Carolina. So say it. Let's call it for what it is. Steve, stop being cute with it. And trying to skirt around it. Well, because when you say power five and group of five, you know what I mean? It doesn't give a name to it. I'm going to give a name to it. See, so when I say it the way he meant to say it, then guess what? Everybody's like, heck no. So that was my thing that just bothers me that for anybody to even co sign that, I don't want to hear that. Well, that's what people do and all that. Well, fine. If you come to FAMU and transfer, that's fine. But Willie's job is not to train you to go to Florida State. Right. And then it's just like, just putting it putting it as HBCUs. It's not HBCUs. You must be talking about Alabama A and M's because we don't subscribe to that at HBCUs. We're well, not see, that's why. Yeah, and see, that's my point. He tried to be cute. And see, this is the thing about it. Doctor D came on and said what he's trying to say. Well, there's a thing that Hermit was said. Just don't hit sin. Because if he would have read, the, I guarantee you, his uh, he took it down. First of all, you know that, right? He didn't he take it down until well, no, no, no. it was yeah, yeah, I, oh, and yeah well, exactly. Thousand views. Exactly. But my point of it is, what do you think his AD said when he saw that? You don't think them alone for Alabama A and M called him and said, "What is this?" I would think that they that that would cause. I don't know. For me, that would be a fireable offense. It, there is, and like I say, I don't want anybody to get fired. But the fact, I'm sorry, it just, yeah, it yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm with you. Mentality that you have, and then it also shows to me, like me being a conspiracy theorist, I'm looking at, well, dang, is this why Coach Maynard is not able to retain his talent? Thank is you. This why these uh, players are exiting after having decent. Uh, time at Alabama A&M, you're not able to build your program if you have coaches with that type of mentality. How can you build a winning program when as soon as people have a decent year, they're going and leaving? Well, so see, for me, so- it seems like, oh, okay, so basically you're you're the pipeline to the Power Five. Are you, do you have connections to send these players? So you're, sell- you're sabotaging Alabama A&M's program because they have decent facilities. 
They're in. Well, I, don't, I don't care if they had and no just I don't care if they had facilities like Valley. If those kids come on that campus, your job is to protect, incubate, and grow them to be alums of that school. If that kid chooses after a couple of years to say, I want to go, like I say, we had a kid, you know, we all judge about it. Kamar said he left to go to Jacksonville State. God bless him. But I'm telling you that Willie did not say, oh, guess what? You made all America here, FAMU. Now going over to the Jacksonville State, I know he did not say that. Right. Because Willie fought to the very end and said, you probably don't want to leave here. Willie didn't think he was going to leave. So that's what I'm saying. And, and I guess what really aggravates me is that we have a group of people that come. And see, just y'all just admit, I understand y'all like Texas and Alabama and Georgia and Florida and LSU. I get it. I really understand. I watch football. I'm a football fan. But there comes a certain time that you got to stand on, as the young folks say, stand on business. And see, when you sit back there and think that is okay, for somebody to say that you are less than, because I'm going to keep saying this again. If the players would come to the HBCUs, because we were the SEC before the SEC, they stole our stuff. So now we know they stole our stuff. We're going to give them back the stuff that they stole from us? Mm. That, that doesn't even make any sense. That didn't, it doesn't even make any sense. So we know that if those players... It, it, you talk about the billions of dollars. Because I'll tell you this. Do you see people watching Harvard and Yale playing football? Hell no. Because those are not the best players playing. So there might be the richest white people that's going to be running the country, but nobody's watching them playing football. My point of it, people want to see great players. So my thing is, the thing what he should be saying is, since because I think Jay White said this, well, we're in Alabama and we got all these players. The thing should be, if you're sitting on Alabama's bench or you're sitting on Auburn's bench, you should come to Alabama A&M. That's what come he should. That should magic, be his tweet. Come to the Magic City Classic. That and, that and should play in front of seventy thousand. Th th thank you. Come and to where get a, we, and get and get, get, get a, and get an engineering degree. Come here and get an engineering degree. The Reese's the Reese's Senior Bowl is played at. Come to there. Come come over there to where the Reese's Senior Bowl is and and meet uh N Nagy is it Nagy or Nagy? Meet meet up with him. Shake his hand at the at the um. At that particular classic between Jackson State. Come so that, that's what, yeah, thank come, you. Come, 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 come get an education as a black man. Come to where you're appreciated and valued, not where you're just a number. And I'm going to take this one last shot, and I don't care who don't like it. And I, like I said, I know a lot of people that play that power. I got friends that coach all that. And I'm going to tell you, a friend of mine that played right down there at Texas A&M, big money Texas A&M. And you know what he told me? He said, Steve, you know, the, the jobs that I get when I go looking for a job is from my friends that went to Prairie View. The Prairie View people that want to help me get jobs. I said, bro, you, you went to Texas A&M. He said, exactly. Mm. So you can go and think and do whatever, but I'm telling you what I know. If you call somebody from Jackson State, FAMU, Southern, Alcorn, and you, I see Jackson State, on your resume, I might joke with you like me and you do. Me and you joke all the time. But I'm going to tell you one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure you get that job. I'm going to make sure of that. Because you went to Jackson State. So my thing is, we, we have to stop being cute and, and playing this game that I see people trying to play. Well, you know, this is what happens. And all, I, 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 I'm going to say it. As you say, say it out loud in the mirror. If your coach said, and I'm going to say this to you, whatever school you name, and then say send them to the white power PWI, you ain't going to go for that. Point blank, period. Point blank, period. You're not. So don't play me with this, this cute wording that you try to do. And like you said, he did it. He, and, he, and he threw HBCU in there to cover himself to be cute. So no, nah, I'm not I'm not going for that. So that's what what I wanted to say is because and like I say, no disrespect for people to have the other opinion. But no, I'm going to say this again. If all those guys that, that you guys are recruiting that are good players, think about and see this is what I think people don't understand. It's not like Jack State or Family has ever recruited five stars. We ain't never recruited. There's, we create. There's, there's, there's FBS teams that ain't well, never well, recruited. Well, five thank you. Stars. But what? But my point of it is. Well, hold on. Listen to my point. But we create five stars. Right. We create Walter Payton to be a five star. We create Steve McNair to be a five star. We create Jerry Rice to be a five star. We create Bullet Bob Hayes to be a five star. 
we, that's we what had we the do. Five stars before they knew what a five star that they, was. They, that, that, that's what I'm saying. We we build we build those players. We take those players and say, you know what? Yeah, you might be rough around the edges, but we're going to give you first of all the ability to play, the ability to be coached, the ability to be loved. And guess what? Another thing too, you're also going to have less pressure because you're going to be on a campus where the professor is going to make sure you do what you're supposed to do. You're not just a number. You're not a number at Jackson State. Not a, you, at Alabama, you're a football player. At Jackson State, you're actually a real student athlete. So that's, that's my thing. That's, that's what I, I just, it just bothers me. And I see all these people on social media and in these groups trying to half-ass co-sign this. And I'm going to say this again. If Willie Simmons said, come to FAMU and you play for two years and I'm going to send you to Florida State, all hell would break loose. Period. So that, so I'm not, I'm not going for that. So for my people and all that, we, we got to, we got to stand up for this and not think. And, and when you see people say that, then you got to question what, where their mentality is at. You can't just let that slide because see, this is what happens with players that we're trying to get, because these are people that are talking to these players that we're trying to recruit. Oh, well, you know, you go to family and Jack State, you know, that's okay. But you really you just go there and then you just going up, up the road over there to Florida State and Ole Miss. Uh-uh. Uh 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 uh. Uh-uh. Are you? to say it for people in the Twitter spaces to be able to regurgitate and screenshot and say, "Look, don't go over there. All they're gonna do is use you up, use two years of your eligibility, and tell you they can get you to a power five when they really can." And they can't. And, and the thing about it is, so you look at all those kids that you guys are recruiting in Texas, right? So this is what people are going to try to do again. Oh, well, you know, you're going over there to Jackson. I don't know about that guy. You probably want to go over there and, and play some low-level ass school over there in Texas where the education ain't worth nothing. But, you know, it's the, it's the white man's ice is colder. So you, and you got black people saying this. And I'm just keeping it 100. No, listen, man, I love it. But I'm sorry. You got black people that are co-signing this. But then these are the same black people that need help and need help from us. These same black people call me want to borrow some money. Okay, you help my person do this. Mr. Campbell, I heard somebody from FAMU. No, 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 no. If you 100 with me, you be 100. So don't go over there and tell some player that, well, you know, you could go over there to Florida and them, man. That's cool, but, bro, you really want to go to Florida State. What? Cause you, cause you, cause you, you, you a Seminole fan, you a Gator fan, you a Hurricane fan, you a Texas Longhorn fan. So, so no, I, I, I'm just, so my thing is to all my HBCU people listening, is when y'all see that foolishness, check them folks, check them folks and do not let anybody tell any player that we are a juke, first of all, the, the, a JUCO? You gonna compare Jack State University that issues out doctorates? Okay, guys. FAMU that issues out doctorates and, and to a JUCO? That's disrespect right there in itself. Right. So you better never call them FAMU a JUCO or it's like a JUCO. I know what JUCO look like. FAMU, Jack State, Southern, Grambling is not a JUCO. Right. You our, history, sip? our history doesn't say JUCO. Our Hall of Famers don't say Juco. Yeah. So that's what when people are sitting up there where it's just like a Juco. I'm like, really? And he came from an HBCU. Graduated from an HBCU. Been working at HBCUs all his <laughs> life as a coach. Been in HBCU spaces. And this is how you feel. Well, you know, but this is what but you know what this says though. And I and I ain't got no problem. But like, as, as my grandma said, if you want to be over there with the white folks, go on over there. If you want to be over there with them. And ain't nothing, and listen, and it's plenty of folks that's over there with them. And I, you know what? Because we need to be everywhere. Right. There's but nothing just, wrong with it. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, but just, I'd rather nothing. for you to be over there. You're not doing Alabama A&M any good with that mentality. And to your point, that's why, why do you think we always look at and like all them guys are leaving? Look at all the, because, because. Because honestly, otherwise, yes, yeah, because here, FBS to FCS, not the other way around. 
because I'm going to give TCK and, and Willie because I'm because these are schools I'm close to and I know. You people say, oh, all these people left left Jackson State. No, those people were Dion people. They want Jackson State people. The Jackson State people stayed. The people that wanted to come to Jackson State stayed there. <laughs> the people that wanted to come to FAMU stayed there. That's why y'all didn't go one in ten. Y'all had talent. And y'all still got kids to come. Fam, you had talent. And we still got kids that are coming. So, it's, it's so, it's so you know, again, I know I don't want to go off on no tangent and all that. But like I said, I, I stand on one thing and one thing only. Because nobody is ever going to tell me that an HBCU cannot do the exact same thing. And again, I understand. And you know, hold on, I'm going to make one more point because I thought about this. I have a friend of mine, her, her son, and he's a really good player. But you do three years ago. The year before B. John Roberts got it, not one player from Texas got drafted. So you had this four hundred million dollar weight room, everything that you and you still didn't get a player drafted. So that even tell you that even tells you that even you can have the best of everything and you still didn't get no player drafted. Mm. So see, don't even tell me that that makes it there. So that one said people try to play this game and try to fool y'all to say that you know you play this. You only get that. Now, I'm going to say this. If you come here and play well, they will find you. They will find you. It has been proven. So that's my soapbox. Mr. Mr. Campbell, let me ask you a question, right? As a recruiting strategy, right? Should you recruit to Jackson State, Alcorn, TSU? Should you recruit there as a destination school? I, I, absolutely. Cause see, see, you, you see. To me, the, the mentality in the portal is wrong. What DT is doing, the mentality should be is I'm going to go get kids that are not satisfied in Group of Five and Power Five schools, right? You and I'm going to use Marquise Bell and James Houston again as the as the thing. Marquise Bell went to Maryland. It didn't work out. He comes to FAMU. Now he all over the, the TV at Dallas. James Houston, damn sure if he would if they would have played him, he would have been Rookie of the Year. On defense. So that's what we should be doing. And then also, like we're doing, is build, see, you build it two ways. You get kids that have talent that are not getting a fair shake at a group of five power by bring them in. And then you also, because I'm a firm believer, you got to recruit freshmen because those are kids that's going to be there and you raise them up and they're going to be part of it. Because, I mean, that quick fix, it's got to be a mix. It's got to be a mix. Because you got to have kids that know the program, that love the program, and they grow up in the program. There's something about being a freshman on a university, on a team, and going through that freshman head knock. What's the difference between what – okay, let me, let me ask you this. If you had framed it like this, say, say we're looking at a high-level athlete who may end up having to go to a school and sit for a year or maybe two, right? Do, is that any different than saying, hey – you can come here and get playing time. And once you establish yourself as a Division One player, you can certainly go in the portal and test out your options either for NIL or higher level. What's I'm going to I, I, I'm going to say this again. You see, that's what I'm saying. You being cute with it, and no disrespect. I'm going to say this again. I'm TC Taylor. Those twelve kids that come to Jack State, I'm going to train you up, and then you take your behind on over. I'm going to send you over there to Old Miss and Mississippi State. See, say it for what it is, man. Don't be cute with it. Well, 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 okay, okay. So, so this, this is what I'm saying because what's happening, okay, Mr. Campbell, what's happening at HBCUs, or let me let me say this, what's happening at the Power Five level is also happening at HBCUs too. You can't insulate HBCUs can't insulate themselves from the economics of NCAA college football. Like you can't, you can't expect some, quote unquote, blind loyalty. And not realize the times that you were living in. And the it's not. Well, see, Rocky, it's not. It's not a blind loyalty. You see, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, see, this is what I think we do. We're majoring on the minor. There are more kids in the portal that are not going to get a scholarship. Okay, I, I agree. I agree. So, 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 for us to sit back and think that these kids are coming from HBCU, and then all of a sudden they're going to jump the power five. And I think Tamona did a great job. Tamona, didn't you break that down earlier in your show? About that number that flew, uh, flowed back and forth. Did you not do that earlier? I thought. Yeah, the numbers. The numbers show that you are more likely 
to be successful going when we talk about transferring, you're more, you're more likely to be successful going from FBS to FCS before you are successful at going FCS to FBS. This is A. Michelle. She did the 2022 Portal Talk. 2,085 FCS football players entered the transfer portal. And let me go ahead and, and give the number. So the data is not even there. See, to support but, that but, but when have when when coaches sold data? The fact no, 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 but, well, no, 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 but see, but this is no, 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 but this is what this show is for. See, that's the thing. I'm not here to lie to my kids. That's why Timona's having this. See, this, see, you keep proving my point. So, see, what you're saying is go ahead and lie to the kid. No, what well, HBCUs? No, that's, that's, no, 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 well, no, that's exactly what you just said. I, what, what I'm saying, Mr. Campbell, is coaches are going to illuminate options and opportunities that not every that probably one percent of the players that they recruit actually qualify for. That's the reality. But that's not illuminating anything. If I'm going to say this again. And I, you see, you keep running from what I'm saying. If you had a coach, your, your daughter goes to Prairie View. If the coach from Prairie View and, and you have a son, and, or better yet, you the AD. Let's, no, let's make it that. You're the boss. And your coach says, come to Prairie View, play for two years, and you play really well, go to Texas A&M. So, in my opinion... There's an audience for that conversation, but I wouldn't frame it that way. Right? Well, well, I, well you, you see, you keep, you keep not wanting to frame it, but I'm telling you what it is. See, that's what I'm saying. See, people try to be cute. It is what it is. Dude, you let's, can't... Just put, let's just put a plug and play. So we're going to do the plug and play. High school players and coaches, view the landscape of college football and the transfer pay portal. Come to Jackson State. Get excellent coaching, developed, and then maybe you can transfer up. Old Miss is coming to Jackson State daily for our players. You could be the next one. See, see, I this is what this is what I think. I think this coach, right, is speaking out of desperation because when when and I hope that he's not telling this to individual players, right? I hope what he's telling young men from Waco, Texas, and Jackson, Mississippi, and uh and Houston, Texas, is that come to Jackson State, Jackson State to get a quality education and pe around people that look like you and care about you being educated. Because to me, that's the number one benefit of going to HBCU. Mr. Campbell, I... We, but we that's not it. what he said, right? No, th that's thank not you. That, 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 but see, hold on. But see, th 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 Tomorrow, I'm going to cut you out because you got to speak on it. That, look, Tomona tweets daily. And I know exactly what she means when she says it. This ain't no rocket science. He said what he said. And that's what I'm saying. People keep trying to parse his words. I don't need to parse his words because I read what he I read. I'm Do you think educated. The character limitation prevents him from putting in it in its full context. Well, bro, listen. It, it, listen. I, I could write, let me tell you something. How hard is this to write? And I've written this. And me and Simona joke about this. When Keyshawn um Johnson from Alabama State, right, got in the portal, let me tell you what I wrote. Come to FAMU, get a great education, be a SWAC champion. How hard is that? He said what he said, and he had coaches and players underneath <laughs> his tweet. And we're talking about 18-year-olds. So 18-year-olds so, so are going to take his tweet at face value. They're not going to take it as, I'm going to go get a great education, because it didn't say nothing about education. So, Timona, do you think this tweet is targeted at, at marginal players it, it, this, it, that's the point. This is, target, this is targeted at kids wanting to go to school on a scholarship and wanting to go to Power Five. I took it as come to a HBCU and then maybe you can transfer up. That that screams JUCO to me. I'm not. I'm gonna take his tweet at face value. I'm not gonna dig deep. I'm not gonna say well maybe he meant this or maybe he meant that. I'm just gonna take it at what he said. Well, well, well like I say, I. I I understand the landscape of of college football, and I mean it's not, but it's not. We're we're talking about the actual numbers, the landscape of football. It's not nothing that he's saying is actually true, as far as the numbers. So so I so, can name I could name okay. Let's name let's name twenty. Let's name ten players that went FCS to FBS. Let's name ten right now. Cam Ward. 
Okay. Shadour Sanders. Okay. Shiloh um, Sanders, Travis Hunter. You're gonna make you're basically gonna name all of the Colorado players that went from Jackson State to Colorado. And those are an anomaly. We all know that the only I, reason I, why I, they're I agree there is, to I, I agree to Mona, but I also think there are there's there's examples of of very elite players. That's why I went back to the one percent. That's why I went back to the one percent. Let let let's think about this. Cam Ward is a one of one, right? He's not he the season he had as a freshman is not typical. He, you can put that freshman season up against any freshman at any level of football, and it'll be legendary. The, the season he had at uh, Incarnate Word, right? That's one of one. This Incarnate Word. Yes. We talk about HBCUs, HBCU no. players. Oh, you said okay. You saying HBCUs that went yes. up to? We're talking about HBCU players, and oh. at, right now the only players that I could really, really name that went FCS to FBS is players that left when when. And we're talking well, about well, there was a couple players that uh, is uh, all the players Alabama that left out of Jackson that, State. There was one kid that went to Toledo. There was one kid that went from Alabama AM, I believe, to Toledo. Um, a wide receiver. I feel like that's a lateral move. Okay. But, but here's the thing, but what we're right away, Miss Steve, that's what I'm saying. We're majoring on the minor. The kids that are that super talented are already gonna go to power fives. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's that's all they're already going. L listen. Now you now you talking, Mr. Campbell. Now well, so so we're not we're not talking we're not talking about that's listen, but we're not talking about that. That's what I'm saying. You got to stop and again, and I, when I say I'm not literally me and you, I'm talking about the the, I, the people. I, I stop being cute with it because my point of it is I'm gonna use Tamona the those guys that Jack State just recruited, this good haul that they got, right? None of those guys are five star guys. Those are traditional JSU players that JSU build up and make those guys NFL players. Or nothing else, they'll be JSU graduates. That's the thing. So if you tell that guy that, right, and he's already not checked in 100%, well, I'm going to come to Jack State, and I got my eye because I'm just going to hang around. You're not bought in. You're not going to fully commit to what the mission is, is to win a championship for that team. And if you got a coach that is telling you that first of all, this is already less than. Because when he says that, he's telling you we're less than. You do realize that, right? That statement means we're less than. So you come here and then you go on, and I'm gonna and I keep saying this because you keep running away from this. TC Taylor goes to these kids and the alumni, which Timon and all of them are, and he says, guys, hey alumni, we just recruited 12 great players. The quarterback is bringing all his offensive line. And after I get done with him, after two years, and Coach O get done with him, we're gonna send him to Ole Miss. Unacceptable. What? Period. You can't run around from that. See, and that's what people keep trying to move. I'm not going to let y'all move the goalpost. I'm going to keep it right here because that's what that says. Well, Mr. Campbell, I, I, I agree that you can break it down and interpret it as that, but I also think it could be a, a recruiting ploy. And notice I say recruiting ploy to have a shot at more athletic, so better, you're so you're basically lying to them then and tricking them because and you so, waste so one did, of their so did Dion lie did Dion lie to Travis Hunter? Did Dion lie to him? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, he lied to him. He lied or, to him. Or or or, or, or better, we don't know what Dion told. Dion might have told. So see, this is the thing. See, I'm not gonna let you play that game. We don't know. If Dion, Dion might have told. Say, yeah, man, come over over here, Jack, to get this. But you know, I'm out. And probably like, all right, cool. No, so no, he might have said I, that. But, but you, but Rock, you're not gonna sit up there and say that Dion didn't lie to these kids and sell them a dream. You can make it from anywhere. I can get you to the NFL, which he did get some players to the NFL. But let's not act like he didn't sell the dream. Come so, to so my, uh, come to an HBCU. We don't have to pay our people to play for our people. Let's not act like he didn't lie to a certain extent. Because so, well, the, the point point that I was saying is is that Travis Hunter wasn't just anybody. Travis Hunter was top tier talent coming out of high school. And if you want a shot at those guys who have he's one top of tier he's talent one of one and, rock. And you know how many five stars Dion needs to be successful at the level he's at? He needs 10 Travis 
hunters. Let's just keep it a buck. <laughs> well, one my, my one Travis Hunter in the swag is iconic. So two, let, three, five stars at Colorado is not gonna cut it. You need 10, 10, 10 five stars and, and 20 four stars, and the rest need to be three stars. So so let me ask, let me let me ask you this, uh Mr. Camel and Timon, because this is this is the real question. What pitch do you give a kid that traditionally does not consider an HBCU as an option because he believes that and he, and he's been uh, anointed a talent level that is above the typical player that attends an HBCU? We don't, How, what we is don't your... target those. We don't target those kids. There's no reason to target them. But you know that's what he's trying to do, right? Who's trying to do that? Yeah, yeah who? T.C. Taylor and Willis Tillman are not trying to do that. We're we not trying to target folks who think that they're... And DT ain't, and listen, and DT ain't even doing that because, listen, okay, when is the last time, y'all correct me, the people in the chat, the last, since, I'm going to use this, fam, you've been the swag. The number one and two teams in recruit have been Jackson State and FAMU. When is Alabama even in the five, the top five? They try to HBCU group. Well, well, that, well, I'm going to tell you, well, let me, you well, let me what, help you out. Did you That's see not what gonna get them there. has put on the field this year, Coach? Do you Have you seen what they put on the field? Do and you realize what, what they're about to do to Howard well, this week? Wait, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. But you're proving a point. It's, it's the same thing. And I'm, I'm going to use this three-year game. The guys from Jackson State, the two years, and we're going to take Shadur out, okay? The rest of those guys that made all swack and all American. We're regular guys, just like all those guys from family. Ain't none of them guys five stars. Some of those guys were no stars. So that's what I'm saying. Those are the players. So listen, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to make this simple. People ask me all the time. Hey, Mr. Campbell, why you don't sell hair to white women? Because why? Because I'm around black women. That's why. <laughs> so why that's am I going to go? Tell them that's not my target. Them. Why that's am I going to go chase? Target. Why am I going to go chase white women? To beg, to beg them to wear my hair and then maybe be in the wrong neighborhood and get shot when I can go at the celebration ball and be around 40,000 black women and just and, give and, them my card. And, and, while we, and while we're on this call, we're going to take a pause for a minute because I want to thank Mr. Campbell for giving me an opportunity to share your site with my daughter. And my daughter uh, mentioned that she received her hair shortly after she ordered it and it was luxurious. And she also said the representation that's on the website, Courtney? you know, pales in comparison to how luxurious the hair really is. So, well, that's thank you, good. Mr. Cam, I want to appreciate that. Well, I'm going to say this, but, let, but with that being said, that's the reason why I have people like Timona, because Timona represents what I represent. She's educated, she's smart, she's witty, and she's beautiful. That's what, so I'm trying to recruit that, okay? I'm trying to recruit that. Because if I recruit that, I'm going to sell a lot of hair and make a million dollars. So it's the same thing to the football analysis. FAMU, Jack, that we, FAMU is not trying to recruit against Florida State. We ain't trying to recruit against Florida. We, and, and, nor should we. We don't have to. Jack State should not be trying. Well, I'm going to say, well, I'll say this, Jack State, actually, because they're in a better position because of the history of, of Jackson State in it. Jack State could recruit against Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Because folks just don't like Ole Miss. Now, I know it's changed a little bit, but when I grew up, nobody went to Ole Miss. But my, I'm making a joke there. But my point of this, that's not our target, Rocky. And for him to sit back there and play that game, to think that he's going to get some five-star that's going to 100% go to Alabama or Auburn, he is wasting his time. And no wonder why they constantly have losing records down there at Alabama A&M. Now, now, now you may be really pointing to the real issue with the tweet, right? The real issue with the tweet, he may just be wasting his time. And I don't think his intent was to devalue uh, HBCU education and an HBCU opportunity. Well, well, here's the thing. See, this is the problem. I understand. Well, see, but this is why you should, as they say, don't hit sin. Because that <laughs> might not have been his intent, but I'm going to tell you what people took it as. And if and if he was so strong about it, he would not have taken it down. Or he would have been mad enough to explain it. Because I'm going to tell you this. I guarantee you, Paul Bryant, who we've seen on interview, there's no way that that AD said he was good with that. There's no way that AD could be good with that. Because I'm going to keep saying this again. That devalues the education and the overall experience of your university. You also going to have your APR and your GSR in the trash. If they go to those schools and don't graduate, yes, you're right. 
So, so, I, so no, so, I, so no, so no, I'm sorry, right, again, people, and that's what people are doing, and, and we always do this, when people screw up, we always want, no, he, th- that was a bad tweet, we read it for, read it as such, he got called out for it, like he should have, I mean, I'm very proud of people that called him out, and he should have been, and he took it down, and we move on, but I'm just going to say this again, I, I'm, my coach might not ever say, ever, which I know he wouldn't, come to FAMU and we're going to train you up to go to Florida State. Point blank, period. And, 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 and me visiting Tallahassee just the other, other day, it's really a short trip. It's, like, like, it's a, probably like a three-minute walk. And you could be right there in Florida State. But. Exactly. Yeah. So and we, and we still don't care about them folks across them tracks. And I told you that. I don't give a damn <laughs> about them folks. Never have and never will. Just like I'm from Jackson, I don't give a damn about Ole Miss. Ole Miss could go to hell, point blank. Period. People and say, "Oh, draws." Hey, yeah, period. This has been a, this Which been a great is why story, Jackson great State guys. is able to have such a big fan base because the fans at Jackson State do not fool with Ole Miss. Period. They, period. Y'all could have got Patrick Willis, Debo Samuel, and a few other those guys. Man, maybe I would have been a. HBCU football fan, so well, well, now you are. So you've seen the guys. <laughs> you can do Jacoby and Morgan and the other guys and and all the guys that we got. So you know what? Root them guys on. Because guess Absolutely. what? There's always there's a Absolutely. Marquise Bell and a James Houston on both of them teams right now. So everybody loves Marquise Bell. Everybody loves James Houston. So Marquise Bell is a sensational, sensational player, and I thought he was a sensational player. And fam, you as well. So well, guess what? You don't know unless you watch. So that's my point. So if maybe if you watch, then you'll be able to see Debo Samuel and Patrick Willis because we have them on all these teams. So that's all I got. All right, man. Hey, I want to thank y'all for, for letting me jump on, man. Timoni, your show is always dope. And I'll I'm gonna log off and just listen. Thank you, Rocky, for coming on. I have a breaking news update. Um, a special meeting has been called for the Texas Southern Board of Regents to negotiate and improve a salary for their next football coach. The amount listed is $313,000. Now, once again, this meeting is scheduled for December 15th at 9.15 a.m., which would be Friday. Texas Southern University Board of Regents agenda, personal, personnel, and litigation request approval to appoint and negotiate the employment contract for head football coach. Approval is requested to appoint and negotiate the employment contract for the head coach position. This position is vacant as of December 16th, 2023. As we all know, uh, Coach McKinney's last day on the job is December 15th. The contract term is for four years. It says that the fiscal impact is $313,000 annual base salary. And I think that's supposed to say prerequisites, but it says it doesn't say prerequisites, but I think that's what that is. John Pittman is the interim chief financial officer. And yeah, so this is being released by Blake Levine WJTV sports director. Um, that's the breaking news that I have to bring to you. But that's not, uh, tomorrow I'm going to ask you a question because I that's not the money that Fred wanted. wanted. He wanted more money than that, right? No, his negotiation was 310000 from Texas Southern, but from Alcorn, he wanted three fifty. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is Texas Southern saying that the, the next football coach is only going to get three thirteen, right? Right, because he was, so when they put out the numbers, for Texas Southern, he was accepting the three ten. Basically, he oh, was requiring okay. Alcorn to pay more money, three fifty. Okay, okay. And they said that that might have been because Texas doesn't have any types of taxes, state taxes, right? They only have federal. So, um, and maybe we don't know because we haven't seen the contract, but maybe possibly. Um, there's incentives attached to that, like they do with every other. So right, yeah. Three thirteen is yeah. base, and if you win this and you win that and you win this, um, we do have another breaking news announcement. Jackson State quarterback quarterback coach is going to Austin P. Oh wow! 
I didn't. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, okay, so that's why he said it's a great day in Austin P. I didn't know what that meant. I saw it for like five seconds. So um, wait, how, how much? How much does Fred McNair make now at Alcorn? Do you know? I don't know. I know G came on here earlier mm. talking mess. I wish he would come back on here. This is um, uh, maybe this is confirmation. You know, which is they starting already. This is G. Um, his page saying why screaming to the sky. Well, I mean, listen. I, okay, let's. It's it's simple. It's Mr. Houston, Texas. Mr. Walker said he only makes two hundred and fifty-five thousand. Oh well, shoot! Hey, you going to get three thirteen and live in Houston with no state? And, and I'm gonna say this again: it's Houston compared to Lorm. I mean, it is what it is, y'all. I mean, like I say. The, been down the there. writing is on the wall. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it's just not a person that would not take that. And he's still in the HBCU space. And he gets to live in use. I mean, that's easy. That's easy. I'm the first thing smoking. I mean, and like I say, to Mr. Ford's point, it, it, Fred McNair is a great coach. If he gets play, And the thing about Texas Southern had players this year. They had players. That's why they were able to bite a couple of people. It's a tactic. <laughs> it's it's strategy. It's it's all it is is what's going on. Uh, uh, what's up? Uh, it's all strategy, man. It's all basic. It's all basic strategy. He he wants. I got to a question. For you. Uh, what's up, Uncle Willie? I got a question for Mr. Campbell and some of the other alumni. Now watch this. I want to ask you a question, Mr. Campbell. Have you ever got a chance to talk to Dane Meredith? Wait a minute, talk to who? James Meredith. Oh, I, oh absolutely. I, I have met him several times. Okay, I've actually sat down and talked to him. Let me tell you something, Brother Campbell. Uh, I don't know why Jackson State people are so upset upset with Ole Miss people because it wasn't the school. The school had, had professors and everything, black professors and everything. It was the racist-ass white folks. It was the racist-ass government. That stood in the way of Jane Meredith going to school. It wasn't well, the, school, the people. Isn't the people the school? Isn't the, isn't the, isn't the people that waved those rebel flags until the eighties? The school. Those are individual people. We still we were still black folks living and, and, and fighting in, 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 in the struggle. My parents is one of the one one of the parents that was out there in those chicken coops down at the fairground. So we still live here in the state of Mississippi. We still live here in the state of Mississippi. It still don't take away the fact that Jane Merritt, all the stuff Jane Merritt did with civil rights and everything. It but, still wait, don't wait, take wait, away. but that has nothing to do with what that. Wait a minute now. Hold on. Now, now you're conflating the two things. Now, wait a minute. No, no, no. We're not going to conflate nothing. We're going to get something straight. That's what, later, you, what, that's, what, what, that's what you're doing because we all understand historically what James Merritt did. I okay, what I'm historically did the school do? What did the school do? That okay, was the governor. The, uh, look, 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 look at, bro. That was the governor that stood in the door. That was the that, that was governor Wallace that stood in the door. So that you was, think that, 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 so you that, think that, so the students, the alumni, you don't think they make up the students? No, Jane Meredith told me it, was, it wasn't the alumni, it wasn't the students. It was it was agitators on the outside that were standing out there trying 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 to prevent anything from happening. So Just it was like the agitators that now. was that was ra that was raving those rebel flags all the way through the eighties too. That those were yeah, yeah, the right. same agitators, the same damn Trump Trumpicans that, that that some y'all Negroes go out there and support. It was the same. Oh. It was it was in the same situation, the same oh. situation, my brother. You still oh. got you still wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You still have you still have four and five star athletes. You still have world top athletes. As a matter of fact, the school is one of the best schools in the whole world. First open heart surgery. All this stuff is done right up here at the University of Ole Miss. But you're going to hate a school, and every effing time you get a you get any type of uh, donation at a game, at one of these games where they donate a million dollars, a half million dollars, the alumni come from Ole Miss or Southern. They don't hate you all. You all have a false sense of hate. You have a false sense of hate because it, it had nothing to do with the people in, in, in the state of it, it didn't have nothing to do with the students. These are agitators. These are outside agitators. You all are completely wrong on okay, this. Wait, it, and you've been, okay, wrong, here, here, and you've been wrong. You've been wrong for the last wait, 50, 60 years. Wait, wait, okay, and you, wait, and, wait, and, and you, okay. you just can't see it. Wait, okay, and you just can't see it, my brother. I, I, I don't wait, care okay. how much education you have. I don't care how much education you have. 
All these other schools throughout the country is in the same situation. All okay. these other schools okay. in the same situation. But I'm li I live in the state of Mississippi, my brother. Okay. I live in okay. Mississippi. I was born and bred in Mississippi. Okay. So I okay. love Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Southern, Valley, Alcorn, Jackson State, Delta, Delta State. I love them all. Okay. I don't have no distinguishing distinguishing mark between none of them. Okay. But I okay. know it's other 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 other. Then you go and let Ro Alabama roll off your tongue, and they had the same damn thing happen over there with Governor Wallace. But you, but you don't have no problem with Alabama. But you just I got a problem. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. You clear. Okay, so wait a minute. Now, here's one thing. What I'm not going to do is over talk you because you call me out. I'm going to make a statement, and I'm going to let you talk. So here's what I'm going to say to you. My grandfather went to Jackson College. He couldn't go to Ole Miss in 1934. They would not allow him to go to Ole Miss. So all these white people you talking about, I'm telling you, they did not allow him. Who, the school that allowed him. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait. You talk, now let me talk. You talk, now let me talk. That's how we have a conversation. He went to Jackson College, then proceeded 10 of his brothers and sisters, then between 1934 all the way to his children to the 70s and 80s went because they could not go to Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So while you cherish that and while you support that, I'm going to support Jackson State because that was Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me finish. You have gone on. Let me finish. So while you I might want to... One more thing. Now, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me finish. I'm going to let you talk. While you choose to celebrate that, I choose to celebrate my whole family that attend the HBCUs, my whole, all my kids that attend the HBCUs. So you're never going to hear me say Roll Tide, Go Ole Miss, Seminole this or anything, because I'm going to say Jackson State, Alcorn, Grambling, Southern, Morehouse, FAMU first, because them folks, and I, and I went to St. Joe Catholic, so I'm from Jackson. So those white folks you talking to, I went to school with them rich white folks. So don't tell me how they acted, because I went to school with them. And uh -huh. I know what they, they know. So you see, that what you uh -huh. see, all oh, those people. So see, I went, so, so I know you know St. Joe Catholic, right? You, you've heard St. Joe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, it, that's yeah, what, it, that's it, what it, the rich it, one. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 no, 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 you're trying to tell me about the people. I'm telling you about the people that actually went to Ole Miss. I went to school with them. And I knew their bias. And they your whole arm. Uh, no, well, no, they don't shut nothing. I'm trying to tell you, trying to tell me that Ole Miss, the people that went to Ole Miss are not Ole Miss. Watch this, brother. Watch this, watch this. All y'all with that delusional feeling, stop eating Kentucky Fried Chicken if you feel that damn way. We don't eat stupid that. ass. See, see how fucking stupid that is. Ooh, stop eating good. Kentucky Fried Chicken because he represents the same damn thing. That's just damn stupid. I'm telling you, ain't you got to wake up early in the morning to get over on me. Well, you got to wake up early in the morning. Wherever I got you, wake, stop you, wherever eating you waking up, wherever you waking up, I choose not to wake up on that side of the bed. Because on this side of the bed, I wake up with Jack State and Fam you. I don't wake up on that side with old Miss and Mississippi State. So that's fine. You can, you can love them folks, brother. You can love them folks. I ain't got no, listen, because this is the great thing about America. You can do whatever you want. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to say this. Timona showed the picture. It was 12 of them. And I know all 12 of them could not go to Ole Miss. That I do know. B.B. Dansby was their president. He could not be the president at Ole Miss. So these are people I come from. So I'm going to be a little bit different. So unless you know somebody that graduated way back then, like I came from, then we ain't the same. So, when they couldn't them, walk bro. on the sideline, brother. So yeah, okay. you can miss me with all that stuff. If you okay. ain't going to stop eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, if you ain't going to stop eating the Colonel's Kentucky Fried Chicken because he represents that rebel, then you ain't got no, no, no leg to stand on. Case closed. Yeah, I know you can't do nothing but laugh. I got them all for you. I got them for you all day, my brother. Why are you so old, Miss? I don't understand the correlation. I'm sorry. I really don't. Because Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Sanders is the same as the Colonel Rev. Put it together. I mean, y'all got, I mean, got education. Y'all got, well, got HBCU education. Put it together. But I don't, eat, but I, don't Put, I, I know you can't. I know you can't. I know you can't. When you're wrong, you can't. When you're wrong, you can't. When you're wrong, you can't. When you wrong, you ain't you ain't got no legs stand on. You can't, w Mr. Willie. I think for for black people as a whole, we have okay. So I'm glad that he went ahead and um, but let me just say this: as black people, we have to navigate in a lot of spaces yeah. where we're not wanted. That's a part of life. We have to be, you know, when you go out into the workforce. I feel like HBCUs 
prepare you for that because you have your sense of self. You have your confidence to walk through that door. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places that you're going to have to work where you might, you know, you might catch the passive aggressiveness of being in those types of spaces. I don't I don't even understand what the whole deal was or where that tangent even came from. Uh, well, that, that we'll see. I'm, I'm going to say this. And this is special for my people from Jackson. And I, I, I tease because people hear me call Ken and now I say the mass mean. But that's actually a compliment, because if you knew what the mass mean in Jackson was. So what would happen? All the people from Jackson, especially the educate because they were teachers and things and all the people, the blue collar people, they would get together and they would go to the various churches in Jackson. Right. And they were saying the Negro spirituals and all that. But you know what they do? They were like, oh, the meeting is over. The meeting's over. And then there would be certain people that would go tell the white folks what they thought they knew. And then they start the meeting again with Mega Evans and them. And then that's when they were playing the march. See, I come from that. So if he want to be one of them people that go run and tell that, that's on him. But see, we don't come from that. Cedric Walker don't come from that. I know his folks and all these other folks. We don't come from that. I come from the people that's part of the mass meeting. And I come from where the ice was not cold at Ole Miss. The ice was cold at Jackson State. So you can sit back and, and pat them folks at Ole Miss on their back and, and God bless all that. But I'm trying to tell you from where I come from and what I know and from people that march in them streets down Capitol. That, and he talked about in those, those pens when the brothers from Delta Delta Chapel Capitol outside was in those pens down there at the fairgrounds. And my grandmother had to go get her son out the, 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 the pen in the full of shit. Man, don't tell me nothing about that history, brother. I come from that history. When they marched from Jackson State to the down there to the state fairgrounds, my people were part of that history. And you know who was in front of people that went to Ole Miss. So don't come, don't come to me with that, brother. Don't cause see, cause see, this this over here is educated black folks. So you're right. I, I wear that with pride. Tamona wears that with pride because we know our history. And not and just it, that. Just because. Okay, so there's a lot of HBCU folks that after they get their degree at a Jackson State University or at a FAMU, they go to the Harvards, they go to the Princetons, they go Which is to great. the elite so-called PWIs and they excel. There's nothing wrong with that, but the ice is not colder. It's not. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm disappointed, and I'm sorry, Timona, because I don't think, that, you know, again, if people want to have a discussion, that's fine. And, and I'm not, and again, I don't have any problem. If somebody wants to go to Ole Miss, Mississippi State, I don't care. That's the list. Just get educated. That's all I care about. Get educated. Do something great in the world. What the point what the, was. That's the data says. The data shows that black athletes that go to these PWIs for football. They are not graduating at the same grad. They have lower graduation rates than their white counterparts. They're going to the same school. They're playing on the same teams and they are not getting a degree. So a lot of um, times they would say, well, you're um, you're going to get a degree from Alabama. But the data shows that a lot of times they're they're not getting the degree at the same uh, rate as their white counterparts. So improvements in the average of the GSR for black football players slightly outpace those of white players. Those are all overall improvements. So 78 percent for black players and 89.7 for white players. It just depends on what pow power five that you look at or what PWI you look at they're not graduating at the same levels as their white counterparts and they're all going to the same school taking the same classes and they're not getting their degree so here they are they spend all this time at this university and then they don't even have a degree behind it but you know what's funny though uh, but see this actually ties in to my original part about see that's the type of person that will see a black athlete and coach Taylor will come in and say, come to Jack state. Coach Simmons would come in, say, come to fam you. And he'd be the type of person saying, I don't know if you want to go over to Jack state. We'll go over there with them folks up there at Ole Miss. Cause that was some good folks up there, man. Some good folks. I've been around them. Some good folks. So that's what I'm saying. We ain't, 
the same. So I don't subscribe to, and again, if you want to subscribe to that, I don't subscribe to that channel. I, it don't even come up on my TV. So my thing is, this is the point where we're saying that type of messaging that goes to our athletes. And then when they go there and then they see that they're there just to play football and there's no support system and there's nobody to love and care on them and alumni that have graduated like all of y'all. And when you see these guys and you guys say, hey, if you need something, call me. Here's my number. And it's genuine. It's not some white man. Because one thing about them white folks, once you go, you gone, bro. Them folks don't call you no more. And that's they the thing. Like this right here, it says Georgia's overall football GSR was 54%, including just 47% for black players compared to 80% for white players. TCU's overall GSR was 74%, was also well below the study's overall average, though the gap between black players and white players was much smaller. It says rivals Michigan and Ohio State posted higher scores. So the Wolverines overall GSR was 94% with black players at 90% compared to white players. Or com excuse me. Wolverines overall GSR was 94%, so 90% for black players and 100% for white players. For the Buckeyes, their overall GSR was 86% with black players at 83% and white players at 93%. So basically what they're saying is if you are a black player, um, Oregon State was the only school level in the study with black and white players both posting 93% GSRs. So what we're looking at basically is that you start at the university, you're playing at the, you enter as a freshman at that university and that you graduate from there. Look at how low that rate is for, uh, at Georgia. And, and, and that's the thing. And this is not, and this is nothing new. See, this is the thing about it. This is, what, what kills me when I, I, I hear these people with these mentalities, which are interesting to me, and defend this. And that, you know what's so funny? We all let him talk, right? Mm -hmm. But if, we, if he runs this back and plays with anybody, it will sound, it's crazy. It ain't me. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything crazy to him, did I? No. And what's also crazy is that this is my biggest thing. You know why I come on here? Because you're a black woman and you work with my business. So I'm here to support you. I mean, we, we have our jokes, we have our fun, but the bottom line is you are a woman that attended Jack State University and we have a business deal and I hope to be successful with it. That's what I care about. If you want to worry about them white folks at Ole Miss, hey, go over there on the Ole Miss YouTube channel. I can't I'm sure it. they go over there, go over there to Ole Miss, go to Florida State YouTube channel and stuff like that. But if you think you will come over there and intimidate me with my pedigree, and with my accolades and the people that I know and deal with, bro, you, you got the wrong one. Because like I said, I could go all the way back anywhere you want to go. You're talking about you from Jackson, man. Do you know? I keep saying I come from the Breelands. You better Google them. You better understand who they are and what they have done and what they believe in. And there's a reason why a hundred of them went to Jackson State. And then, I, come on, did you ever hear me say, well, he went to Jackson State, but the rest of them went to Ole Miss. You ever heard me say that? Mm-mm. Nope. I heard you, you. I can say there's a Breland right now on the basketball team. So 85 years from 19 from 1934 to a Breland right now on the basketball team. Y'all don't believe the girl's from Wiggins, Mississippi. She's a, a distant cousin of mine. So that tells you where we at with this. She's a Breland because Breland's know what Jackson State did for them. They ain't hear no Breland talking about no Mississippi State. Come on, man. So like I said, y'all, uh-uh. So like I said, that brother, anytime, you know, I hate that he came on your live or whatever. But like I said, if he want to have a debate, just set up any time, any place. So like I said, I'll make you look like a fool. You don't want this smoke from me. They said the not... old Miss is slave dialect. Slaves called the slave master's wife old Miss. Well, that, 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 well, well here's the thing. Think of the reason. Okay, let's, from a historical standpoint, they call it old Miss because they want, they want to go back to that. 
Why do you think they don't say universal music? They want Ole Miss is what they, that's part of the plantation slave system. This man gonna try to tell me that all them people that was up in them stands didn't go to Ole Miss. What? Those people that kicked and screamed at James Merritt and he said, well, I talked to James Merritt. See, I didn't even want to even go there with him. I didn't even want to go there with him on that. Cause you, cause I could have, I could have embarrassed him so bad. You see, I could go and call my mother. And she really, James, see, stop, bro. Stop. So that's what I'm saying. You're going to tell me all oh, them people just waving the flags and stuff like that. And they go to Ole Miss. Those are good old white folks up there at Ole Miss. <laughs> are you really from Mississippi? Like, what, what university? Like, is this a, like, I'm sorry, are we in the Marvel multi, multiverse? Hmm. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. That, that, that's yeah. what it is. And, and, and it's, it's, it's not. And see, what's disrespectful? He disrespected everybody on this that's listening to this. Because to sit back and say that we crazy, no, because we're crazy. Me, you, and Doc, and Mr. Ford, and all the people in the chat, y'all are crazy. Because how dare y'all tell them folks not to and tell your player not to go to Ole Miss? He said, Oh, Miss, you know, they, they did a heart surgery and they did this. And do you know what Meharry has done? Howard Medical School done? Yeah, you don't know nothing about none of that. Let's look at this. Jesus. Jackson State University is one of the leading HBCUs that produce college presidents, whether your path is equality or excuse me, is a quality undergraduate degree or an executive PhD program in urban, urban higher education. We have Dr. James T. Minor. He's a chancellor at Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Dr. Charlotte P. Morris, Tuskegee University. Dr. George T. Frank, Clark Atlanta University. Dr. Gary Crosby, St. Elizabeth University. Dr. Melva K. Williams, Hudson Tillerson University. Dr. Herman Felton, Wiley College. Yep, but you know. Just, uh, I don't know. I didn't really understand. But I, I, I bet you if you oh. Google Ole Miss, I bet you won't find nobody black from Ole Miss doing that. But you know, but I, I, what do I know? He's trying to come back on here with some more smoke, Lord. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, a t I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to bog, listen, I'm not here to bog your show down with that Mr. and Walker. stuff like. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 <laughs> came back on here, you want more smoke, Lord. Mr. Hey, Walker, go ahead. What's going on? Oh, no, um, I agree. Uh, he, he really just, you know, I think, because he had made a comment before stating that um, his son was an Under Armour um, All-American baseball player. Um, coming out of Jackson. And um, he said that the thing that got him was is that no HBCU offered his son. But my thing with that was you have to, he had to understand is that his son was a baseball All-American. So nine times out of 10, those uh, PWIs, they're going to be the first people to even come get him. And also, you got he had to look at the MLB draft as well. So, but talking about the uh, struggle, like, and I appreciate that, Uncle <laughs> Kim. Yeah, he, yeah, he really, you know, don't know because anybody that's that's, you know, legacy built or just basically a basic Jacksonian. If you want to go see Mr. Meredith, he eat. He drinks coffee and eats and eats donuts at the same place every morning. And that's that's the Kroger on I-55 in frontage. He's right there every morning with an old Miss hat on. And also just to add a caveat to that, my father, when he went to Old Miss Law School, he got hit with a brick his first day in school. Mm. And Mr. Clarence McDowell was his was his mentor because Mr. McDowell was the very first black uh, person to actually go attend uh, Ole Miss Law School. So, uh, yeah, and and also, if my dad was living to this day, he would have, he would be walking around him and my mother's house with J-State on their on they chest because he was always pro J-State. And even when I was, you know, getting ready to go to college right before he passed my senior year in high school, you know, he told me directly, he said, I don't care where you go, but you better mm. make sure that one of those degrees are from Jackson State. And that's why I went and got another degree to honor mm. that. So, you know, that fella, you know, just 
you know, I can't tell nobody how to be. I can't tell nobody how to think, you know, but, um, you know, I just think, you know, we can't drink a bunch of Kool-Aid because, hell, I went to Mississippi State, too, and that was the easiest degree I ever got. I used to do my work right before I went to class and made straight A's there. So I didn't know what the big deal was because you couldn't do that in the HBCU. You could not. There's no way. You know, I used to leave the capital party and go do a paper back in the day. So um, I don't know, uh, you know, that brother, you know, but um, like I said, I can't say, you know, tell the chat whether to give him grace or not, because, you know, that was very disrespectful and a lot of and he offended a lot of people by saying that, because, you know, like I said, even in my household, you know, Mr. Willard probably, I, well, I can't say what he, he did or he didn't, but he talked to a guy that I'm only 47 years old and I woke up with a burning cross in my yard when I was on my way to John Hopkins Elementary. Mm. You know, so, yeah, you can't, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, I guess people talk and, you know, stuff like that, but, you know, sometimes you have to, you really have to hone in, you know, on your audience, you know, there's a bunch of stories, you know, where this one guy was had called my dad the N word while he was in his courtroom, and my dad sent him to jail for 30 days, and then he was about to get out. He asked the guy. He went there with his constable. He asked the guy, "Are you going to apologize to the court?" And the white guy said, "No." Mm. So. Yeah, you can't really, you know what I mean? Like, you really just can't, you know, um, just pinpoint people because people have history and people have stories as to how and why they don't like certain things, you know, with Ole Miss, Mississippi State, USM, you know, things of that nature. You know, you got p parents now, such as myself, that my son actually has an offer to go to USM. But you think after all that stuff down there, I'm not going to send him into no turmoil. I'm not saying the USM is a bad school because it's a great school. It's a great school. But, you know, knowing what my son want to major in, you know, I just, you know, that sports stuff is just, you know, I just don't need, I don't need him there right now until they clear that air. But, um, you know, it's just, um, you know, it's sad, man. I mean, it's, you know, I, I listen to people a lot, you know, in these HBCU spaces and, you know, I was, you know, listening to the brother Rocky and I mean, I said, I mean, that that coach knew exactly what he was saying. That wasn't a recruiting ploy to get better players there. That was hey, just Uncle. plain stupid. Like, you know, that's that's just what that was. I mean, um. And you would think that it, it would be better because, I mean, um, that's where uh, NASA is at, near Huntsville. Normal is right outside of Huntsville. You know, so you would think that that could be a recruiting ploy. Uh, saying, okay, if you go four years here, at least, you know, you got a job. Uh, if you go somewhere else, you have a degree. You know, but, you know, I just think that... Uh, I mean, that that just wasn't the right thing to say. And just sometimes we have to, you know, we have to learn how to appropriate our thoughts as well as our words. Right. Yeah. So, um, but no, you know, not trying to, you know, take up your time or anything like that. But I just want to share that. Um, oh, no, this like is said, not. This is great. Come yeah, on. Hold on, hold on I, I want to yeah. but but make a historical point. So, see, this is why yeah. I, I'm saying about people. And says you're going to understand two names I'm going to, along with his father. For, for the younger people, go Google Reuben Anderson and Fred Banks. Oh, along Lord, with the, and, 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 and along, <laughs> see, see, this what I come, see, these are people that I know that I grew, that, that grew up with my yeah. family. Go Google. Yeah. These are, these are trailblazers who yeah. actually had to go to Ole Miss Law School. Well, yeah, Fred did not. Yeah. Fred, Fred did, they, Reuben did. Your father yeah, but these are You're right, but, Mr. Camel, because they, they couldn't see my dad. You know, because my mom was actually, she was actually, um, they had just recently gotten married. And so she was getting help 
you know, because she had to go back to school, you know, because they started out in, in 60, 69, I think. And, um, at JSU, but then she had to go back because she was let because my daddy had got drafted to the war uh, for two years, and he was at Fort Riley, uh, Kansas. But you're right. Uh, these Fred were Banks, the black judges. These yeah, were the historic Banks, people. I mean, yeah, like, these, they, they these people were historic. Wanted to go to Mississippi College. See, they wanted to go to Mississippi College because it was local, but there was no way that you was gonna go to Mississippi College. And the <laughs> only reason why they went to Ole Miss is because of what they had to do to get them in there. Thank you. And see, this is what I'm trying to say. This man going to say, these are people that I know, that I grew up with, that I, I like. But go look and see where he went to school. Ruben Anson went to Tougaloo. Fred Banks went to Howard. Your father went to Jackson State. See, man, don't yeah. play with me. Don't don't play yeah. with me. See, this is the thing. Yeah. You talking about you know what a name, name, baby. We can name drop all day long. These are people that yeah. ate at my grandfather's house. Yeah. These are people that went to Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? No, they went to, Holy went to Holy Ghost. Thank you. Went to Holy Ghost. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying I come yeah. from this. This is what I revel yeah. in. This is what I celebrate. A Tougaloo yeah. College graduate, first black judge. A, a Howard graduate, black judge. Your father, black judge. These were the black judges in Mrs. in the whole state, man. But see, but he don't want to talk about that though. But up there at Ole Miss. But Ruben Anderson didn't go to Ole Miss. Graduated, he had to go to law school. graduated from Jim Hill Dude. High School. Thank you. Born yeah. in Jack. Mississippi. He graduated from Tougaloo College in 1965. Thank you. Received his first law degree from U University of Mississippi in 1967. Five years after James Meredith integrated the school and four years after it admitted its first black student. You, you got to see that's what I'm saying. Don't 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 play with me. Don't don't play with yeah. that's what I'm saying. Don't yeah. play with I ain't the one. So you want to talk about you no thing, bro. See, I can no, and this don't, say, this don't know. You, you, you don't even know. So this is what I'm <laughs> no, saying to my black know. people from, from Jackson and the younger people. This is, I want you to have this pride because these are Jacksonians I'm talking about. Don't never let nobody tell you that greatness don't come from Jackson. And we did not need Ole Miss and Mississippi State to get that greatness. So I'm going to go. I stand, I stand on that. So I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm going to be quiet. My dad was actually a country boy from McGee, Mississippi. Come on, man. Come yeah. on, man. So, oh, yeah, what so, was the name of the other one? Fred Banks. Yeah. Fred yeah, Banks, Fred Jr. Bank. Yeah, Fred Banks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. yeah. So that's yeah. So when you when you all, come they to were all colleagues. I got oh god, they were all colleagues. Yeah, my mom exactly. got a picture. She got a picture at her house right now with all of them. Clyde Chapman uh was on there. I mean, there's a bunch of just black judges because you gotta understand there weren't many black judges, and it just so happened that all the black judges in the state were in Hines County. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to, I'm yeah. just like, I'm like yeah. man, listen. Yeah. So, so again, I, I, th this is my thing. And really, I'm going to get back to the point of the topic. What the point of the topic was, was what, what does our coaches tell players that we're recruiting? And the point, and I'm going to stick to that because I don't want to get off track. The point, and I'm going to say this again, if you're coming to one of our schools we can sell what we have. We are not a JUCO or training ground for somebody else to go to Ole Miss, Florida State, Mississippi State, and LSU. If you choose to go, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Anybody is free to do whatever. That's not what my point was. My point was the tweet that Tamona put up, and this was my response to that. If my coach, Willie Simmons, said, you come to fam, you, you stay two years, I'm going to send you to Florida State, he would not be the coach at Florida a and the next day. I'm telling you what I know. So that's it. So, you know, I, you know, so said, you know, they just don't know, bro. They, they just nah, they don't know not. where we, where we gonna, get. Look, we have our fam, you JSU fun, because one thing we know, and I'm going to go ahead and be one of the first pioneers to say this. One reason why we don't get along, because we see the greatness in each other. Mm. That period. If we push and each that's other. That's all that is. That's, that's it. All that and that's what it's supposed to be. We know, that, yeah, we know that we produce folks. I mean, because you got to understand even in my field, my, you know, field of field of, in my field of play. Yeah. I went to the, the, you know, the university of Memphis. I went to uh, Mississippi state, but people are always talking about JSU and Tougaloo, especially Tougaloo, you know, and then now, you know, being that I'm in Tennessee, all they talk about is J state. And to be totally honest, that's who I look for to hire people when I, I look for, you know, um, kids that attend HBCUs. And I have my HR team to do that. 
because I know that when they when you they coming from places like Lamont on when they coming from places like Lane College, uh, Talladega, Southern Baton Rouge, uh, Texas Southern, uh, the Howard, the Hampton, the FAMUs, the the BCUs. Uh, we just hired a guy from Edward Waters, straight out of straight out of Edward Waters. But the young man was exceptional. He's already passed the CPA. And he's only 21. He's only 21. When he graduated, he he set for the exam this year. And we just hired him two weeks ago. And he just graduated this spring from Edward Watts. 4.0 uh, hey, let me point out something. Hey, Timona, you see this comment from Maurice Gibson? Can you blow that up? No PWI coach. Can you blow that up real quick? Mm -hmm. Was it no PWI coach will say that they're building their players to come up to an HBCU? Sure won't. They sure won't say yeah, that. But I want I want I want to ask everybody in the chat or something. But I want you to blow this up. Okay, so I'm gonna ask y'all a question. Do you think the coach down there at Delta State will say, "I want you to come to Delta State in two years"? You, I'm gonna send you up to Jackson State, mm. or even down the street to <laughs> So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna you I'm gonna reverse it. Exactly. But no, no, let's just take valid. No, I'm gonna reverse it. Do you think that because Delta State is a lower level than all of us, right? They're lower level, because I'm going to use the argument that DT is making, right? Do you think that white coach at Delta State is going to say, you come to Delta State, man, and for two years, and guess what? I'm going to train you up and send you to Jackson. Nope. Exactly. Hell no. They're going to say you're on crack. But look how we're laughing at it, because we know that's insane. That's why it's so funny, because they, they gonna ain't going to do it. They're going to say you're on some new dope. <laughs> and so, so I'm gonna use the same thing. So, what would be? What do you think you have better chance to get go pro and all the stuff? I, I go to Delta State, you know, train you up, and then go to Jackson. That would be a better because you're gonna play more people, according to what DT say. So, of course, nobody see what I'm saying. So, stop. Let's just say what, what my boy Stokes say. Stay off the dope. Stay off of. Blue Stay off the dope. Blue said they off for it. tomorrow. Please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So when you put, I want to tell you, I want to tell people, stop being cute. I just Delta gave you another example. Black. Oh my God. <laughs> exactly. Delta State. Exactly. Thank you, Blue. My nephew. They, exactly. They were fired. They were, <laughs> could you, I just said, just how stupid it even sounds. Come to Delta State. I will train you up and I will see you to Jackson. <laughs> Well, you know, well, you know, I got to give a shout out to old Maurice. You know, he's a member of that wonderful and greatest fraternity known to man. And we all know what that is. We all know what that is. And he's I, knew, I knew he must have been a smart man. Said that's why I see. Just kind of just know that's smart. Man. <laughs> very smart yeah. man. Very smart. Very smart man. man. Well done. Well done, Maurice. Well done. <laughs> So I, I just I just had to make, I just had to make that point because again I like to because see what people again they never want to put specifics on it they never want to call it for what it is I'm going to call it for what it is and I'm going to point out the the stupidity of the statement because when you say it just like that so I've given I have given multiple examples so nobody can deny what I just said on multiple times period yeah it's just, it's just crazy i mean because you you have to understand you got to understand the history behind stuff like that oh, man. and you know because at a, at a pwi you're not gonna have nobody call you uh call your room if you stand on on campus uh um well back then we had pagers you know and back then mama still had a house phone so i'm getting a page from from my mama nine one one I heard you weren't in class today. What were you doing? So you ain't gonna get stuff like that. I mean, you're not gonna get stuff like, you know, you having your senior year, you gotta write your senior paper, then you gotta defend it. Like it's a like it's some doggone dissertation. That was universal at 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 HBCUs. And then, you know, even on the STEM side, you know, they gotta do even, you know, they gotta do a a senior project mm -hmm. that's universal. At, what at is it? Uh oh. Well, you know. So I mean, sometimes we just have to. Um, Mr. Willie, uh, do you mind if I let him back on as long as he's not? Oh, crazy? sure, sure. I okay, mean, Mr. Willie, you know, because you maybe this, maybe this can be, this can be some, enlightenment some enlightenment for him. For him. Okay. Let's preface this before you before I let you speak. You know, you gotta tone it down a little bit. All right. All right. Okay, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be sweet. 
I'm going to be sweet to you. First of all, when I was 18 years old, my first ballot that I voted, that I cast, was for my cousin, Kenneth, uh, if, uh, not Kenneth, Kenneth Stokes is not my cousin. Benny, Tom, Benny G. Thompson is my cousin. Kenneth Stokes and Benny G. Thompson was my first two votes that I cast. When I was two years old, they had the riots at Jackson State when the boys got shot over there in Dixon Hall. So you're not telling me, no my parents, I told you this before, my parents was locked up in chicken coops in the sit-ins. So you're not telling me nothing. I graduated from Jim Hill. I know Ruben Anderson. You're not telling me nothing about black history that I don't know. The people that missed the point. Another thing, another thing I'm going to tell you. My grandmother or my great-grandmother never did let me eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. Jesus Christ. Now, for, the, for, for a lot of the people out there in the audience that's out there in the chat don't even know who uh, uh, Jane Meredith is. I sat down and talked. I used to think the same way that you guys think. I used to hate to see him until he sat down and, and explained things and I read the book. Wait, 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 who do you say we hate? Who do you say we hate? Do we hate it? If if if, if 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 I shot up in that tree and that bullet hit you, that's when you howl. I'm not I'm not I'm trying I'm trying trying to be brief. Listen, listen. The correlation I was making between for the people that's out in the audience between Colonel Sanders is because it's the same concept. It's the same concept. You that's Colonel Red. But what I'm saying is. You're hating on your own people. I don't, I don't, I, I, my first school I went to was Mary Home, Mary Holmes College up in West Point, Mississippi. I'm pro black everything. You can ask anybody around me, I'm pro black everything. So everything that you was telling me, you just, you just, you just whistling, whistling dicks to me. That's not what I'm saying. That, that's not what I'm, that, that, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm not a Trumpeton. I'm not one of those turncoats. I'm not, I'm, I'm well aware of what I'm talking about well aware of what i'm talking about you hating on okay see i can go here jackson state do, talking about reuben anderson he, he was one of the ones that, that ruled on the heirs case i'm gonna go here and then i'm gonna tell you about my son i'm gonna go here when they sell the heirs case in 1986 one of the stipulations one of the things they was given jackson state was was that stadium and also an opportunity to have a part in the uh, UMC hospital, the number five ranked hospital in the whole damn nation. Jackson State didn't want it because they wanted a damn stadium. Now that's the bottom line. Now you talk about all these graduates. I probably know two dozen graduates of Jackson State and Alcorn. Yeah, we come from. Yeah, my, my family come from from that type of from, from that type of atmosphere also. But I don't I don't go by and brag on all that type stuff. I'm trying to make a point to you. I'm trying to give you a point. Don't go and hate on your own people. Don't go and hate on. Well, I'm not talking to you then. What I'm hey, saying you is, Old Miss didn't start. Old Miss didn't start. Old Miss didn't start winning until they start bringing some black folks up there. I mean, Bottom I mean, line. Everybody, all of the well, I can remember when it happened. I can remember when I, I can remember when Bear Bryant got his ass whooped and he had to go and get some black folk. I can remember. I was watching the game when it was happening. So what is, so what is good about taking black talent away from old No, what is good about taking black talent away from HBCU? Well, okay. There are several things in, in, in play with that. Okay, now in the state of Mississippi, doing when they sell the air case, well, how how it's set up in Mississippi, if you're a minority going to a to a, if you're a minority going to a P, PWI here in the state of Mississippi, you're going to get a lot more money than you would go to a HBCU. If you're a white person going to a HBCU, you're going to get a lot lot more money than you would if you went to Ole Miss. So, how the structure is set up, that's that gives them even more of an advantage. Plus. Jane Meredith told me, I asked him why did he leave Jackson State to go to Ole Miss. He told me, he said, well, you know, I read, man, I, I talked to this man about three or four times because Kroger's is my best, my favorite store. And that's the store he used to go to every day. And um, 
He said, well, I read all the books Jackson State had, read all the books Valley had, all the books Alcorn had. They just didn't have nothing else for me to read. And the only thing he could, he could receive was his, um, I guess, his doctorate's degree. He couldn't receive his Ph.D. So he had to go to another school. So when you go and you read, and when you're in school and you're looking at, especially in science and math, and you see these instruments they use to measure stars and different the constellations and different things. And these instruments are only at certain schools. Those schools are those certain schools. It's just it's just that simple. Oh, you know, you want to belittle the fact that a black man did first open heart surgery at, at, at the University of Ole Miss, at, at the University of Mississippi. You want to, Mr. Campbell want to go and slide step that. <laughs> See, I don't try to come on here and, and and try to brag and boast and try to be no big old person. I'm not. I'm not him. That's not me. I'm a Scorpio. I'm gonna shoot you straight. Now, to my son's thing. My son scored a 29. You, you know you got to score a 25 to get in the old Miss. <clears throat> my scores. My son scored a 29 on the ACT. Yeah, he was on all my all American in baseball. But he played football also. He played over at Jim Hill. Then he came back over and he finished at Lanier. Two schools less than a mile of Jackson State, and they didn't recruit him. And he scored a 29. That's no excuse. That's no excuse. He's not the only one. This goes on throughout the country. But I know what I'm talking about. I'm not a band geek. I actually played sports. I actually did this. I'm not a band geek. So when you talk to me, so I, have to, I had to calm down. I had to go and hit some of that stuff and calm down to talk to you all. Really. Because I know what I'm telling you. There's no excuse for a person not to be recruited and they less than a mile off of the campus. Hell, Jim Hill and, and, and Jackson State campus damn near touching each other. How you not know? How you not know? See, all that's bullshit. But I'm going to let you have it. I appreciate you letting me call back in. Okay, so what I got from that was everything was misplaced and it was kind of all over the place. I think somebody must have said something that triggered him and he just went on to, uh, you know, a whole facade about a whole bunch of things. But anyway, there's a lot of um, black folks that took the first step on integration. And so they went into spaces where they weren't welcome. And they did that because, you know, at that time they had integration, but we're not going to act like they welcome Ruby Bridges, James Meredith, and anybody else with open arms. And we definitely are not going to act like Old Miss is still with open arms saying, welcome black people to our school. It's not even, if you're being truthful to yourself, there's a lot of spaces that while you may enter into them, that doesn't mean that you're welcome. And that also means that even as a black person, that doesn't mean that you should necessarily leave those spaces. It's just, the, the it is, is what it is. Um, does anybody have any closing arguments? <laughs> well, you sound like this this court right here. I mean, it, it definitely got heated, boy. I like the I'll rest my case. Um, uh, Mr. Jones said that the first open heart surgery was at Provident Hospital by an African doctor, Daniel H Hale Williams in African American doctor Daniel Hale Williams in Chicago. Mm. And somebody said Old Miss having more books and resources than the state HBCUs is a problem in itself. I don't know how you can't see that. <clears throat> so, you know, there's a reason why Old Miss players will decommit and commit to Jackson State. Because if your argument is about Old Miss having better books, well, if that's what the argument is, you know. 
And Mr. Jones let it known that his open heart surgery facts were wrong. Uh oh. He was coming after the band heads. Damn well, band. y'all, just as a recap, baby, Coach Fred McNair had the streets talking. It's been a crazy week. This is uh, Nick Eden. Of course, he has his HBCU Twitter uh, week. Um, and it says you only need a 17 to get into all state schools, including Old Miss. And that was actually a part of the Supreme Court decision um, back in the day, because what they were doing is they would increase and utilize the ACT as a way to keep people out based on race. So basically, um, they increased it and they didn't necessarily have a reason for it. So they were weaponizing the ACT. And so that's why you, across all the board, you have to have um, the same number to get into the schools. Um, And they also had them include grades also. So some folks are not good at test taking. And so they also included grades as as a factor. Um, So we had, of course, UAPB upset um, Arkansas on Sunday. On Monday, Doc said charging, Doc Edwards said charging kids for football camp with no athletic trainers, garbage food, and no flyout games. Ain't no way y'all made that much in 2022. That's surviving VUL. Um, And then, of course, yesterday we had Coach Taylor and we went over that tweet about Alabama A&M and 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 become HBCUs becoming G- JUCOs and then today of course was um, Alcorn State and the announcement that Fred McNair will more than likely be going to Texas Southern um, it's I don't know what it is about weekly but it's something that's going on every week. You can't miss it. Every week we got something hot off the press. Um, hopefully tomorrow we get a chance to see um, the Texas Southern transfer. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to see her in action against Mississippi State. Um, as it was announced that the NCAA has um, basically – they lost their case, so they cannot enforce the transfer rules. As of right now, they're not um, going to appeal it. So for the next, I don't know if they'll try to do something in the next semester, but as of right now, if you transferred um, to a school and you were waiting on a waiver impro- approval, um you don't need a waiver for this season. You're able to play play immediately. And someone said that they might be um, appealing that waiver, but NCAA made an announcement that basically said that they um, they won't be enforcing it as of right now. So I'm going to post that statement right before we get off. Just to recap what we were talking about tonight. Um, So the NCAA statement in wake of TRO on transfer restrictions as a result of today's decision impacting Division I student athletes, the association will not enforce the year in residency requirement. So you remember how they had to sit out for a year. They no longer have to sit out for a year for multi-time transfers. And so they'll be able to play immediately. You can go wherever you want. And um, KC 1400 just started. So everybody can hop on over there. We've been on this stream long enough. Uh, everybody, thank you for coming on and um, parlaying it up with me for so long. You guys have a good night. <laughs>